He's in, stops up, backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was craving when I scored the goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. Hello and welcome to quarterfinals coverage of the 2023 IIHFE World Championship presented by Skoda and Strauss. We have two more amazing quarterfinals matchups today. Finland versus Germany and then Canada versus our amazing, amazing friends in Switzerland. Brandon Bigsby and Nick DeMeo with you live on coverage. And Nick, we saw two great series yesterday. We have Czechia and the U.S. awaiting the winners of today. If we get anything close to like what we had yesterday or even elevated a little bit, this is going to be a really fun broadcast for everyone involved. The surprise from Czechia and the Ramparts red glare from the U.S. lay forth what we will see today. And that is O. Canada, all eyes on the red and whites, the battle of the red and whites between them and Switzerland. But more importantly, can Regs get something cooking to go along in the kitchen with CAD to fix the mistake they made last year, which was losing to Czechia in this very round? So things can course correct if they so choose to today. But your matchup today starts with Canada versus Switzerland. 
Yeah, Canada versus Switzerland, and you see the two sides on your screen with Canada. You pre-mentioned CAD and Regs, that dynamic duo that everyone was so excited about. But this is a team in Switzerland that got their way into the playoffs with Tron and Hofi that may be seen as the underdog today, Nick. But nevertheless, they have something to prove, and that's always a dangerous thing to go up against. It really is. And when you have something to prove, we looked at it with Latvia yesterday, and although... It didn't hold up for them long term. It doesn't change the fact that, you know, they had something to play for. Czechia just wanted it more. I think here you might have the same situation. Canada has something to play for. Switzerland might want it more. And that's going to be the dichotomy we look at today between these two teams in our first matchup of day two's semifinals or yeah, quarterfinals coverage. Yeah, and you know, you look at the left side with Canada. I mean, Cad and Regs, between just one of them, there's plenty of accomplishments, not just on the 1v1 side, but on the 6 side as well. But Canada getting both of them on the PlayStation to Xbox side and with Regs being back for yet another season after Canada losing in the quarterfinals last year, this is going to be a really interesting dynamic because last year they were upset by Czechia trying to make up for things this year. And for Canada, there's a bit of a chance for redemption because they will play either the U.S. in a rematch of what we saw last week, or they'll have a rematch against Czechia from last season. So a lot on the line, a lot to potentially prove, and a big opportunity next week if Canada can move their way through. Yeah, and we'll have to see what they do. Obviously, the team selection does play a part in this here. We talked about that last year, Brandon. The team selection, the choices they made led to the outcomes that they had. And uh, when we talked to Regs, not too happy about that result in the interview post game. Yeah, he was not pleased at all. And you kind of see the strategy this season change a little bit. And Cad being the newcomer to this team, you kind of have to look towards Regs a little bit to lead that direction in terms of what works and what doesn't work strategy-wise. But nevertheless, last year, not using Canada or US, I think they used the Czechia team. And that kind of did come back to bite them. They lost 9-11 to to Team Czechia in that quarterfinal and got bounced out a lot earlier than what many thought. This year, using the U.S., but they are going to have to play against Team Canada just like they did last year. So it just kind of goes to show you some of that strategy game within the team selection. Canada altering it just a little bit, but still having to have that lesser team that they're going to have to use against Team Germany, or excuse me, Team Switzerland today. Yeah, when we talked to Dodge yesterday in the USA-Sweden match, even though he was up by six goals, we heard him literally say, man, it was tough to play against Canada with Antonio Manon being as good as he is. It made it much more challenging, a little bit more competitive of a matchup by choosing Team USA. Here we see the same thing, and you got a guy like Tron up against Regs, and I think, I would imagine, the challenge, even with his Regs. I mean, we'll talk about Regs' story here in a minute, but like even as good as Regs is, I think it'll still be a struggle for them against a really good Tron in Team Switzerland. Yeah, and I mean, if you ask what the difference is really, not just in the overalls, but we talked to Rouse yesterday for Latvia, and he said just the speed between the two teams is such a big difference with him using Czechia in those matchups yesterday, while for the opposition, they were using Team Canada. And he said it like just the speed difference between my team and their team. You can tell that it makes a little bit of a difference on some of those plays to where that speed and that positioning really does make a difference. It makes you work a lot harder in terms of being in that right place at the right time, being in the right positions. And you can't really make those mistakes because when you're going for those puck battles, you're trying to keep lift or trying to catch up on a breakaway, you don't have as good of a chance because of that. So it just kind of goes to show you what the difference is in terms of the play style it's going to be really interesting to see how Canada navigates that because the U.S. the second best team probably on the game but Team Canada in the NHL 23 is on a different level and not just Canada facing that same bout but Finland facing that same bout as well Team U.S. versus Team Canada which one is going to be able to kind of prevail their way through that having that lesser overall team yeah I think you're right let's take a look at uh first regs real quick we could talk about the story of regs i've been following this kid since the beginning of my career in nhl esports man that was be you know, way too long ago we will hold on how many years in nhl esports but nevertheless ones threes sixes it doesn't matter by himself or with an official ch squad it doesn't matter chell challenge or not doesn't matter gwc winner he has a wall of trophies that he's looking to add to with this international competition 
Yeah, I mean, you name any competition, any team, any tournament, and Regs has more than likely won it other than this tournament. Nick, you have to remember, he has represented Canada and hasn't won this tournament yet before. So this is the one empty spot on that trophy shelf for Regs that he wants to fill. You see all the accomplishments. And like you said, that's not even every single one. These are just a few of the notable ones. This doesn't include some of the other tournaments that he's won. This doesn't include the sixes tournaments that he has been a part of in this one. There is a lot that Regs has done. And this is just the one thing that he has not really been able to add to that list. Is this year his year? He has a great teammate and Cat on the other side. Maybe he's that secret ingredient to get him that trophy. We'll talk more about Cat in a little bit, but first I want to take our way over to the other red and white for this Xbox side of the matchup in Tron. Nothing to shake a stick at here either. Tron comes to the table with a ton of accolades himself as well. Yeah, and look no further than that two-time ENLA championship, the Swiss championship that he has won two times in the past. And, you know, you kind of look at Tron, and I know a lot of times with some of these guys that are in other countries that don't really get that same recognition, it's easy to kind of maybe scoff past those achievements best because they're not playing in that same international setting potentially. But you look at those accomplishments for Tron. Semifinals in the East Bangler Cup in 2021. Played in this tournament each of the last three years for Team Italy in 2020. And then now representing Switzerland for each of the past two years. So this is a guy that has proven that he belongs here. Has proven that he can play with some of the best. He's showing that it's going to be really fun to watch him go up against Regs in what should be a game that I think will be pretty close. I think they match up pretty well with each other. Really can't wait to see how they play against one another. Yeah, them. I think you're right. And to start things off, a little bit of a different approach to our aggregate series. We'll talk about the aggregates here in just a second, but we will see the Xbox side take their place first. So two back-to-back -back matchups between Regs and Tron, and then we will see the PlayStation side with Cad Cooks and Hofi starting here shortly after we get the conclusion of the Regs and Tron dual matchup. Here's where we want to talk about this as the teams are in the locker room getting ready to set up shortly. Brandon, I want to know uh, if you could take a second to explain. Last round, we had free choice. Anybody could pick any team. This round, different strategy in play. We talked about how it bit them a little bit last year with Team uh, Canada's Choice. How does it look? What's the difference and why is it so important for team selection each round? Yeah, and you kind of mentioned it there a little bit, Nick. Every team having that free selection during the group stages, everyone chose Team Canada just because that is the best overall team in the game. And we want to ensure that just so we had that fair competitive balance. We didn't want Team Latvia going up against, say, Team Canada. Because when you have those team overalls, it doesn't really help that case of the best player being able to win. Or as we see right now, Team Canada versus Team Switzerland would have been the same thing. Team Switzerland would have been at that disadvantage. And even if they had that same that same skill level as Team Canada, the overalls would have been such a glaring impact. We wanted to avoid that. So what we do for these playoffs, every single team, every single country can select a team one time in the playoffs, and that is it. So if you are Team Switzerland, you chose Team Canada for this round, you can use them today, but after today, if they move on, you cannot use them anymore. You have to go with one of those other teams, and that adds that strategic level to it. Do you want to use one of those higher overall teams early on to better your chances of moving on, or do you want to risk it and wait, having that confidence that you will make it to the semifinals or potentially the finals? And we've seen it go both ways, Nick, last year, People are a little bit more conservative trying to save Team Canada. We saw that work for some teams, bit some teams a little bit in that early round. This time around, four of those teams using Team USA and three of them, or excuse me, four using Team Canada, three of them using Team USA. So a lot of players opting to use those better end teams in the early stages of the playoffs. Two minutes to start before we get to the puck drop of the first matchup. And this is where we'll highlight the aggregate portion of this contest. Four games to be played. The total score from all four games gets added together. The winner is whoever has the most goals. If it goes into tie at the end of four, a synchronous overtime will be played. Both sides, Xbox and PlayStation, playing together. The first one to score in game time and overtime will win for their team to go to the semifinal. So madness afoot will walk you through what some of that looks like as we get a little bit closer. We take a look at the in game here and we see that right on our screen regs and tron 
getting geared up to go for game number one. They'll play two back-to-back. -back, and this is where game... I talked about it last year. I talked about it yesterday on the broadcast, Brandon. Game management, huge here when it comes to this aggregate format late in each game. Yeah, and you kind of mentioned the back-to-back, -back, and that's what makes this game have a little bit more of a wrinkle to it. Usually, we would see these two play game one and game three. Instead, we're seeing them play game one and game two, so you kind of have to be a little bit more self-reliant a little bit, and it's even more important to set your team made up for that good position for game three and game four. So if you're regs, if you can get Cat a four or five goal advantage, you have to feel pretty good about the job that you have done. So it kind of just goes to show you things a little bit different, that strategy changing based on the circumstance is going to be really interesting to see how both of these players manage that. And you don't get a chance to go back and forth like you said. So if, uh, you know, Cad sees things not going very well, he, does, he can't do anything until it's his turn. Yeah. So this first half, a huge, huge opportunity for Rakes to get off to a good start or more importantly for Tron to respond in kind. But here we go. We're watching Rakes on your screen going north. Tron going south. You see the team selections in front of you. And the game is underway. An aggregate of four in this quarterfinals of the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Rakes with Team USA to start one off. He gets the first shot there. And he's looking for another. Controlling the middle of the ice. Passes out to the point now. We'll switch places. D to D, that deal drive in low now, though. Left corner working. Try to find his way through. Look at the skill there and a glove save. Huge save from a good chance by Rakes. And that starts off the first period strong for Team Canada. And that's what Rex does when he gets that momentum going early and is on the attack. He is so hard to stop. Tron having to try to match that early and mitigate it. Face off to the left of the goalkeeper there. And that Rex wins it cleanly. He gets bumped off the puck just a touch. And that'll come out. No, it won't. That'll be trickled through. A couple of sticks mismatched that one. But now Tron on the attack for the first time today, but not before. That will exit the blue line and come back out to center. They will reset five gone so far here in the first period. Now he's through, but a lot of players back there in white jerseys that are controlled by Regs try to centering pass that's intercepted. And they'll come back out on the counterattack. Three wide down the neutral zone. Now in front, chance there deflected into the goalie's pads. And quickly passed out through center once more. That one's saucered up. Now Waz got it for Tron. Tron at the left circle spins around once, bumped off, and he'll lose the puck back out to Regs. Quick back and forth through the first half of the first period. No score, three shots. Time winding down here already quickly. No penalties, so things move forward. Backhand work from Regs to try to left stick, or L skate through, rather. As look at the control by Regs. Controlling that high slot right circle area. Now he's got it from the left side. Center that one across, he will. That'll connect to the left D, trying to fire a shot. He'll pull back. Now drives in. Thinking another chance. So those D's getting activated down low early on in this contest. This aggregate of four games between these two teams. Who will make it to the semifinals next week? Tron now. A little bit of room to work here. The line change will get some fresh players on the ice. White Cloud will pick it up for him. He's with Team Canada. This is Team Switzerland on control now. Going south on your screen. Exchanging a few passes. Fresh legs out now. And they'll bring this one across. Now down and behind the net and a good chance. That one's... Pushed back behind the net. They'll work again. And Reg's able to alleviate the pressure. Not before he's got some speed here to try to get something going off the change. Nice little quick change there. Found someone through, but he couldn't make the pass over to him. Good control by Tron to keep this to the outside. Tron controlling the players. Look at it off puck as he controls the players and gets them in position to avoid these dangerous opportunities, but not there as Regs bides his time, finds the patience, and scores the opening goal of this quarterfinals number three. And that is Regs at his finest. You said the word buys his time, but when he does buy that time, you know it's only a matter of moments to where he finds that little crease, takes advantage, and pounces at that opportunity. That's a great example of that right there, and just using that cycle around the net, getting that open space, and putting it in. That is Regs at his finest, and a great example of what we'll see often from him today. That off-puck movement, knowing where the players are going to be, Getting the puck to them. And this is the opening goal of the aggregate. As you see on your screen, Regs his name and a one next to it. That score gets added up across four games here this afternoon or evening, depending on where you're watching. We're here on the East Coast in the U.S. 
Good evening to our friends overseas for this international competition as Tron gets a chance now. As we're ticking down the minutes of the first period of this contest, the first quarter of this contest. And here we have Regs again. Look at the move. There is a good interception. That was a dangerous one that Tron was able to keep at bay for now. Tron on the counterattack, three on two, and he scores! A good effort there by Tron on the counterattack rush. Off the line change, no less, and he ties this game up at one. Oh, and how about Tron saying, hey, now, I've got some tricks in my bag as well. Going oh. in on that nice little play past the blue, past the blue line, and then the shot wide, too. Thought maybe he would have passed it more times than not. We see that pass for that wide one-timer. He went ahead and ripped it on then, got it passed. Tried to split the defense there right off the faceoff, and that created a little bit of urgency for Regs controlling Team USA as we wind down the first period here. As you hear, oh, that comes offside, and I thought... The center point tip shot was lined up, and Tron just puts it off past the blue line. Yeah, and now Tron starting to kind of feel a little bit of momentum here, potentially, after getting that first goal and being able to get that goal against a guy like Regs after he got a goal not too long after, not too long before. Really, really big to keep in this game. Real time, 10 seconds to conclude this first period. Got a minute left here in game time. Regs, one last effort, maybe. He's going to control it down low. Three behind the net. Look at this. There's the behind the net play from his line there. This might be his first line as well. Good defense by Tron. Just waiting for the time to expire as that'll come out to neutral zone. And that's the end of one here on a Sunday. High octane action to start. Regs and Tron tied at one apiece. Regs and Tron tied at one apiece. And so far, this game has been just as good as advertised. We talked about how experienced and accomplished that these two players are and you know when you have guys like this matchup and it's one of the beautiful things about this tournament nick we often don't get to see a tron versus regs matchup yeah. so far everything from top to bottom has been right at that expectation for how accomplished these two guys are at their skill level keeping things close in these four quarterfinals has been the key we saw it yesterday with four or sorry five of the six games we watched were all one or two goal games. Five of them were one goal games. So a lot of competition, closeness, if you will. As But now we have a different format in this day as we did yesterday where it was back and forth. No longer the case. Today, the Xbox side plays first. Changing up the wrinkle as you mentioned. As Rakes had a good look there. Couldn't get the shot off. Second period underway here of game number one. The aggregate and score in game both one apiece. Good left stick skating there by Regs as he dances around the figure skating judges of all the countries would give that one a 10, I think, as the triple sow cow was almost attempted even. Look at me knowing figure skating moves, Brandon. My yeah, knowledge and lexicon is just so diverse at this point, it's unreal. As Regs <laughs> controls the puck out to the right point now. Back in, down from the half boards. We'll spin that one around. The will fall out to the left side sir, uh, corner and... He'll try to get around the defender. Look at him moving around the AI right there. And he just can't get the shot to the middle. Tron playing great defense right now. Yeah, Tron playing great defense, which is so needed when you have a guy like Regs on the other end that is so in control when he has possession. It's so difficult to keep with him and deny opportunities. We talked about this with Eki last week. Regs, just as patient as Eki, I'd say, as we saw those two collide uh, at, a, at an in-person challenge a year ago. Uh, with Regs walking away the victor. But both men patient. Play their games well. Don't come off their game. Center point chance there for Tron. Sticked away from the goalkeeper for USA. Back up top now. Tron working again. Getting the cycle going. Lots of players moving out of the way. I love to see the cycle here from Tron right now in Team Switzerland. He tries to deke himself into the corner. He got there but got tied up a little bit. Still has the puck though. Now at top again. Graves working in. Trying to bring it back down low. He'll spin around and try it again. Now looking for room. Half board working, cycle back on once more. Tron looking for a shot, and that's finally taken away. Fresh legs, no, on the ice. They're going to go on the counterattack instead. Three on three down the wing. Regs now making his way through. Halfway gone through the frame, and a shot, and scores again. Regs with the same play that got him the first goal, found it a second time, and it's 2-1 to one for Team Canada. A play so nice, he had to do it twice. How about that from Regs? 
working his way to that same exact area that you talked about, Nick. Got that same play to go, and Tron not able to defend it over by that post. And now it's something to look out for here if you're Tron. You know Rex is going to go for that. He's had to go in now. So how does Tron respond? I love the back and forth, and that's a good way to respond. Trying to confuse the defense there by causing some havoc. We'll get a stoppage here at 8.53 to go in the second. Yeah, and you know, that's been a common theme with Tron, not just today, but really throughout his career here in the IIHFE World Championship. He always has that way to respond and get something back, even if he does let it go originally. Regs winning that crucial defensive draw. So he'll push it back into the attack again, but not before losing it before he could get an offensive scoring opportunity. So Tron comes back down now. Three wide there as he had a chance on a three-on-one that developed kind of haphazardly. Now he's got it again, can't get the shot loose. Great defense from both teams right now with everything on the line. Win and you're in is how they're playing it. They move on if they win in this aggregate contest. Losing the puck at the D-line though. Wow, and a dangerous chance there. Tron almost took it to the house. He's got it again here. That was the first mistake, I think, by Regs all game so far. See if Tron can capitalize or if Regs will course correct. Both can be true at the same time. Two loose sticks makes the puck loose. and That'll force its way behind the cage. And out now for Regs, looking to split the defense, just driving down the lane. And Regs just said, I'm going to go do it and try. And he almost did. That's what Regs does. And now Tron has it. Looking for a way in. Still on the outside. He'll get checked, and that will be Regs taking it back. But give and take both ways now. Tron and a chance, and he's clean clocked in front of the blue paint. 100 seconds left here in the second period. Through center. Out to the left wing now. Spins once. Spins twice. Looking for that far side 1T. I see it now developing now that I've watched it twice. There it is. Shots in and a good save there. Didn't get everything he wanted on that chance. He's just going to wait for it and execute. Five seconds now. Tron up top. Shot in. Deflected. And he saves it at the buzzer. So 2-1 now after two. And we're going to the third period. And that was a sneaky little play there at the end by Tron, holding it yeah. in that slot area. And then the quick pass over to his right side to get that quick one-timer. If that one goes past the goaltender, that would have counted. So a really sneaky play there by Tron. But nevertheless, how about Rags just earning his opportunities with that game of patience? And it just seems like he's so good at being able to wait his opponent out, opening up those spaces. And when he does get that one lane, more times than not, he's going to take advantage of it. That's why everyone is always so excited when him and Eki match up because they are so similar. Just a North American version of Eki in a certain sense, but you're seeing some of that patience really come to a head and lead to positive opportunities right now. Tron only losing to Junior Pens and Eki 4-2 to in 2022. So a man that knows how to play this game, this NHLE sport, and in this tournament, representing his country well right now, two to one is your score line. In game and aggregate, there's a shot there. Looking for maybe, that was a weird like saucer pass shot. It tries to bring that in front by Regs. And the man that lost that puck and couldn't corral it in tried to generate a second scoring chance and that was denied as well. Regs in the middle. Found his way into the attacking end once more. Stops behind the net, and we see it set up now. Look at the play set up now by Regs. We know it exists. Now we have to identify it, and what does Tron have to do? Has to snuff that out before it develops into a scoring chance, and he did so right there. Tron backskating through, finds a lot of room on the left, and wow, just reamed there. Regs playing the body. We don't see that a lot from Regs, but when he uses it, he executes it quite well. Now he's got a chance to put a shot on, but that'll get interrupted. Tron goes back across. We're offside. Six and a half gone so far in the third period. Quick third period. You know, and you know, I'm very interested to see how this is played here in the third period because remember, these two are going to play again right after this game. There is no game three. They're going to go back to back. So I'm kind of curious to see if that changes any of the strategy at all for either of these two sides or do you kind of play that same game knowing that it's the same 
setup, but really just in a different order. So something to look out for here over the next 12 and a half. The Drake song back-to-back -back plays in my head now. The theme song to the Sopranos plays in the key of death. I digress. Here's a chance here for Regs. That one will flutter its way to the goalkeeper. Keeps it away from harm. That red line is the harm there, at least in that blue paint. Oh, and a good give and go on an attacking third man in from Tron. Nice little play there. That was sniffed out nicely by Regs and a one-time chance through the middle, and he scores. A good look there. Bellows puts it home. Three to one, Team Canada. And you know, I don't think that was actually Regs' first option. When he did that little cut move, I think he would have gone for 24. I want to say it's Bordolo if he had the opposite side hand, but since he had that right hand on the right side, wouldn't have made sense. It wouldn't have been the right one-time play. Instead, once again, patience. He waits. He knows who he has on that post side. He gives it that extra couple of seconds. It opens up. He hits it right on his tape and Bellows puts it in. That is just another example of that patience and that awareness by Rex that got him that goal. Nick Tabeo, F5 Penguin, and Brandon Bigsby B Major along with you for this 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. I want to thank our Good friends in chat. Hello, everyone in chat. I see Let's Go Mirko going. And our good friends up at Raptors GC. Hello there and welcome in. Glad to have you here. Nice to be here as well for you along for this ride. Game one, of course. Coming down to the wire now. A two-goal lead here for Rex. Tron trying to get back into this game as he had that first goal. It came nicely, but Regs has been in control since that moment. He set up that second identical goal and then that third cross crease that happened fortuitously for him. One or two dances there, but Regs will steal it. He's on the breakaway now. Lots of speed through the middle. Trying to get the shot off and a back check there by Switzerland. Denies that opportunity. That could have been the game sinker right there. But Tron able to stop that attack. Four and a half now to play in the third period. Regs once more. Lafferty left side. Coming around the middle left circle. Good behind the back pass there. That was a beauty. And we're seeing everything coming out from Regs right now. Pulling out all the stops in this quarterfinals. Rebound shot. Falls to the stick of the red jerseys. Switzerland will move that out. But not for long. As long as Regs can keep things in the neutral zone, he's going to be well off here to walk away with game one and a win. And you have to win a couple to win the aggregate. Start with one. That's what everybody says of this first quarter of this four-game aggregate. 100 seconds to conclude this contest. Wah wow, gets rubbed off that one. He was tangled up in front of the bench. And a minute, real time, to conclude the third period. Rags looking for it there. He'll go back and chase it off the boards and get the bounce. He'll get it on his tape. There's a move there. Crossing to the right. On our screen going north. Everything is relative here. NHL Esports mode when. I'll save that for another conversation. Reg's got it. Trying to get one more maybe before time expires. This is where game management comes in. We'll see how Tron responds. A chance there and a quick give and go. That was a great save. A good effort by Tron in the defense. As the pressure is just mounting up here from Team Canada. Final 15. Comes all the way down, and we will get an icing. Reg's just putting the pressure on right now, Brandon. Yeah, and remember, I know that the game is rather well in hand, but 12.6 seconds to play. This is still big. Regs can open that gap up because, remember, it's the aggregate scoreline that controls this series. Picks it up off the win. Yao Chenyuk will recover his own draw. I don't think you can do that in real NHL anymore, can you? But nevertheless, we're here. Three seconds, two, one, shot. And that's going to do it. So game number one goes to Regs. Three to one is your scoreline. And game one in the aggregate now looks a little bit different as we head right into game two momentarily. As we'll take you back to the studio here. So thoughts on that game. Regs wins this one three to one. And you got to see how they're going to adjust going into game two. Yeah, and I think that's why the, this setup today makes things so much more interesting because I feel like it benefits Regs having played the way he did, not having to wait 
30 to 40 minutes on that next matchup. He gets to go right back in, keep playing his game, feel that same momentum that he is feeling right now. And if you're Tron, you have that same amount of time now to adjust. What do you do to change things up? What did you notice about Regs' this game that you maybe have to adapt to to kind of counter that? We saw the stats there for just a little bit, but if I'm correct, around nine and a half minutes of time on a tie, just five shots on net. That's never going to do it no. in a, against a player like Regs and really against most of the teams in this tournament. There's so much talent around the world that are representing their countries and they're going up against one of the top countries and one of the top players in Regs has to find a way to get more opportunities and also to kind of minimize the amount of time that Regs is getting over 15 minutes of time on attack in that game. Regs really controlled that game and the pace of it from start to finish. He was the one in the driver's seat. It's going to have to be a something for Tron that changes to kind of sways things a little bit more in his direction, makes things uncomfortable for Regs. He's going to have to do something to change things in his direction because the way that game flowed, it was all in favor of Regs. Tron really didn't have much of a chance to ever really respond and get a counter after that first goal. So let's look at game two. Scoreline here is now three to one. You're down by two if you're Tron. If you're Regs, I don't think you change anything. I think you do exactly what you did in game one, knowing that this is your last game. Knowing that you're going to do your part, you're going to finish things out. Uh, I think you, if you can make it another three to one game, well, you've given Cad a four goal bumper, and uh, I think if you're Cad, that's probably pretty good for them. Yeah, and I think that if you're Cad, you have to be feeling good. But if you're Hofi, you have to be watching very, very closely and carefully just to kind of see what your teammate does. Because right now, Tron doesn't want to put his teammate in that gap. You mentioned that 3-1 score line. Well, if it's that same score, your teammate is down by four going up against one of the better players in the world in Cad. You want to set your teammate up to be in that good position. And that's typically the story in this format when it's, training off the game in which you play but i feel like it's even more important now right because you don't have a chance to make up for it your teammate kind of has that pressure to go ahead and get it all back for you if you're not able to make up for it on your own in that second game so pressure on switzerland early maybe even a little bit earlier than what we would typically see yeah i think you're right and this is where the difference format comes into play is now you're playing back to back so like i said at the beginning of the game number uh one here not much you can do. There's no waiting time. So when we talk about, well, you can look at what CAD does. You can adjust to that. You can play your style a little differently. No, I think the strategy here is different. It's get ahead as much as you can and cause as much damage because you don't know how the other two games are going to play. You don't know how that connection is going to come into play. And you don't know what can happen in the little bit of ambiguity that is NHL esports where... Sometime a team gets hot. We looked at it last uh, last night. Pepka won game number two, seven to one, but only won game number one between him and Rouse, three to two in overtime. So how did that happen between two teams? You never know. You can't account for that. So you have to make sure you win your two games because you don't have another chance. Yeah, and I think that's why it is so important really for both sides. This game right here, I think you could argue, aside from game four, depending on where the series is, is the most important game of the series. How are Regs and Hofi set up going into games three and four? Where does Tron put his teammate in Hofi to get him in a good position against Cad to where he doesn't have to have that pressure to get everything back for his team? If you're Tron, I think you have to win this game by at least a couple of goals. You do not want to be in a situation to where Regs wins this game by, say, three goals or more, and then you have your teammate Hofi coming in, going up against Cad, like we mentioned, one of the most skilled players in this tournament having to come back from a four or five goal deficit just to bring it to an overtime. So if you're Tron, the pressure is on him. But remember, this is the guy in Tron that beat Ekin last week and not just beat him, but beat him more convincingly than what the final scoreline said. Yeah. It was four to one with a minute to go. Ekin put two goals in in the latter stages of that game, but Tron controlled that game dominated most of that game he's proved that he can go up against some of the best players in this tournament because Ekin is one of those best players a very accomplished guy kind of in that same tier that you would see a guy like Cad and Regs but the thing is a guy like Regs very different play style lots of experience it takes a long time to sort of adjust to it the question is will Tron make those adjustments and will those adjustments lead to more opportunities on the offensive end all good questions indeed they will be answered in about five minutes as we get kicked off for game number two so what we're going to do right now is we'll take a short break. If you're watching internationally, 
and you want to watch the German or Finnish feeds, we'll have those for you today as well on those streams. Our good friends Alex Bloody LP is streaming the German matchup, and our very, very, very amazing friends over at Sports Gamer GG have the Finnish broadcast. You're going to want to make sure you watch both of those as well if you are of those countries and you want those broadcasts in those languages. And congrats, I want to take a moment here, congrats to our friends over at Sports Gamer for everything that they've accomplished this weekend. I know it's been a, an amazing weekend in NHL esports, and we can't be prouder to be working alongside with them and with them in, in a myriad of ways here between myself and Brandon. But don't go anywhere. You're watching the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Trust. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. I promise you're not gonna want to. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't do it.
Lucky. He's in. Stops up backhand and he scores. Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. The game How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. And welcome back to the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside my good friend Brandon Bigsby, also known as B-Major. And Brandon, if we had a good matchup number one, game number one, I think we're in store for an interesting game number two between Regs and Tron here in game number two of four. Yeah, I would have to agree with you, especially when you kind of sit back and consider what is on the line really for both of these two players as you see both regs and tron getting set up and ready to go on the screen behind us but if you're regs you're feeling pretty good you got that first win three to one a chance to kind of not blow this thing open but to increase and widen the gap and your chances of taking home the series if you're regs your job making things as easy on cat as possible not that cat can't make something happen on his own but you want to give your team that best chance to win so if you can give cat that five to six goal advantage going into the next two games you want to do that well for tron i think it's imperative that he wins this game he has to close that gap a little bit give hofi a bit of more of a chance to kind of get things back into a manageable position and if he can't do that, Switzerland could be on the track to pull off that upset. I want to thank the chat for just unwavering support here for the commentators. My goodness, I need this right now. We are producing virtual studios, producing the entire show as a chance there from Regs early on, and commentating all while changing things on the fly. So thank you so much. That one rings off the post for all of your support. I love doing what I do. It is hard to do this job especially when you're producing as well, especially when you're managing and directing as well. So thank you so much for recognizing that. We appreciate it. 3-1, your aggregate right now in game number two. The goals get added together, and the winner with the most goals scored is moving on to the semifinals. The look there from Tron to get the early goal. He's trying now to get something going for his team. Switzerland, can he get a second goal here in the aggregate? Tied up sticks there. I love the use of the stick tie before the puck. It's, it's such a micro move as a chance there. Gets denied from the pad. It's a micro move. It's part of the meta. It's part of the, the things that happen off puck that people don't realize makes a good player great. Regs and Tron doing that really well here in this game number two. We've seen it twice so far as Regs back on the attack now. He'll feed that up to the left circle. Coming in back down low. Looking for that play he loves. Trying it from the other side, maybe. No, he'll come back. There. Oh, he was looking for it. Brandon, that one was snuffed out nicely by Tron. Yeah, and Tron going to have to continue that defense and turn it into good offense as he's looking to now. Tron lost it as soon as he had it. Took it in down low. Got a fresh line change there, which was helpful. But here comes Regs once more. Regs from the right side. He'll test that theory. Driving towards the middle circle back outside. That banked pass will come out to the stick of the USA player. Controlled by Team Canada. Team Canada, Team USA, Team Switzerland using Team Canada. The knockout stage, you can only use it once. One team per stage. Team USA used by Team Canada this round. They're saving Team Canada for when they get to the next round. They're confident that they will buy this team choice. And we'll talk to a lot of players later on today in these interviews about why they did what they did, how they feel, and the results of that is a one-time chance there. Comes in off the backhand, a beauty there by Tron as he breaks into the lead from the aggregate, but brings this game to a one nothing lead so far. And if you're Tron in this situation against this player in regs, that was exactly what the doctor ordered to be able to draw first blood get that first goal, get the aggregate just a little bit closer than what it was, and to get some of that early momentum on your side. But now the challenge, taking advantage of it, not letting Greg snatch it back. You can't let him snatch it back. As it is imperative that he puts the foot on the gas. As Regs is not going to have that, though, as he tried to tuck that one in on the short side, coming down the line. and The goalkeeper not letting that in as that puck will bounce in front of the Team Switzerland bench and come back out to their defensive end. Stick chop there denied. Wrapped around the boards. They'll come up for it. Will Tron pushed along the boards. Kicked down now. Right corner. Quickly out. Good forecheck there by Regs with just one player taking up three minutes to try to get that puck. Good look by the champion. 
the all-time champion in regs. Stolen there in the high slot area. On a line change, got room now, Tron. Two back there on the back check, though, and that'll slow down that counterattack. But now Regs back the other way. High action here, a lot of pace. Forced in front, that was a one-time feed, but head to the boards instead. Left D driving to the right side. Now behind the net. We're working again. Looking for that one T play from the far side. Two players back there trying to get some room here is Team Canada. They control it now. Well in control. Lots of patience here in front and he scores! The L skate opened up instead. Reg said I'll go that way. And it's back to a two goal lead, but we're tied here in game two. And that's the thing about a lot of these top players, and especially about Rex. Right when you think you know what he's going to do, he switches up and he zigs as you zag every single time. You think he's going for that cross crease, and you mentioned it, Nick, that L skate move goes right to the slot, just puts that shot on right from the player he already had rather than passing it, and scores it himself. So a 1-1 game now. So Tron will have to answer again. Not that we expected he wouldn't have to uh, as we get into these games, but the back and forth continues. Regs just straight lining, and he scores! Regs! Seth Jones takes it all the way down 200 feet, and he bangs that one home. A three-goal lead in the aggregate now. Oh, and you have got to be feeling good if you were Cat and you were watching right now, getting ready for your two games. Your teammate's playing well. He's got a three-goal advantage and an aggregate, and he still has another 47 minutes here to do it all. As time winds down, things changed a little bit there for Tron in the first period of game number two. Up by one, now down by one. Team Canada well in control over Team Switzerland in the aggregate. Five game goals to two. Yeah, and you want to talk about how about things can really turn on its head. Well, how about this Tron from being up one to nothing, making the aggregate three to two, looking like he could maybe get back into this thing, get Switzerland in a good position, but all of a sudden, Regs flipping the switch, turning the momentum as he has done so often throughout his esports career, gets those two goals in, puts himself not only back where he started, but even increasing that aggregate score from what it was before. So now for Tron, having them get a response here, having to coordinate it quickly. If Regs gets a third goal, in a row, things become, could become very, very scary here for the Swiss. Yeah, Regs can cook just as much as Cad, despite the gamer tag stating that he cannot cook. I mean, it doesn't state he can't cook, but it just states that he, he is not cooking. We know he can. So, Regs cooks. That's got a good little ring to it. I'm going to ask him if he'll change his gamer tag to match Cad here in the interview we'll do with him later. But nevertheless, right now, through the legs, Deke there flutters its way over to the goalkeeper. He'll throw it out. It's February. As you said, Brandon, we play those. Yeah, we play those. He knows what time of the month it is, my friends. It's February, almost March. We don't hold those. Sometimes they will, though. It depends on who you ask. So here comes Tron to try to respond. And that one's gets stolen. Seth Jones once more on the breakaway. Lots of speed, self sauce, and a manual goalie save there by Tron. Regs picking it up again. Now Seth Jones again, slap shot there, pad save. It is all Regs and all Seth Jones right now. Tron has to get going here on offense shortly or things might not look good for Team Switzerland. Lafferty's got it up the right side. El skates through, finds it on the far side. Can he get it to him? Behind the back pass, he can. And he's denied there by the goalkeeper. Pulling out all the stops right now is Regs. Tron has got to get something here. Regs is starting to feel it more and more. He has got to get something. Change the momentum in its favor. This is not good right now for Tron. So Regs now on defense. Has the puck. And trying to get it back on offense. Tron's got it now. Through neutral zone. One on one on the right side. Oh, stolen nicely, though, by Regs. Oh, 
We see Regs trying to move it into the offensive zone here. Nine minutes to play here in the second period. Regs up two to one. In the second match between these two sides and a five to two aggregate lead. We'll see Cavs versus Ho for the two games between those two here after we conclude this matchup. As once again, Regs continuing to get things going his way, drawing that penalty on Tron. And now a really big chance here for Regs to open things up here for Canada, having that 5-2 aggregate lead as we mentioned. Huge chance here. First penalty of the series so far as my microphone cord got tangled uh, and I was stuck in between my suit jacket and my cord. That was fun to navigate. So thank you, Brandon, as I'll pull the curtain back once in a while. I try not to sometimes, but sometimes I will. A minute and a half to go here on this power play. Regs in well positioned here to break open this game as well. And we'll see if that's something he would elect to do here midway through the second period. Lots of guys now down low as he chops that one off of a dive. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it worked out for him. Right side circle, driving in. Try to one time. Good step up there by Tron. Reg still has it, though. Time winding down on the man advantage. 20 seconds to go. Looking for that cross ice pass. Can't get it off. Coming out of the box here in just a mere seconds is Tron's player. Their full strength pushed along the boards by Regs. Regs just slowing things down, smartly doing so to get those fresh legs out on the ice. But that also bought time for Tron. Now he's set up in the offensive end of his ice. With him on the puck and a shot comes in. Well able to see it. Goalie stepped out in front, threw it out. Play continues. Oh, but a dangerous bump there. Puck got poked along. Goalie will snuff that out, stop it, and slow it down for a faceoff. Yeah, that's the thing about Regs. He doesn't care what month it is. He's going to make the play that he feels is best for him. He did not want to take that second chance. Went ahead and held it. Big opportunity here for Tron, though, in the offensive zone faceoff. Can't get anything going off that faceoff draw. Regs will take it out. And he'll drop it up to the left side point. Bringing it through. That one will trickle its way in off a of deflection. And it found its way to the goalkeeper. Netted off the glove. And a wreck there by Regs. Good check on. Trying to find that attacker is Tron. He's still cooking in front. That's a rebound chance. Stolen away nicely by Regs. Saucer passed up. Minute and a half to go in this second period. Up by one now is Regs. Good look there on the short side. Oh, and a dangerous throw out. That was a mistake. But it did not come back to bite Tron. He's still only down by one. Time winding down here in the second period. Real time, 10 seconds to conclude it. One last rush up now for Regs. He still has it. Three on one. Shot there. And the guy on the left side was wide open. Regs missed him. And we are left with no score in the second. Still a two to one game in game number two. Oh, it's not often that Regs will miss a wide open opportunity like that, but Tron a little bit fortunate on a pair of plays, not being able to convert on that play where he tossed it out with the goaltender, and then that one right there where Regs has that pass to the left side, not able to convert on it, or see it rather, and was not able to capitalize it. I think for Tron, a lot of this, you're seeing him become more aggressive. I think he knows the situation, and I think that's causing some calculated risks that he feels like he has to take. The question is, what happens with Tron now? Is it all gas, or do you still have to manage the game? I think a three-goal aggregate deficit is tough when it comes to what needs to transpire in the game. But nevertheless, Tron needs to be aggressive at least somewhat, and he's doing so right there. But there's Riggs with a chance on the one tee. And a second effort off the rebound, he scores. So the one tee to the rebound, Puck goes behind the net, and that allows him to set up the one T play on the far side that he scored three goals already for. I mean, just relentless attack from Regs, and you mentioned it, not even necessarily the original play that was set up, but just being able to set himself up in that position after the first attempt to get that same one-timer that we have seen for, what, now three of his six goals between these two games, I mean, Regs just doing regs things right now. Tron not doing a lot to stop it, unfortunately. Regs just doing regs things. That is what the uh, trope has been through the majority of this tournament when it comes to these amazing players on the ice just making it happen for themselves. Here's a chance now for regs to extend this lead to five in the aggregate. 3-1 right now, your scoreline in game number two. And like we said, you got to win games to win the aggregate. It's the only way math works. 
in, in this world that we live in. Right now, Tron, uphill battle for him as he's got to get one or two here. And I think if you're Tron, it also changes how you manage this game. You may have to go and play a little bit even more aggressive to try to, off the post there, to try to bring the score closer to set up Hofi as best you can. Yeah, but your risks have to be calculated. You don't want to put Hofi in more of a hole than what he already will be in. It's a great point. How do you balance that? And that's why these players play the game, and I just talk about it, Brandon. Hey, me as well. You don't see me gripping that controller tight, man. These guys have more skill than I can imagine having. That's why I'm in the booth and they're on the ice. You will not see <laughs> me out there playing against them anytime soon. We just make videos about what they do and are amazed by it as we watch it, which is why our calls are so good sometimes, as we are as stunned as you are when we watch this play on the ice. Halfway gone through the third period frame of game number two, the last game between these two, before we flip it over to the PlayStation side. Here on this Sunday... Dare I say, I can't say Championship Sunday. That's next Sunday. But nevertheless, getting closer to that Championship Day. Lots of patience by Regs as he's in good position. It can kind of slow down a bit, can't he, Brandon? Yeah, he got to just slow down and play his game. The time is on his side. He has a four-goal aggregate lead. Cat is in a great position in the next two games. If your regs are not coasting necessarily, not on cruise control by any stretch, but you don't have to really take those risks. You can just play your natural game and take things as they come to you. And we'll see if he does that as a shot. There is gloved out. That was the first. If we go back to game number one, that was the first shot from regs. He's looking for that top shelf shot, and it's been denied three times now in this competition it's been denied but that's what has opened up that opportunity for that play over at the post for that cross crease and when you're defending one thing typically it's going to leave something else open if you have the time and patience to get it and that's what regs is so good at he's so good at that possession game he's so good at really just picking his spots being patient waiting for that second opportunity to kind of show itself and then he capitalizes on it these games have been a perfect example of that because even though that far shot hasn't been there he's turned it into that one time that we've seen so much the versatility of regs is why he has won over a dozen championships and tournaments and trophies in his career in nhl esports as with five to play he was looking for that long range one t far side again he couldn't pull that off that time but play moves on wrap around chance and he scores that's hartman and it's another goal for Team Canada. And if you are a fan of Team Canada, you are feeling great about where your team is right now. A 7-2 aggregate lead, two games to go. And man, if you're Hofi, you have quite the task. A hand as Regs not done yet. Hartman breaking hearts. A hat trick on that play and Nick Regs is breaking it open here for Team Canada. Two goals in as many minutes, and this is the game management we talk about now going down from just three to four, from five to six in the aggregate, and that is difficult to be on that side if you're Hofi looking down the barrel of this result right now. So we'll see if Tron can get one back. As we are... Closing out this first half, going into halftime of the aggregate. Like I said yesterday, the Falcons came back 20, uh, lost a 28 to three lead. So anything can happen. I will never rule that out after watching Latvia. I will never rule that out after watching Czechia this year. But things do not look good right now as the final minute is upon us. Real time, 60 seconds to conclude the third period for Team Switzerland. At least right now in the half is a chance there and scores. And hey, Tron, managing the game, has cut into this deficit. And that's what it's all about because even though Tron not going to be able to do anything more to help his team, he still has 49.7 seconds to do that. So he has to take advantage of every single one. The more he can close that gap for Hofi, the better the chances are for Switzerland to make this comeback. Let's see if Tron can get another one here late. Oh, I saw a lane there. He pulled it. And a penalty coming up. Extra attacker going to come out here. So he'll have a power play. Or an extra man out for right now. Driving in front, touched up. This is huge now for Tron. 38 sec or 28 seconds to play. 
And if I'm Tron, maybe this is why I'm not actually playing the game, but I'm really considering pulling the goalie potentially, not right now, but later on this possession. If he gets another face off, I consider going six on four to try to get that second chance for a goal. I think you're absolutely right. We'll have to see how that plays out as well here. But if Regs can help it, he's gonna go on the power kill. Shaved off 10 seconds so far. They're gonna shave off another 10. And he is successfully doing so right now and he scores! The penalty kill turns to power kill. You can't give Rakes that much time. And he extends this lead back out to seven, or just six, sorry. I know that we're just wrapping up game two, but that is a gutting blow for the Swiss. You have that goal go in before that. You get the power play. You're thinking, hey, now, maybe we can cut this thing before if we get one more. And then all of a sudden, not even a shot on that on the power play. Regs just goes down the ice with ease, gets another opportunity, and he's not done, Nick. He gets another. And that is what we talk about when we say every goal counts. Going from a five-goal deficit to seven in the aggregate is brutal for any team. You can't let up that late in the game, and unfortunately, it happened there. Your final scoreline in game number two, Team Canada seven, Team Switzerland two. They're up 10 to three in this aggregate. And for the second straight game, Regs with over 15 minutes of time on attack, just absolutely ridiculous. His ability to control the play, control the game, and have that possession. And for Tron, you got to feel for him. He put up a great effort, but just no response where that could be coordinated to that possession games that Regs played. And when you have a guy like Regs that's 15 minutes of time on attack and 22 shots, typically he is going to be able to put the puck in the net. He did that in drone in this game and just really impressive what we saw from him and now if you're Hofi I mean the pressure kind of shifts all on you you got to come in you're down by seven in the aggregate and you're going up against one of the best players in this tournament in CAD on the other side so it's going to be a tall tall order for Switzerland but you know you, you said it Nick We've seen crazy things. Latvia last year, Latvia in the group stage this year, Antonio Manon making things interesting against the U.S. in that solo performance. We saw Junior Pens literally on his own advance his team to the, to the playoffs last year. We've seen some pretty nutty things happen in this tournament, but if Switzerland comes back, that might top the list. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, we talked about this in the pregame as we'll bring you back to the studio here. Um, we talked about this in the pregame. Anything can happen in these games. We know that. But more importantly, we talked about that five of the six games that we watched were one or two goal deficits. Four of the games were one goal games. Only one was seven to one. Here, anything happened. Regs wins three to one and seven to two. So is that the breakout game? Is this the game that decides the series? It could be. Hofi and Cat around I mean the corner, but we don't know. Yeah, and I mean, it, it certainly right now feels like it. I mean, you look at what Regs was able to just do when opening this aggregate scoreline up the way he did. If you're CAD, I mean, you're feeling about as good as you possibly could. You have a great teammate on the other end that just did what he did. You know your own ability is going to be enough to carry through as well because that's the thing. We've talked about Regs and all of this attention towards him Cat is one of the best players in the world as well. You have to remember that he, he has the ability yeah. to do just as much as Rex just did, if not more. That's the scary thing about this dynamic duo that Canada has. So, you know, it kind of feels like that might have been the breakout game for Canada. We'll have to see what Hofi can do. If he can have a massive game three, get things going to give a little bit of hope to the Switzerland team, then, hey, who knows? Maybe things change a little bit. But as of now, just kind of get that feeling that it feels like it's Canada's series to lose. It's their position in the semifinals to take. We'll see if they can finish the job. But based off of that performance that we saw from Regs and based off of what we already know about CAD coming in, you have to feel really, really good about the red and white moving on. Yeah, I think you're right as well. At least the red and white for Team Canada, at least. But, hey, a lot of great goals we saw, Brandon, in that contest. However, if you missed the group stage, I'm a little bit hurt inside, but I'm not going to be too mad about it. We have your back as we get ready for the second half of this halftime. The halftime show we're going to show you right now is some top goals from the group stage. Let's take a look at some of the amazingness that happened last week right here on this broadcast. 
So that is a massive goal for Kevinator. The pressure shifts now to Maverick, but a chance of Lady Brunette, a breakaway. He scores on the forehand. Lady Brunette ties it up to two. I said she had to answer the call, and she did. Cheever gets it back, near dangerous chance, and here's Cheever now on a chance. One on two, spins, oh, 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 oh. Cheever ties it up. The prettiest goal of the tournament right there. Two, two, Cheever with a beautiful goal. The goaltender here, and again, going north on your screen is Ukraine. Heck, face off one by Rouse, back to the point shot, and it scores! A point shot tipped in. A beauty of a goal set up there from the point to point. Hey, that's Junior Penn's esque right there on that D to D. That shot goes in, and we now have a lead again in this contest. 3.30 to play. Tot, or excuse me, 6 to 5 now, your score. Martindale up ahead. Dawes trying to tie a shot, and he scores on that same side. That's Dawson Mercer. And Dodds once again comes back from two down and ties this game up even. As it's five to seven now. Dodds closing in on his matchup against Cat. They took a timeout in that matchup. Bring you more there with under a minute to play. Here, though, two and a half to play. There's Cat with a shot. He scores. Or Ray with a shot. And he scores. Greg, short side, gets a chance, and it's 2-2. This game is tied late the third. So you see the goals there. Just amazing goals all around for these players. Just insane from uh, Chibra, Lady Brunette, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, I expect more of that here. Uh, we saw amazing things happen yesterday, Brandon. Uh, but, hey, we're only halfway into the first quarterfinals of today we're bound to see something from Eki we're bound to see something from Kevinator or Dirty Dangler we'll probably see something from Cad and Hofi we've got a lot more to go here yeah there is still a lot of skill that is left here on the table we're not done despite seeing Tron and Rags just go at it both players that have had some of those highlight real plays in the past but you know you kind of look at Cad especially I think with him He's just so technically sound at the game. When you kind of look at this matchup here that we might have here in a minute between Hofi and him, it's going to be interesting to see that dynamic. Hofi trying to have the comeback, trying to kind of claw his way back into this. Well, for Cad, I'm interested to see how Canada manages this just because you know that Hofi is going to throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at Cad. He has to. He has no choice. So if you're Cad, how do you manage this? Do you play it more conservatively? Do you just play your game? It's going to be an interesting dynamic because Regs has already done so much for Canada in this series. Cad, he could not score any, and as long as he doesn't allow seven in two games, Canada moves on. Yeah, you're right. So more on that in a little bit. Cad and Hofi coming up in just a little bit. A couple minutes for them to get set up right now. In the meantime, uh, we're going to take a short break after Cad and Hofi play. Finland and Germany to round out the quarterfinals right here on Twitch.tv slash IHF Hockey. You're watching the 2023 IHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss it, but I promise you, the conclusion of this contest is going to be great. And then we got Finland and Germany coming up right next time. Hey, stick around. Tell your friends to tell your friends. We'll be back in just a minute.
Here's Zaki. He's in. Stops up backhand and he scores. Uh, I was craving when I scored the goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. And welcome back to the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Bigsby, B Major. And Brandon, man, that first half has any indication of what we're about to see in matchup one, part two. I expect nothing less than uh, incredible goals, high scoring action, some back and forth, and maybe a little drama to throw into the mix. We got Cat Cooks and Hofi coming up in just a minute. Yeah, they're getting set up and ready to go when it's going to be very interesting to see where this series goes. You see the two teams on your left and right, Team Canada with CAD and Regs, Team Switzerland with Hofi and Tron. And you look at CAD and Tron, or excuse me, CAD and Hofi rather, it's going to be a lot of fun because Regs doing what he needs to do to get CAD to put into a good position. Does CAD become a little bit more defensive and just try to guide that? Does he push and try to increase this lead even more than what it's at or does Hofi do the unthinkable and make this comeback happen I mean there's just so many different things to look out for with so many storylines and you kind of mentioned this Nick if we some of if we see some of the inches and sheds of skill that we saw in those first two games this is going to be a lot of fun don't be shocked if we see at least one wild highlight real worthy play here in these next two games it's going to be interesting to watch i would expect nothing less let's first start with talking about uh the player behind us here in uh that we're going to throw up here behind us in hofi some interesting things about him is you know when we look at our papers we look at what we got going on another newcomer in NHL, so at least in this tournament. So we talk about him, a little bit of unknown factor, but played very well in the in the group stage to get us to this point. Yeah, I mean, he did what he needed to do to help his team qualify. And I know obviously a lot of the attention going towards Tron last week, beating Ekin, and now it's the game that pushed Switzerland through. But nevertheless, it takes two to make a thing go right in this tournament. You have to have that dual con con contribution from both teammates. So Tron did his job last week, but so did Hofi winning the games that he needed to win to put his team through. And now Hofi has a monumental task in front of him, having to go up against Cad and not just go against Cad, but a seven goal aggregate deficit. It's going to be interesting. He's a new player. As you mentioned, Nick, what better way to make a name for yourself in this community than to make this happen, pull off this comeback and to knock off one of the best players and best countries in the world in Canada. It also takes two to make it out of sight. So let's not lose sight of the other guy on the other side in Canada in Cad Cook, Sam Landry. And this is a kid that's coming up from the ranks here, uh, plays for one of our organizations in the NHL and is, is looking to really make a mark, not only in 6v6, but now in ones. Yeah, and you know, it, it's so funny. I remember a couple of years ago in another tournament that we worked, we saw Cad, and yeah, he did. wasn't necessarily of that same stature then, but he was still one of the top 1v1 players in the world. And I know he's had all the success on the sixth side, but do not forget, 1v1 was his original bread and butter. That's really where he originally made that name for himself. And for the first time, finally getting to represent Team Canada here for this 2023 rendition of this tournament, had such a technically skilled player. I don't really know if there is another player that knows the game as well mechanically as he does. The way he is able to know his positioning, know where the puck is at, and really just react to what the game gives him. He's just so good at being able to understand the technicalities of the game itself in the way that he plays. And you see that in every single game that he is in. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see how Hofi defends that. But let's see what he can do, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can the comeback happen? We're about to find out. Let's find out in just a few short moments. Down by seven. It's Canada and Switzerland. Game number three. Let's get into it. As we have it right here on your screen, we are still watching Team Canada side going north on your screen. 
controlling Team USA. Going south is Team Switzerland controlling Team Canada. So Cad versus Hofi down by seven. And the first shot comes in from Hofi from that high slot area. We already have a stoppage. And, hey, you know, if you're Hofi here, you got to get something going quick, fast, and in a hurry. Yeah, it kind of reminds you a little bit of what we saw from Antonio Manon yesterday having to start down six due to Eka not being able to make it. Hofi having to start up down seven. And we saw Antonio Manon make things a little bit scary for the U.S. in that series. So Hofi hoping he can do something similar, but he has to get going early. He has to get something going early. We'll see what he does here as a shot comes in there. That same play that Regs does. Looks like Cad and Regs have played together just a little bit here as we got the same style, the same goal, and the same player in Hartman, it's now 11-3 to in the aggregate. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Ryan Hartman so far here today, to say the least, and Cad doing exactly what he was hoping to do, getting that early start, increasing that deficit in the aggregate score, and he may not be done here, Nick. He may not be done. We'll see what he can do. As Cad is just going to make sure that game four, for him at least, is a non-sequitur, and Hofi looking to make game four the most important game he's played in his career as that newcomer. See if the pressure is becoming too much to mount here. And hey, Team USA, the lesser team in overall, but controlling it quite well is Team Canada. And they're doing amazing here up against a really good Team Switzerland controlling Team Canada. Try to dance that one through the middle. He did, but couldn't get that shot off. As they'll try again. Cad. One-timer chance, bounces out to the point. Cross-point pass, back in, down low. Left circle, working, spinning. Left circle, move. That shot gets deflected off to the right side. Picked up now by Cad as he's cooking behind the net. Might make that pun a few more times. I'll throw in some Food Network references as well. Be like, oh, that's a Tyler Florence-style cooking. But here comes Hofi. Oh, the breakaway chance, the backhand, and a save by Cad. He picked up the manual goaltender just for a little bit, but then switched it back. And that AI made the save. That might have been a positioning move by Cad. Smart play there as he's back on offense. Working now. Cad just dancing around beautifully. It's majestic to watch him play right now. Wide open door, the backhand on the delay, and he scores. It's 2-0 in this game. And do you want to know what I mean when I say Cad is one of the most technically sound, mechanically advanced players that we have in this game? That right there, that whole sequence is exactly what he talked about. You said it, Nick, just dancing his round, contorting his player positioning every which way. There are not many other players that can do it to that ability, and it gave him a goal right there. That was just beautiful from start to finish. That right there could drive a sane man berserk. Not to worry, CA to the dizzies back to wizard. That is a yay reference, and I am really proud of myself for delivering that with such execution flawlessly not as technically sound though as what cad's doing in the kitchen right now as we welcome pogs in chat nick DeMeo, f5 penguin alongside brandon bigsby b major love pogs by the way one of my favorite 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 people in nhl esports absolutely pogs astounding to see him in chat supporting cad right here uh in this competition as he's up right now two in this game up by nine in the aggregate for team canada are you proud of me brandon that was a good reference right on the music side Word for word, bar for bar, my friend. I think that was pretty solid right there. Can't say one bad thing about it. <laughs> As play continues on, first period. Nearing its conclusion. And outstretched sticks will meet in the middle. Coming up with it after that collision and bouncy bass was Hofi. He's got to get his game together here and at least level it off before the end of period number one, but it's not looking good for him right now. Now down by nine in the aggregate. Coming up on a minute left here in this first period. Cad just wait, waiting patiently, not letting anything get into his game. He'll take that shot off the rebound, and that one's picked up by Hofi in the middle. Bumped off that at center ice, and Cad back on the attack. Real time, 10 seconds will conclude this first period in game number three. So he'll get into the middle and can't get that shot off. Good effort there by Cad. And time winds down the first period over 
Two periods left to go in game number three, but Hofi and Team Switzerland got an uphill battle for them right now. It's an uphill battle indeed, and CAD just steepening that climb that Hofi has to make, getting those two goals in the first period, extending the aggregate lead up to nine. And, you know, you kind of said it, Nick. Now it's to a point to where if you're Hofi, time really starting to run thin here. You have five more periods. You're down by nine. You have got to at least get a couple of goals a period at the pace that this is going at. And that will be keeping Cavs scoreless, which right now, the way he's playing, difficult to potentially do. Well, switching feeds now. You'll be watching Hofi going north on your screen due to the sound difficulty, technical whatevers with uh, with Cad's feed. But we're back here on Hofi's feed now. He's going north on your screen. The game score and the way that's shaped out still looks the same as that shot there is deflected wide off the goalie. Hofi picking it up from behind the net. Now he'll work to it. But not able to get it on net sustainably. Just a one and done for him right now. So what can Cad do? Now let me ask you this here. Cad, knowing how he plays, and he's a younger guy, a little bit more aggressive. These young whippersnappers like to just pour it on. What does he do in a game like this? Is it constant pressure, or are we good now, and do we just get to the uh, semifinals? I'll be honest with you. You have that nine-goal advantage. If you wanted to, you could really choose whichever one you want at the rate this is going. I don't really think you really have to commit to one or the other. If you're CAD, why not just continue playing your game? If the score ends up what it is, if you want to be sportsman-like, sure, you go ahead and take your foot off of the gas pedal, but... If that's not the concern, if you just want to go ahead and play things out, I don't see why you change anything from what you're doing. He's playing well. You want to continue that forward momentum. Why not let it fly? Why not continue to let that skill flourish and move your team on the style? As the Drake song YOLO plays in my head now. Thank you for that. That's the second Drake song you've inadvertently referenced in this broadcast, and I could not be prouder of you. We have a Let's wait and see what happens next, okay? <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> I was not expecting that. Thank you. That one broke me. I don't break very often on broadcast. I appreciate that <laughs> to the nth degree. It's a breakaway here from Cat. Going to work here. Breakaway forehand. Slips it through off the flying poke check. And it doesn't work. 3 nothing now in game number three. Cad putting the team on his back. A 10-goal lead in the aggregate. I may have broken you, but Cad broke the defense just a little bit better on that play. Just split it right down the middle for that breakaway. Hofi trying to get that save on the manual goaltending move, but just not able to do it. And it is all Team Canada in this series. A 10-goal aggregate lead, and we're only halfway through game number one between these two players. Got to wonder what the over is on this competition now at this point. So we'll keep an eye on how that works. And you know what? The resilience here also important for Hofi. Can he? He's got to represent his country. He's got to be proud to be in this position. You're up against a really good squad. We know that. Talked about this before. We rank top five players of NHL ones. I think, uh, you know, Regs, Cad, and Pogs are in that top five, uh, regardless of what happens. So, uh, you know, two of the best players in NHL Esports once right here together. But nevertheless, you still have a country to play for. You have a game to play for, and you're not out yet. You still got to play. And we'll see if that can come together or if it's just too much, too insurmountable for Team Switzerland like right now as Canada has their eyes set on the semifinals next week right here. Same time, same place. We'll be joining you alongside for this ride for the semifinals matchups. So far, we know that Czechia and USA are in. Will it be Canada and then the winner of Finland and Germany coming up after this competition? We'll have interviews with many players as we round out this four-game aggregate of quarterfinals number one on this Sunday. Two quarterfinals will be played today. You're watching the first. Move here by Cad. Oh, wow, and an old goal there by Bellows. He tried to rip that one back across the goalie. It bounced off a skate, and it's in the net here for another one on top of this four-goal lead now. I mean, honestly, I would think the Cat is preparing a buffet he's cooking so much in this first game. It's insane what he's been able to do. And like we said, we're still just in the second period of the first match between these two. If you're Hofi, you just kind of have to weather the storm and try to find some momentum. 
Let's see if that momentum will find itself as a chance there. That would have been the momentum driver for Hofi as he wraps that one around off the pipe. That one will bounce out to the right side. Cat will pick that up through center. Just sends that one in. Line change is a foot for four of his five players. As Hofi will skirt that one into the attacking end. Hofi now right side. Drops that off up top, right point, left point, now pass. Back in front, down low, shot, score! A good little three-pass move off the down and in. Brings that back up top, drives it back home, and he's on the board for the first time today. And that may exactly be what, what Hofi needed. Maybe it's not enough to get him back in the series, but nevertheless, you always want to try to get some momentum. You always want to try to play these games as tight as you can going against some of the best players in the world. As it counts for something. And I think at this point, that's what you got to do. Have it count for something. We wind down the second period here. Cad, one last rush. Behind the net. Backhanding, looking for a room. He'll pull that one out, Will Hofi. Hofi trying to get past the defender on the left side. Can't get there. Shovels it on net as the buzzer expires the period. A 10-goal aggregate lead now for Team Canada, and things do look very bright for the Swiss on the other side. Yeah, and I mean, you're seeing Cad and really just a similar story from what we saw from Rex just about 30 minutes ago. Time on attack, constant pressure in controlling the game. Almost at 12 minutes of TOA, he's got eight shots. So maybe not the amount of opportunities, but I think that's just Cad being selective, trying to pick his spots, waiting for that prime opportunity to really open itself up. Well, for Hofi, Four and a half minutes, he's getting shots on. He's taking advantage of the time that he's getting, just not enough time compared to what Cat is getting right now. Third period underway here. Regs in chat. Hey, buddy. As we want to welcome everybody to twitch.tv slash IHF Hockey or wherever you're watching on social media. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. We're all over the place. Nick DeMeo, Brandon Bigsby here for the entirety of this championship tournament. Thank our sponsor, Skoda, and Strauss as he lays that one in front. Hope he picks it up again, though. Second effort. Some life coming out of the Swiss right now. Will it be too little, too late? Time will tell here as we're in the third period of game one between these two combatants. Pushed up along the wall. Now coming out towards center. Cad. Wrapping. A slot area, back down low. And the patience there by him, and you're right, he's probably really selective on everything he's doing right now, given the circumstance of the game. And I'd wager if it was closer, we'd probably see a little bit more shots, but still that technical, surgical move, almost Denzel Washington-esque. I'm surgical with this thing as he goes to work here. We'd still probably see that regardless of the scoreline. I don't know if Cad has another account that he uses, but it has to be Cad operates to just opposite end Cad Cooks because he is surgical at the way he plays. We're seeing that so far throughout this game. He lays that one off to Lafferty. They'll drive into the zone. Eight gone so far here in the third period. Canada, if the scoreline holds here, well in hand to move on to the semifinals as they will join Czechia and USA that qualified and got in yesterday. Chance here now for Hofi. He'll lay that one on. Good save by Team Canada. Controlling Team USA. A little bit daunting if you're new to this format. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. We can probably do that now. But the decision for Team Canada to elect to use Team USA to save Canada for later rounds was something that Regs talked about last year. And I'm sure that was a factor going into it for team selections this year, Brandon. And how about this, Nick? If things shake out the way many feel they will, we'll have to wait for that Germany-Finland matchup as a chance there again for Cad. If Finland wins, guess who can will play? Czechia in a rematch of the quarterfinals last year. So not only is there a chance for redemption to maybe get it, as Hofi trying to get some things going here. A nice goal there, back-to-back -back for him. Hey, two goals on the board now for Hofi. And if anything means anything, it does provide the opportunity for a chance. And I mean, that's what you're looking for, a chance. 
It's all you could ask for. I mean, you're down by nine. There's still some time to play, and you're looking at it. Have to score about two to three goals here per period. And that's while keeping Cavs scoreless. So it's still a pretty tall task. But, you know, if you're Hofi, all you can do is try. You have to try. You have to put yourself in position. Good defense here by Hofi as he's been pelted with shots right there. Three in a row. As he's back on defense. Had going to work yet again. Seth Jones. We saw Regs really poured on with Seth Jones two games ago and in game two. He scored three goals with Seth Jones in just mere minutes. And then Hartman did the same thing. Two goals in two minutes. So a lot of effort there by that right winger and defense pairing respectively for Team Canada. They're going to work now. As they're well in lead by nine goals in the aggregate. That's offside. 341 to go. And you got to wonder, does Team Canada pick Canada in the second round? And I guess it depends on who they're going to be facing up against. Yeah, well, we know we can't. We know that they can't face Finland. We do right. know that because Canada, being number two overall, all, all the teams left. Finland being number one, they can't meet until the final. So it's going to be either the U.S. or Czechia. You can't face Germany either because they're the lowest deep left. So you know it's going to be one of those two teams. It just kind of depends on how you feel those matchups end up, Nick. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see how Regs and Cav manage that because you played Czechia last year. You didn't use Team Canada. Czechia pulled off the upset using Team Canada. So it kind of just goes to show you that it did make a difference in that game last year. While for the U.S., you've played them once already and you both used Team Canada. They split those two games so it's going to be a lot of fun to see how they manage that because both matchups are interesting as Cad almost just twirled his way to a goal there you mentioned it this time last year in the quarterfinals Czechia beat Canada 11 to 9 then losing to USA 4 to 12 in the next round Czechia already chose Canada so if the bad blood continues between these two countries if you know Czechia can't use Canada you might. I, I don't think you pick Canada if you're if you're Team Canada the first saying Canada way too many times in one sentence, Brandon. But the question is, how much of a disadvantage do you want to be at? Because you've already used the U.S. today. The thing with Czechia, they still could use the U.S., which would be a better option than using, say, Finland or Czechia on your own end. So it kind of depends. And not only that, but. Czechia will have to choose first, so Canada will have that opportunity to see what Czechia does and then react based off of that, having that higher seed than them. We'll talk more about the overalls of those maybe three, four, and five teams to pick from here in just a little bit, but we're winding down in game number three. Three seconds, two, and one. That should do it. Your final score of game three, four to two. Team Canada with a nine-goal aggregate going into game number four. Yeah, and I mean, what a performance there by Cav, just doing everything that he needed to do and then some. I mean, being able to not just keep Hofi at bay for the most part, aside from that third period, but to really be able to even increase the gap a little bit more from where it was when we started. I mean, you're just seeing Canada doing what Canada has done, doing what Canada felt like they could do coming into this tournament playing well, dominating on the offensive end, and just making life difficult for anyone that crosses their path. We have one more game, but, you know, assuming that they finish this thing out and close the deal, next week going to be really interesting, depending on if they play Czechia or U.S., because that is going to be a really, really fun match. But still some more business to take care of here. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how Hofi can maybe continue that momentum, because he started to get things going there in that third period, which was good to see. He absolutely did, and maybe that'll be enough. But you gotta be you gotta score nine on Cat. I just don't. I don't see it happening. Yeah. Like I don't. I think if you're down by two, you you might you might you might be able to do that. You you could score two more than Cad and, and take and tie it up and force OT. But Regs did his part. He added yeah. two goal lead, five goal lead, three to one, seven to two. He did everything he had to do. Set up Cad comfortably. Good wingman in regs there to do his part and set him up nicely. Now, now you could coast in game number four. Yeah, I mean, you know what they say is just like an alley-oop. You lob that up, your teammate goes up in the air, and so far, Cat has slammed it home without any hesitation. I mean, when you have this format where you have to rely on your teammates, and you typically see... The teams that are the most successful are always the ones that have both contribute and show yeah. up in a big way. And Canada having regs, having CAD, I said it. I don't know if there is a more 
talented duo in this tournament than yeah. those two. You just right. kind of get that feeling from the accomplishments, from what we've seen from them, from the style that each of them play, which is very high skill level, but also very different. I just don't know if you just look down the board. I mean, you could debate Finland, you could debate the US, you could debate Czechia in that argument as well. I just think when you look at the pedigree, when you look at what these two have done, I don't know if there is a more talented and more skilled duo in this tournament than what Canada has with Regs and Cat. They have shown that every single game they have played so far, they only dropped that one game in overtime where Cookie beat Regs. But aside from that, it has been nothing short of perfection for this team, and they have continued that on here so far today. Getting ready for game four here in just mere moments. We're glad to have you here for this ride. It's been an interesting one so far. Canada well in position to punch their ticket into the semifinals. As we said, we, they await Czechia or Team USA. And then Finland and Germany coming up later. That's, our, that's probably our featured matchup now that we know kind of where this is going to sit uh, as we look forward to that matchup here in just a little bit. But yeah, Team Finland, Team Germany coming up here in just mere moments. But first, game four, and then we'll have interviews, but... You know, that's coming up later, and we don't want you to miss out on what will be transpiring between those two Goliaths and everything they bring to the table here on this broadcast. We're set to go in about three minutes uh, in this competition for game number four. We're hearing word from our technical director right now, so that's happening. Uh, but we'll bring you back to the studio for just a moment here as I'm watching the teams get ready on my screen in front of me. Everybody gearing up. Canada. U.S., Czechia, who do you have for that fourth is really the question. Man, that's that's a good question. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have kind of penciled in Finland already, and I understand that. They've earned that right. They've won the tournament the last two years, 2020 and 2022. You have Eki coming in, Yessi being his teammate, who has been phenomenal, and I said this last week, I think that he might be the player that – in my opinion, is most likely to break out within that elite core. Seeing him play on the sixes side, seeing what he's been able to do so far on the 1v1 side, he is a really high-skilled player, and I think that he has that ability to really show himself as one of the top players in the world in this tournament. But look at the Germany side. It just feels like they always have that ability to stay in it. It's kind of similar to Latvia a little bit, to where you never count them out. They always find a way to show up in the big moment when they need to rise to the occasion the most. Both Captain Dirty Dangler and Kevinator coming back from last season's team, they squeaked their way into the playoffs in winning four straight games against a team that were right in that hunt with them. I think one point separated them before those four games. They went in, won all four games, and got in. So it's going to be a different challenge against Switzerland, or excuse me, against Finland, rather. But if you're Germany, you have that experience, you're playing with Team Canada, can you pull it off? I mean, if there's any team that I could say would surprise Finland, I think Germany has to be pretty high up on that list. I think you're right. And we, we've seen what they could do with late game heroics, with astounding goals, with tenacity, with, with ferociousness. And they, they have the right now to play against the number one team in Team Finland. The odds on favorite, the two time going for the dynasty. A lot of storylines to be written there, but not yet. We cannot turn that page. Just now, we have one more game of foot between Canada and Switzerland as we're proud to represent all of these countries. And we talked about this yesterday, the community level of the teams, Latvia, the Czechia coming out with all their support. We see that all the time. Good to see that continuing on today in this broadcast. Yeah, and you know, I think to me, that is what is so special typically about this tournament just seeing all of these countries come together all of these different hockey fans really galvanize around their two players around their countries the players representing their countries and you mentioned a few names like latvia but a few other teams that we really saw show out ukraine had a nice base last week when they almost pulled off a massive story and got their way in the playoffs we saw sweden step up really in droves we saw a lot of other countries slovakia really step up last week and their fans base kind of rally around their team and that's just to name a few this tournament is always so so fun because of that country pride there's not any other tournament like this it makes it so fun so unique and that's why it means so much not just to the fans but to the players that are representing their country as well couldn't have said it better brandon 
One more game here between Canada and Switzerland. As we watch Hofi going north on your screen, controlling Team Canada from Switzerland. And Cat Cooks going south on your screen, controlling Team USA from Team Canada. A little bit weird, but we're here. As I want to get your thoughts here, you know, Cad stepping in this year, playing well for his country, kind of could look at it on paper and go, okay, this guy's really, really good, but has really made a name for himself in just a few short weeks in this international tournament, Brandon. Yeah, and I mean, I think Cad is a guy to where most people already rather familiar with him just because of that reputation, what he has been able to do in the past, not just on the 1v1 side, but on the 6th side as well. But his first time representing Team Canada, you have to remember last year with Team Canada, we were saying something similar on how dynamic of a duo they had, having regs last year again with Saphir, Saphir Snipes Gold, who I'm sure many people are familiar with. That was a great duo that I think yeah. a lot of people are like, man, it can't get much better than that for Canada. But yet here they are with CAD joining regs. And you could argue maybe it just got a little bit better for Canada because going from one elite player in Saphir to another elite player in CAD, it just goes to show you with CAD how he's been able to represent this team, how well he has played. It's just so, so interesting. And that dynamic between, between those two has been really fun to watch and keep a track of so far. As we're halfway through the first period, time flying by here in this competition. We'll have an interview with Regs coming up at the end of this contest. We'll make sure you stay tuned for that, and then Finland and Germany coming up after that. That's bound to be a goaded competition. Can't wait to see what happens there. As Brandon Bigsby will have the call. I will back up this, this man to my left uh, in a few short moments. But here... We have this contest to conclude still. Cad just backskating in. I love how he just tries to bite the defender and then exploits the movement and capitalizes. Hofi throwing that out. It is February 26th. We do throw those out. We play those. Short hand chance there. Short side chance there, rather, off the post. Regs the goat. Raptors GC, I could not agree more. I was saying earlier, if we set up a top five, the shot there from Cat goes in five hole. We extend that lead to a 10 piece. Top five ones players. Regs is up there every single time without question. Probably number one for me. Top six is players. He's in the top three. Probably for me. Top three's players. He's in the top three. Probably for me. I think everybody would agree. Like, where else? But Regs, if they do a duos next year, if there's like a cross-play 2v2, are you a number one there as Cad bangs this one home by 11 now, extends the lead? Uh, are, are, do, do you win the twos there as well as we'll go back to – we'll stay right here for right now. Uh, he wins the twos. Do you think, uh, Brandon, if he starts to do FIFA, uh, does he win the 11v11? And then does he win the 1v1? And then with the threes there. What about NASCAR? Where does the line stop is what I want to know, Brandon. I'll be honest, man. When it comes to regs, <laughs> he's one of those players and one of those people to where I'm not doubting him whatever game he's touching at this point. He just kind of has that mentality to him. He has that amount of skill within being able to play and just that technical awareness to where... I'll be honest, man. I don't care what. Get, put him in fall, guys, for all I care. I'm putting <laughs> my bet on him more likely than not to at least be in the top end of the group that he's playing at, against or with. So, Raptors GC, give my guy Regs a tryout, man. Why not? Can't hurt. Regs 2023 Fall Guys champion. I can see it now. Uh, and we talked about take it to the basketball court. Raptors GC, put your eyeballs on the attention of the fact that uh, Brandon and I are... are Looking at 2K intently uh, to bring this level of production to there. And uh, I think it will be innovative and unstoppable. Much like CAD is innovative and unstoppable right here. 17 to 5 in the aggregate. As he is just pouring it on here in the first period. Up by 3 now. And, you know, not to get too far off topic, but let me just say, because we were talking about how people in groups really galvanize oh. around this tournament. 
How oh. about this? Oh, what a goal. That's it. Oh, Cad. I, I can't even get the words out. Cad is taking the whole thing over. This is his show now. He is putting on a display, right? I mean, look at this move. The wraparound all the way around. We've seen that attempt at time after time this tournament. No one has been able to convert it until just then. Cad yep. just breaking this thing open in this series right now. But, you know, as I was saying, how cool is it not just seeing countries come together, but different sports now come together through this tournament. Raptors GC with the amazing work that they're doing in the NBA 2K League, coming in supporting Team Canada. I mean, just another great example of how teams and people are just really investing in this tournament, tournament galvanizing around their country. It is so, so unique, so, so cool to see. So a big shout out to Raptors GC for coming in supporting their country here. It's, it's like I said, just another example of why this tournament is so special with that country pride. Hofi jumps a couple of times there. Cattle win the faceoff for period number two of game number four in the aggregate. Up by 13 now. It's a baker's dozen for those keeping score at home. And as mentioned, we'll turn our attention to Finland and Germany coming up in a little bit. Conversation with Regs on air, not just in chat, as that's Cat again. Oh my goodness. Cat said, hey, you guys talk about Regs too much here. I'm still playing. <laughs> I'm still playing. Oh, man. I mean, how can you not get the attention if you're Regs? I mean, look what he's doing right now. I mean, 5 nothing, second period. We talked about how Rex burst at this thing open, but I mean, he might score more goals than what he did at the rate this is going. 7-1 to one is the largest deficit so far in the quarterfinals. That's Czechia and Latvia by Pepka over Rouse. Right now, we're at a five-goal deficit. Will we see more? Will we see Hofi? We'll have to see what happens. In mere moments here as we're winding down this game four, this quarterfinals number three, the first today on Sunday. Go offside here, and if you're Finland and Germany, you're watching this going, oh man, this is this is not <laughs> what I expected. I, uh, you get a little bit worried if you're Eki. I mean, not even just that, but what about if you're the U.S. having to play Team Canada? You've already played them once, so you're somewhat familiar with them, but I mean... I don't think we have seen an overall performance like this all tournament long. I don't even remember last year we've seen this no. dominant of a display. I mean, this is just pure dominance, and this isn't a reflection on Switzerland. This is just how good this Team Canada unit has been playing between Regs and Cat. I mean, it's insane to watch. It's insane to look at. And, I mean, Nick, I have to agree with you. If you're Finland, if you're the U.S., if you're Czechia, if you're Germany, you are watching this right now. you like, boy, we have got a monumental task on our hands if we have to run across this team. They look as good as anyone right now, and I don't think that there's been any other team and any other duo of players that have played as consistently well and as dominant as this Canada unit has with Cadillacs. I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, I was mentioning Finland because Eki and Regs have met many times before, as we mentioned in real life as well, so... Uh, to see that matchup happen again, this time on the international stage online. There's Hofi on the board. And Switzerland said, I am proud for my country. I will not go quietly into that good night. And it may not make a difference for the end result, but it does make a difference for pride and for his country. Yeah, and you want to represent your country in the best way possible. That's what's so good about this tournament is that you're not just representing yourself. It's not just, you know, me, myself, and I. It is a country, your homeland, that you are representing. Hofi, you did a great job representing, as well as Tron on the Xbox side of things, as well as Cad ordering a 20-piece. That will cost $5.99, my friend. How about that? Up to 20, a 14-goal advantage on aggregate. It's almost as if you referenced the previous tournament we did with a select sponsor there, Brandon. I appreciate it. The, uh, the reference there on the pricing of that 20 piece. Nice job. Oh, man. <laughs> that in New Jersey will get you far, my friend. Anyway, we're moving on here as Hofi lights the lamp here in the second period. Noah Gregor on the board. He scores another one. 
And Hofi just continuing the push, man. I mean, you got to respect that he does not care what the score is. He does not care about the aggregate scoreline. He is going to keep on pushing. I love it. I respect it. And, you know, give Hofi a lot of credit. He has had a bit of an uphill battle here in this game. The team in Switzerland being down coming into it at that disadvantage. But Hofi, he's battled well. You have to give him credit. It's not an easy task to play against Cat and Regs. Both Tron and Hofi doing everything they can, representing their country well, as we said, and really just trying their best to continue to push the issue, making things look good for their own money. And Brandon, as somebody that is, you and I have both had a front row seat to uh, differentiating levels of sportsmanship in NHL esports, uh, I will tip my hat off to any single player that plays out a game regardless of the result over any player that chooses not to do that as Hofi with a breakaway chance here. Forehand, backhand, forehand scores. Beauty of a goal there late here in the second period. As I was saying, uh, I've seen many, many things happen in my time. I've called NHL Esports, I'll, I'll just say it now, for eight years. And, uh, you know, I've seen it all. And I've seen really poor sportsmanship. What I love about the international IHF play is that every game has been played out. We don't see people drop it in the middle on a grand stage with a production team behind them. We don't see people rage quitting. They play out their games. Even if they have to concede a goal, they play out the games, they conclude them, and we move on to the next round. Yeah, and I mean, I have to give so much credit, too, to the players that have represented each of the countries. Every single one that we have seen that have interacted with, not just this year, but last year as well, they have carried themselves with so much grace and so much class. I mean, you look at yesterday as a great example cool. as Cad just once again, just working that puck, getting that opportunity and putting it past the goaltender. But, you know, you look at yesterday, for example, with Antonio Mandan and Dodds, I mean, both the interviews, especially on Antonio Mandan's end, a tough situation, being down six to nothing right off the get go, playing well enough to really compete in that series and having your season end in that fashion. I mean, played it as hard as he could, did what he could to get his country in that situation, came on afterwards, put up a great interview with us afterwards, and Dodds, the same thing, you know? I mean, gave Antonio all the credit in the world, gave Sweden all the credit in the world, even said, you know, hey, we had the advantage, and it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but give Sweden the credit, give Antonio Mann the credit for sticking in this and really competing in the way that he did, and just the amount of class and high-end representation that we have had from each player from each country, you couldn't ask for anything better. So a quick shout out to everyone that's competed so far. Really great job from everyone. Really hope it keeps up that way that's because a, it's one of the things that has made this tournament so fun to cover. Absolutely right. That's a good word for it, class. I think that's the way you can summarize what you just said. And uh, we've seen a lot of interesting things even this weekend in the NHL esports space, in all of esports really. Class here on the 2023 IHF E-World Championship, and that's really the differentiator. And I would be proud to stand next to any of these gentlemen and ladies representing their countries here in this grand stage. It's a shot! Oh, man! The L backskate oh. by Hofi. And we're getting interesting here in game number four. They're competitors at the end of the day, and uh, Hofi doesn't want to lose this game. You know, the aggregate score is what it is. You don't want to lose this game. Yeah, how about 11 combined goals? I mean, I know we're kind of just a soundtrack behind it right now considering the aggregate score being where it is, but Hofi and Cad, they're putting on a little show for us. Grab your popcorn, <laughs> grab a drink, and just sit back and relax. The skill flourishing here right now from both sides. Yeah, I want to see these guys just keep going. I'm here for it. We're getting flashy moves and great goals late in a game that might not make a difference in the end, but makes a difference for them. Pride and class, as we talked about reigns supreme here in this tournament and this is no exception it's, I will tip my hat to anybody and I'll say this to the NHL esports community look here for the example of how you should carry yourself regardless of what's going on or what it's cool to do in chat or anywhere else this is how you should conduct yourself in this kind of tournament did I say that appropriately Brandon very well said my friend, as Cad would agree, lights the lamp one more time. I mean, he's putting up an American football score at this rate. 22 between him and Regs on the aggregate scoreline. Shot there, was saved, went off the post, and got in. Just kind of snugged in between the pad of the goalkeeper and the iron that does not move. The pad did, 
That goal went home, 22 to nine. You're right. As you see it here, just all gas right now by Hofi, and I cannot fault him for just wanting to finish this out strong as possible. Yeah, and I mean, once again, just competitors, right? You don't care what the aggregate score line is. You don't care what the score of this game necessarily is in terms of having an impact that aggregate. You're competing. You want to try to come back and win this game. You may not move on. This might be your last game of the tournament for this year. But if you can make something happen, if you can close in the gap and maybe pull off a comeback from 8-4, to four, you want to try to do it. So Hofi calling that timeout, adjusting some things, trying to give himself the best chance to win. Intercepted there by Cad, but you're absolutely right. Icing here. Good face-off opportunity for Hofi now in the offensive end. Yeah, and once again, just giving yourself an opportunity. I mean, we've seen none of your comebacks than four goals in 11-18. We've seen five scored in that amount of time. So who knows? Hofi making those adjustments, getting that opportunity. Let's see what he can do with it. So a 10 to play here in the third period of game number four. Not so much cruise control for one man here. And Cad, for that matter, both competitors wanting to fight to win this game. As a delayed penalty coming up there on Hofi. Haven't seen too many penalties between this matchup between these two players. So a face-off here for Cad. 8.42 to go. In the third period. On the power play now. Looking to tuck that one home, but it was shut down. Short side attempt there. On the one-time pass from down low. All the players got their stick up for the one tee there. I saw that. Every player had their stick up for the one tee. Yeah, that's that play that a lot of these players go for. His cat almost with another chance after the turnover. Final 45 seconds on the man advantage for Team Canada. So Hopefully we'll take this out for Switzerland. Coming up to even strength here. Cat will get the line change. He'll pass that through. Good poke check. Loosened up that defensive breakout. Coming out of the box, that was Graves almost connected. As they'll try again on a second effort. The left side through the middle. Right side now, look there, kick save. Final corner, final quarter of the third period. Cad from the corner. Back around and just launches it on. Now three to play. That goes back to the goalkeeper and will get a stoppage at 251. Yeah, 251 remaining, and you have Cad trying to continue to push the issue, and you have Hofi trying to maybe break that double digit mark. So, hey, if you want a goal, get to that 10 mark, my friend. Let's see if he can do it. Things you play for inside the game itself, as you're absolutely right. But Cad might not want to let that happen as he spins around. Poke check knocks that free. Final 100 seconds to conclude this regulation competition of game number four of this aggregate. Final minute now. Bounce off the boards and comes back. Jones will send it through. That will get stolen at the blue line. So we look forward now. Wreck there. Wow, huge hit there by Cad. Off the post, it trickles up and out. So with 30 seconds to play, Switzerland falls to Team Canada. And we look forward. Finland and Germany coming up here in just a little bit. Talking to Riggs here momentarily. But with 10 seconds on the clock, Canada not letting what happened last year fall 
to be ignored. Punches their ticket emphatically and makes their way to the semifinals of the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship 22 to nine in aggregate. And I would say well-deserved, but that would be an understatement for what Canada was just able to do. I mean, how about this, Nick? I, I would be remiss here if I weren't to say it, but if I'm correct, every single game, Canada had 15 minutes or more of time on attack. That is absolutely bonkers. You do not see that often whatsoever. And that is not anything on Switzerland. They played about as well as they could have. Hofi with a great battle there with Kat there at the end, really starting to get some goal scoring touch to find his way through. Just Canada being on a different level. I mean, that's literally the story, I think, from that matchup. Canada has been on a different level from many of these other countries. I think a lot of people felt Finland was the favorite coming in, winning those back-to-back -back championships. I have to be honest with you, I think Canada just went into the driver's seat. With what we just saw, the type of display we just saw, keep in mind, Switzerland made the quarterfinals last year as well. That was a playoff team they just played. And to go in and dominate like that, the way they did it, they are in the driver's seat for championship contenders right now. I think it's really hard to debate it. I think it is as well. And as we turn our attention shortly to Finland and Germany, I've been teasing it for a little bit here as we get set to talk to uh, the man himself. Uh, I don't know if he enjoys so many accolades he gets. The man behind our screen here as we bring him into the studio uh, it is Regs. Uh, let me tell you this, man. First and foremost, Regs, uh, thank you not only for the time, but for uh, taking the time to talk to us, but for the for the performance. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far in this tournament. Yep, we can't hear you. You might be muted. Yeah, you got muted. There we go. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. All right. You're good. All right, we're all good now. Oh, perfect. Well, yeah, no, th thank you. Thank you for those kind words. Um. I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about um, myself and CAD's run thus far. Yeah, let's do that. I mean, you know, I, I've, you and I go way back, even though we don't talk that often. I, I remember covering some of your early competitions uh, before all of the champion start, championships started flowing in. This has been one that has eluded you. And I want to take you back to last year where you told Brandon right here on the broadcast that, hey, we made the wrong choice in our team selection. No longer the case this year. Was there a little bit more intention behind why you chose Team USA in round number one? Um, yeah, so um, I really don't know who the third best team is last year. Um, we kind of knew our opponents were going to go Canada. So um, I, I think the error was instead of going the second best team, we went the third best team where the gap is uh, lesser than going playing like with the third best team compared to the second best team just because of Canada's skill. Um, so we knew, although USA doesn't have like the same shooting stats, the same strength, um, same hands, um, the speed wasn't too much of an issue, um, which it was last year with Sweden. So, um, you know, me, me and Sam, we, we, we talked a little bit just saying like speed's not really going to be the issue. It's, you know, we just got to be, we got to be good on the puck, you know, smart, keep, keep the puck moving and, you know, got, not get bumped off of it. And I think we were both able to accomplish that. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of mentioned, Sam, Cad being your teammate this year. I know it was the fear with you last year. And, you know, the conversation was how dynamic of a duo that was. But this year, you and Cad, you have looked like arguably one of the best duos that we have seen throughout this tournament. I know you guys are rather familiar with each other, both on the 1v1 and 6s side. How has it been being teammates for this event and being able to work with one another? Uh, yeah, no, it's great. Um, me, me and Sam have a really good relationship outside the game as well. You know, you know, when, when we're not playing NHL, we enjoy, you know, playing, playing Call of Duty, right? Play together and stuff and, ju and just talking, talking amongst one another. So, yeah, no, having the opportunity to team with him and, you know, try to accomplish something such as a world championship with him alongside me is, you know, it's, it's something that I'm working. We're both working very hard towards and, you know, we, we don't want to just win for um, ourselves and our country, but we want to win it for e each other. Regs, I have to ask you, man, it, covering you as long as I have here, we, we, we talk about champions, and we talk about people that have won before you. Uh, the names are a plenty, but one thing that lacks with a lot of the people that we've seen is consistency. I have to know, through all the years, how have you been able to just continuously not only adjust to the new game, but you've won in person, you've won in threes, you've won in sixes, like, you've done it all. Honestly, like, what is the secret there? 
Um, I I think the secret's just motivation. Um, you know, um, I think it's being honest with yourself and realizing that the, every year the game's gonna be a little bit different, and um, that you you're never gonna be perfect as a player, and you always have something to work towards and and try to accomplish. And you know, um, you know, all, although I I have had a lot a lot of successes in tournaments, I've I've also had had some losses out of um, you know, you know they've. They've taught me lessons on, on things that, you know, that, you know, I wasn't doing as well as I thought I, I maybe I was. So, um, yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, I, I, th- I think um, it comes with territory and, and there's a balance between, you know, winning a tournament and realizing that there's still things you got to work on. And then, you know, um, when you're unable to win a tournament, you know, um, you, you, you quickly realize that way that, OK, like, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect. Um, you know, go back to the drawing board and, and figure it out. Yeah, you know, kind of piggybacking off of some of that experience. You're one of those players that, as Nick kind of mentioned, you've experienced it all. But with this tournament being so different, your second go around after being back from last year, how have you had to adjust really in a format like this to where you're not just playing players in North America, but you're playing in a remote setting with different players around the world? Yeah, you know, um, you know, I, I, I think. The, the question that everyone asks is like, you know, how, how does that work with connection? And, and in all honesty, the game feels better on um, peer to peer playing against Switzerland than it does playing on these hut servers. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I really don't think <laughs> connect, connection's an issue with this tournament. And, you know, it's um, it, it's the most unique format um, we play as competitors uh, throughout the year and, and is a tournament I always look forward to, um, you know, um, you know, per- personally, 1v1 is my favorite game mode, and I'm able to play that while alongside playing with a teammate. And, you know, it's always better to to win with someone else or, or a team than to just win by yourself because you got to share that moment together. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, this tournament encompasses sort of a little bit of everything um, in, in terms of strategy, winning with someone else, you know, winning by yourself, you know, win- winning for your country. And, um, you know, I think that's what makes it so successful and, and so unique. I want to take this last question for you, Riggs. I know you get asked a lot of questions. I know you do some interviews here. But I want to give you the moment here, like we did everybody else that we've interviewed last year and this year. Uh, take a moment, if you want to say something to not only your country, the people watching, just overall your support. Everyone loves you, man. But I want to give you the moment here to kind of speak to the people that are watching at home and, and, and watching in, in Canada. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I want to give thanks to my organizations, La- Lazarus and ILGT, for their continuous support. I want to give a big shout out to the Raptors, uh, Raptors GC. Um, you know, um, I, I wasn't home to play the round robin. They, they were fortunate enough um, to to supply me a setup um, at their gaming facility there, there in Toronto, which um, made all this po- which made today possible wow. for me and Kat to advance in this tournament. And yeah, obviously a big shout out to, you know, all of our Canadian supporters in the community and, and not in the gaming community who just wants to see, you know, can Canada's success at whatever it is they may do. And yeah, um, this has been one tournament that's alluded to Canada. So um, I know both me, me and Kat are looking forward to try, try bring home, try bring a goal uh, right where it belongs here in Canada in, in anything hockey. So that's the game plan. Well, that's the game plan, Regs. Listen, I wish you the absolute best of luck, my friend. I look forward to talking with you next week, uh, regardless of the decision, but uh, wishing you nothing but the best, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Regs, everybody, as we get geared up, man. What what an interesting guy to talk to. and I, I very rarely get the chance to talk to him, regardless of how many times out of this mouth I've called a goal by Regs over my years. Hundreds of times I've done that. Very seldom do I get to talk to him so that was really good yeah and i mean what a great interview right just from top to bottom not just from some of that experience that you're able to get from him because like we said i mean regs he's one of those guys where he's played in every tournament he's virtually won anything and everything that you can talk about or think of whether it be on the one side or the sixes side but you know we talked about this earlier with the tournament but i think regs being at the level that he is and the amount that he has accomplished really does and by as well just that class yet again i mean it's so easy for guys when they have so much success they're getting signed by organizations they're able to win trophies and money in tournaments 
and to represent your country, you know, it's a big deal. And Regs, every time I've seen him in an interview, first time I've actually gotten to talk to him one-on-one -on -one in a setting like this, but every time I've seen him, he has carried himself with nothing but the utmost class. And that reputation he has, it holds true, it rings true. Uh, couldn't be happier to see him playing the way he has. Cat as well on the teammate side of things. And like we said, man, Canada, they're looking good. And if I'm a team like Finland, if I'm a team like the U.S., if I'm a team like Czechia, I am looking at them right now, and I am like, we have got a tall order to knock these guys out. Because you heard him, Nick. He's determined. That tournament has eluded him. It has eluded Canada. Him and Cad want to bring it home, and they don't want to bring it home next year. They want to do it right here, right now, over the next week and a half. It's going to be really tough to knock these guys out. You can already tell they're determined not to have that happen. It really is. We turn our attention here shortly. But right now, 22 to 9, <coughs> your score line in aggregate. In the quarterfinals, Canada moves on. And uh, what I did not know is that Raptors GC made themselves available for regs. And you went back to, I don't know if you knew that when you made the comment, Brandon, on uh, the community coming together in different ways. But I didn't know that. And that was amazing to hear from regs. Oh, no, that was news to me. It just kind of <laughs> extends on the point. It, it was yeah. all news to me, man. And I mean, then that's what's the great thing about getting these interviews is that you always do kind of get to learn something new from the people that you talk with. And it, it just goes to show you not only with Raptors GC supporting, but how about them going in and helping Rex even make the tournament, supplying him a setup, giving him that opportunity to play. And, you know, he got to set it without Raptors GC. I'm not here. I'm not playing right now. I'm not able to play with Cad, who he said just now has a close relationship with him. They're very close. They're good friends being able to play together in this tournament. So not only seeing that team oriented, that country oriented, but even to esports colliding with the 2K League, with NHL. So, so cool. So, so unique. So big ups to the Raptors GC. Big ups to Regs and Cat and all of Canada for what they've been doing here in this tournament. I think that puts a nice bow on that conversation. So let's do this. Let's turn our attention to Finland versus Germany. We're not done here. We have a lot left here on this broadcast. So we're going to take a short break. We come back. The number one in the world up against Germany. Can Eki help lead his team to go back to back to back? Or will Germany step up and do what I've said before, the unthinkable? Come out, tell your friends. If you're watching and want the finished broadcast, our very good friends over at Sports Gamer GG will have that for you. And if you want to listen to the Germans, our very good friend Alex and Bloody LP has that on his channel. But if you want the English commentary with two people right here that have been with you this entire time, come on back. We'll be joining you in just a couple moments. We'll put up a timer, get yourself a drink, get some popcorn, come on back. We'll do the same, minus the popcorn, because salt and voices don't go together. But you are watching the 2023 IHF E-World Championship right here on twitch.tv slash IHF Hockey. Do not go anywhere. We will be right
Here's Zeki, he's in, stops up, backhand, and he scores! Uh, I was screaming when I scored the goal. How are you feeling? I'm ecstatic. And welcome back to the 2023 IIHFE World Championship presented to you by... Skoda and Strauss. Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Bigsby, a.k.a. B Major. And my friends, if you were amazed and astounded by last night and from earlier today, you are in for a treat. We have Finland and Germany, and I will tell you, this is the matchup almost everybody has been waiting for. Oh, yeah, there is a lot of hype around this matchup. Arguably one of the more intriguing matchups. Yessi L and Eki going up against Captain Dirty Dangler and Kev Nader. Can the returning duo for Germany pull off the upset or will Eki and his newest teammate and Yessi be able to move on to yet another semifinal? It's going to be so fun to watch. Can't wait to see who comes out victorious. So let's jump into it right quick. I mean, we look at the player bios in just a little bit, but let's first talk about how we got here real quick, Brandon. Uh, it was not an easy feat, to say the least, for Germany. Uh, Finland had a little bit uh, better of a time out there. 
yeah, Finland, they were dominant in that group stage. And, you know, it just kind of goes to show you continuing to be as good as they have been. Really, no bumps in the road at all for them, while for Germany had to fight their way past Poland and Slovakia, played them in the last two series. It was a three-team battle for that number two spot, one point really separated all those teams. Germany won all four of those games, pushed their way through, and now they earn themselves a date with Finland. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can continue that momentum. Germany has stepped up in the big moment before. They're really going to have to do it bigger and better than ever before against this country. They really will. And for Finland, obviously, like we've been mentioning a lot now, going back to back to back, they want the trifecta. They want to be called themselves a dynasty. I know Eki's got a little bit of retribution he's seeking out after not really doing what he wanted to do and set out to do in the in-person 1v1 challenges he's faced here, especially in Florida, but uh, going up against a pretty tough squad that has, I think, the best way to call them resilient. Yeah, resilient as ever can be, and that's really just the Germany way. We saw it last year where they got in in the last game. They had to win a game in overtime to punch their ticket to the quarterfinals. This year, the exact same thing. The last series, they punched their ticket in through a couple of wins, and ironically, it wasn't the overtime goal that got them through, but an overtime goal was how they ended their group stage yet again, that Kevinator lady brunette matchup in Slovakia. So it goes to show you they always show up and rise to the occasion, but like we said, Finland going to be arguably their biggest test yet. How do they answer the call? We're going to find out here in just a few minutes. Well, we're talking about Xbox side first, so Eki and Kevinator will face off twice, just like Regs did earlier with Tron. Let's talk a little bit about Kevinator before we talk about Eki. Nothing to shake the stick at here. We've seen crazy things from him now. Two years running. Kevinator has a tall task ahead of him. Yeah, he has a tall task ahead of him, but if there's anyone that has proven that ability, it is Kevin Ader. And I mean, you see those accomplishments back on the behind me in the screen has been a Spangler Cup competitor multiple times in his career. He is a guy that has been one of the best in his country, arguably one of the better players in Europe over the last couple of years. He has proven that in this tournament over the last year and a half. Now, whether he's going to be able to fare against Eki, arguably the best player in Europe for, what, five years running now? We're going to have to wait and see. But once again, won the East Bangler Cup in 21 and 22, represented Germany here last year, plays on the sixes side for Red Bull and Mucan Esports. This is a guy that's accomplished. It's going to be fun to see a matchup against one of the best in the world. One of the best in the world, indeed. And when we talk about that top five ones players, well, in that number one, two, and three, that was NA. But if you talk about uh, on the other side there, no particular order, Eki is in that running. And you see the accolades sitting in front of him right there across the board, ones, threes, and sixes. And most notable on the top of that list, back-to-back -back champion in the IIHF E-World Champion. And not only was he back-to-back -back champion representing Finland, but he was the tournament MVP both years. Obviously won the first ever NHL GWC in 2018. He's a four-time European champion. Eki has seemingly done it all. 1v1, sixes, Honestly, put it in, in in threes at this point. It doesn't matter what it is with Eki. He has thrived at every level of NHL esports. This tournament has been his wheelhouse over the last two years. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how he rises to the occasion against a really hungry Germany squad. I got to ask you, as we get to set up here for this tournament, we look ahead to this matchup, Finland and Germany. And I mean, team selection kind of going in here. One side picks U.S., one side picks Canada. How is that going to shape out, you think, Brandon? I mean, if it's anything like what we saw in the last matchup between the, excuse me, Canada and Switzerland, it may not really make a massive difference. We saw Canada use Team USA and really not be hindered by it all that much. And something that Reg said that it was a comment he made when you asked about team selection, it really kind of stood out to me. He said just the discrepancy between the second best team and the third best team is so, so drastic. We didn't want to put ourselves in that situation where we were forced to use the third best team now and it hindered us in this first round. Canada, or excuse me, Finland, using that same strategy that Canada is using here today. So if it goes that same way, it might not be the biggest discrepancy, especially when you have a player like Eki going up against Kevinator. But it's going to all come down to that player's skill, as you mentioned. If it's not going to be Canada versus Canada, this is about as even as a matchup as they're going to find. So it's going to be fun to see how that shakes itself out. And if Germany can use Team Canada to its advantage, having that little bit of extra speed skill on the ice. Then I have to ask you, Brandon, what happens in round two?
what team do you pick if the discrepancy is Ooh. so large? You have three rounds. What do you do if the best players from round one made it to round two and you have to use a tertiary team? What happens? Well, it just kind of depends. Who do you think is that third best team? Is it Czechia? Is it Finland? Is it Sweden, potentially? There are options there, but at the end of the day, you have to win three rounds. You can't just rely on the U.S. or Canada. You're going to have that round where you're going to have to pull through with a lesser overall team. And really, it's just a matter of when do you feel like you can do that? When are you willing to do that? You don't want to do it in the finals. So I think it has to be in the semis. Will they use Finland? Will they use Sweden? Will they use Czechia? They use the U.S. this round, and I don't disagree with that strategy, but you want to save Canada for that final round. And remember, Finland used Czechia from the start, used the U.S. for the second game, and then used Canada for the third game. So they're going to want Canada for that final matchup. And he stressed that last year. We'll see what they do this year. But right now, U.S. is the selection for Finland. They go up against Canada on the Germany side as puck drop for the first of four games. Just a matter of moments away as Brandon Bigsby, Nick DeMeo with you on the call. Finland versus Germany. Who will punch their ticket in the semifinals? As they're going to make us wait just a little <laughs> bit longer, Nick. They have to just <laughs> levy on that anticipation. We can't wait too much longer, my friends. We want to see this matchup, but hey, you got to make sure everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and double check, reverse things, resync things, and get it all ready to go. But you know, we'd love to get your opinion on that as well, Nick. You know, with the experience that Eki has, they have stressed using Team Canada at the end. I mean. What do you kind of do for that second matchup? What teams do you kind of lean towards as you're going to have to use that third team at one point or another, and you more than likely don't want it to be in the finals? I, I, I'll take the hot take, if I may. I think because of the team selection so far, if we look at it right now, Czechia chose Canada. They can't use them again. That's going to be tough. USA chose USA. Canada chose USA. Finland chooses USA. If that holds and Germany doesn't get in, let's say Finland gets in, then I think I think you pick Canada in round two. I really – I do. I think Ooh. you pick Canada in round two. I think you do Ooh. because in round three, I you're at the two best, and let's say it's Finland and Canada again. Then it comes down to who can use that third team the most effectively. And hmm. – I'm the guy that likes 1-0 hockey games. I'm kind of here for that. I'm kind of here to see who can actually control the thumbs better. Who can actually execute better across four lines, not just two, not just that one move you know. Can you perform and execute at the height? We saw it fail with Latvia choosing Czechia, but they were up against Canada. Many of these teams have already used Canada or USA, I don't see that. I, I don't know. And I would not want to see. I'll say this too. I would not want to see uh, Canada versus Finland or Canada versus Sweden. It's it's too much of a parody. I want to see them choose the same team. So I want both teams to pick Canada. But if Germany goes Canada this round, which they did, then what do they do in round two? Yeah. And, you know, it creates a very interesting dynamic because you look a little bit ahead to the potential matchups next week. If Finland wins, they will go up against the U.S. in a finals rematch from 2022. You mentioned, Nick, U.S. cannot use the U.S. again. Would they potentially use Team Canada forcing Finland's hand on how they would respond. So there's a massive dynamic. I think it's just a matter of seeing how the dominoes fall. If the U.S. goes ahead and uses Team Canada, I think that forces Finland to do so. I, I really do. I think it does. I think it does. And we've talked about this. The teams can talk to each other about what teams they pick. They're allowed yeah. to disclose that. And I think you want to know that information. I think that's important. And I think for the sake of the competition, so that we can throw away, oh, you use that team, I use this team in the finals, it could not be. No, I think the same thing has to happen with what happened at the Bolt Shell Challenge. Both teams picked Tampa, Regs walked out the winner against Eki. Yeah. So I want to see that. I don't want to see the question mark of, oh, well, we couldn't use Canada because we already. Use them in round two. Use it in round two, get it out of the way, and then pick, pick Sweden, pick pick Finland in round three, and I want to see the true skill 
come to the table in that finals round? Well, you know, you look at the other scenario in this. What if Germany wins? Yeah. They would go up against Czechia. Czechia has already used Canada. Germany is <laughs> using Canada. So that's also interesting because neither of them have the best team available. Yeah. They have to choose, do you use the U.S. now or do you wait? Well, on the other end, if Germany were to win, it would be Czechia versus USA. Yeah. It's it's tough, man. It's tough. I mean, Germany would play Canada. Czechia would play USA. It's It's tough, man. I mean, it really puts an interesting dynamic into this because Germany will probably have to use the U.S. next week if they advance. Canada already has used the U.S. Yeah. While Czechia and USA will play, the U.S. already have Canada. Czechia has already used them. So there's an interesting dynamic no matter what happens here, but I think it is especially interesting for that Finland one because it's two rematches from last year. Canada and Czechia, the rematch of the quarterfinals. Finland versus U.S., the rematch of the finals. So both of these teams are familiar with each other. Both of them are going to learn things from last year. And... But Finland, U.S., they both used Canada in that final. Canada and Czechia, as we've covered plenty today, Canada used Czechia while Czechia used Canada. So you're already seeing these storylines kind of naturally develop based on those matchups. Oh, how the turntables have turned. They are, The teams are getting ready. A couple technical difficulties. They're getting reset right now. And we don't mind. We don't mind. We're fine. We're good here. We're glad to have you there. As you bought a little bit more time, maybe to get in, get get yourself together for what's bound to be a a, a fantastic series between these two clubs. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. As we talked a little bit about Kevinator and Eki, as we will see those two face off first. But I think the matchup between Yessi and Captain Thirty Dangler is really going to be interesting as well because you have a guy in Yessi that maybe not as many people are familiar with, maybe not within that tier of big names that we often utter when talking about the upper echelon 1v1 players, but yes, he's a guy I think is very underrated. He's great on the sixes end. He started to kind of develop that on the 1v1 and earned his way in. And, you know, something interesting about Yessi that we haven't mentioned yet, we mentioned it last week, he beat Artusio to get here. Yeah. A two-time finish champion. That is not a small thing at all. If you're able to beat a guy like that to represent your country, to pair with Eki, you deserve to be here. You are within that tier of high-end players, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see him match up against a guy in Captain Dirty Dangler that we have seen, similar to Kevinator, time and time again, show up in that big moment, outplay what people think he can do, and shock everyone and make something spectacular happen. That matchup is very, very intriguing to me, and we're going to see that the latter half, but for Eki and Kevinator as we get ready for that matchup, I love your opinion, Nick. If you're Kevin Nader, knowing who you're facing off against against Eki, you're somewhat familiar with them. What are you kind of thinking strategy-wise in this game? Because we saw in the last matchup with Canada and Switzerland, the series was already rather lopsided by the time we got to that second matchup. If you're Kevin Nader, how do you balance that? How conservative, how aggressive do you play? Because you want to set your teammate up in a good situation, but at the same time, you don't want to get too out of your own game plan as well and your own play style. Yeah, you got Jesse Ellen, Captain Dirty Dangler on the other side, and we've learned, you know, through Alex and through talking to the Germans that, you know, they like the format where you go back and forth. Here, Kevin Ader's up front right now. They, he has to play both of his games. We saw what happened with Regs. He took that offensively and made it a 7-2 victory in game number two. He was not happy and wasn't going to leave anything for chance, and and he shouldn't. He, he shouldn't leave anything for chance if you really think about it. So... Uh, I, you know, I, I think about that and I, and I go, okay, but then you're up against Eki. Eki just plays Eki's game. There's no change to what Eki does. Eki just plays the game and either it works and he makes an adjustment to make sure it works or it doesn't. Most of the time it works and he's happy with that. That's a tough nut to crack when you're needing to put up points, when you have to play your games up front, when you don't have a chance to look and see and make an adjust. You're going back to back. You have to make your decisions. They have to come in fast. But then you're also Team Canada, so can you take advantage of that speed that Regs talked about? I think you can. There's a lot of variables in the situation, specifically on the Xbox side here when you have two greats like Eki and Kevinator 
battling off in mere moments. Yeah, not only that, but like we mentioned, two players with plenty of experience. Kevinator representing Team Germany before Eki winning two championships for Finland in the last two tournaments. So it just kind of goes to show you it's experience versus experience. And two players, that, like you mentioned, Nick, are very, very high in in terms of the tiers of elite 1v1 players internationally. Both Eki and Kevinator, I definitely say, are in that top tier. I think you're right. And. Maybe that's the top five. Maybe Kevin Ader's up there, too, with what he's done so far. We will find out in mere moments. The two teams behind us right there, they're ready to go. They're going to get set up here in just mere moments. I'm ready to go. I want to see this happen. I cannot wait. The Xbox side of this quarterfinals, the last quarterfinals of this tournament, comes down to this moment right here, an aggregate series between these two. It's Brandon Bigsby. It's Nick DeMeo. It's the IHF E-World Championship. And the ice, the action setting place to take place on the ice right now let's get you down to rinkside brandon i covered it last time i'm sending it over to you you take this one away as we get ready here we set the table ping being checked looking pretty solid considering the different countries and the location being considered but nevertheless we have it right here. Eki's point of view using Team USA moving north on your screen. All white jerseys. Well, Kevinator moving south in the all red Canada uniforms. We are underway for game number one of the series. Finland and Germany. The Xbox side between Eki and Kevinator as Kevinator has it in the offensive zone. Moving it around over at the right corner board. Left side of our screen. As he moves it up to Severson to the point. Moves his side. Piss it up. He scores! Kevinator gets going early. A 1-0 lead just two minutes into this game and this series. If you go back to the group stage, we saw this happen last week with Eki. He dropped the first goal, and then things kind of reset for him. Could that ping be a factor? We'll have to know more here, but a great start here by Team Germany. Kevinator getting first blood for Team Germany. Let's see if he can keep it going. Eki trying to get things going to respond. Can't get anything in the offensive zone, and Kevinator will pick it up. Moves it in past the blue line, has Batherson with it, trying to get that pass across, but couldn't connect. And Eki will pick it up. And, you know, it's not often you see Eki concede an early goal like that, but more times than not, able to find that response. He's trying to do so right now. Moving up the left side boards in the offensive zone. Twirling, pass across, will not connect. And Kevinator will pick up. And so far, Nick, it's been all Kevinator, which I don't know many people expected to this level of an extent. No, definitely not. And it, it could be that connection. It could be... Kevinator just coming out with a strong start, playing with urgency. We talked about that before. Uh, or Eki just finding his way in, and that could be a chance here as he does. Backhand, forehand, backhand, and forehand again. Eki takes advantage of the line change, goes through the space, and ties this thing up at one apiece. Nothing phases Eki here, and I, I don't want this to be an Eki love fest, although I love the guy personally, because uh, Kevinator came out to a strong start. He played with a rapid pace, but... Eki is, is a, like you mentioned, he's the find-a-ways. Tampa Bay find-a-ways, finish find-a-ways. That's Eki, and he did so right there. Now we have to see if Kevinator can keep that pace going. Here we go. Kevinator trying to find that response. Got that opening goal, but Eki with the response, as you mentioned, Nick. Let's see if he can get that momentum back after the quick start. It's Eki in the office of zone, not able to get that pass to go through the slot. And Kevinator will take it up. Graves with it, trying to move it down the middle. Nobody home to connect to that pass with. And Eki will take over possession, looking to move this thing up through the neutral zone. Get to the bellows, dumps it down low, and it'll be picked up by Kevinator. He will try to break this thing in back and forth so far as it's turned over. Looked like he was trying to self-sauce that, but could not get it a little bit too strong on it. And it gives Eki offensive possession. Moving around the point, this is Jones with it. Over to Peak, Peak holding at the right point. Back to Jones, pass over to Bell. Let's try and get that shot off. Didn't get all of it, but it's back to the Terry. He gives it over to Peak at the right point. Eki just trying to move that puck around. Kevin Ayer doing a good job denying space. Pass across, saved by the goaltender, but Eki not done. It's that other pass there. Still has it. Right corner board just holding on to it, waiting for something to open up. That patient game of Eki showing itself here with eight minutes to play. Nice job from Kevinator, however, defensively to create the turnover. And here he goes in transition. Has White Cloud over to the point of the neutral zone. And he'll just back things up and get a line change. But a turnover on the pressure from oh. Eki. But somehow Kevinator gets it back. That was dangerous right there. Good steal there. I thought he had it for a moment. Eki with another poke check. He has been putting on the pressure, it feels like, ever since the first five minutes. It seems like he was maybe caught off guard by that start. But ever since, he's adjusted well. And he moves into the offensive zone now. 
Watson has it. Left corner board over the board to low. Back over to the point to Megna. Down to the right corner. Eki holding it, looking for a passing option. Doesn't have it. He's bumped off, and Kevinator once again not giving Eki a lot of space. It's a dunce in the neutral zone, and Eki will pick that up. This is in the offensive zone. Right side holding. Spins, goes behind the net, trying to get that shot across, but it's saved off of the left pad. But Eki's still in possession. Pass across another save. That was Watson on that chance, and he still holds it. Spins, twirls in front of the net over at the left faceoff circle. As it still goes behind the net. Pressure by Kevinator. Can't get the puck off of Eki. Turns backhand. Holds it. Looking for a passing option. Doesn't have it. He'll go to the right point. Two and a half minutes to play in period number one. Tied at one. Shot attempt from the left point. Goes wide. Eki still holds possession. Watson passed across. Picked off by Kevinator. And he'll alleviate some of that pressure. And it's going to be numbers for Kevinator. Gets it in. Pass across. Puck loose. Still battle for it. Finds it behind the net. And Kevinator maintains that offensive pressure. There was an injury for Eki in the offensive zone after the hit, so something to keep an eye on as he gets all five back on the ice. Kevinator with it at the point. Holding it over, gets it back. Mayo moving in, looking, trying to pass it across with nobody home. Picked off easily by Eki. Five seconds left, one more chance for a rush. Holds, turns, shot on. Looked like got a piece of the stick there of the goaltender. And that will do it for opening period of the series. Tied at one high-flying action between Eki and Kevinator in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a pace that either of these two want to see right now with that much energy happening on your screen. I mean, that's a very difficult pace to maintain on both sides and a difficult pace to defend against. As we saw yesterday in a 6v6 competition, that pace can do you in if you're not used to it. Uh, and both these teams don't play that way. So a, a little bit of high speed on the ice. I think both teams will adapt and adjust accordingly. But it'll be interesting to see how they take this second period as things have now settled down just a hair. Yeah, and you know, you kind of wonder if things will settle down a little bit because this is just period one <laughs> in six periods at minimum that these two players are going to play. So you kind of wonder if that pace does slow itself a little bit as Looked like Kevinator tried to get a chance there, but it was blocked in front as the shot went from the slot. It's an aggregate. Here comes Zaki. Yeah, it is an aggregate. Too important to mention, so you have to set your team up well in a good position. As Zaki trying to set his team up with a lead for Team Finland. Yessi L and Captain Dirty Dangler waiting on the other side for Finland and Germany. Here comes Kevinator. Speeds it up the boards. Goes behind the net. Pass from that left post area. Will not go on the play from the shot. But Kevinator still has it. And a cross shot wide, saved by the goaltender. And once again, Eki having to fend off Kevinator, who's impressive here so far in the early going. No check in the slot. Eki comes up with it. Guides it away. Oh. Shot on it. He scores a dirty wrister by Alex Galchang. Eki takes his first lead of the day and the first lead for Finland. A lot on that, even though it was an own goal, it looked like there. If we see the replay real quick. Yeah, Eki, Eki a, a class act too, because he leaves the replays on for us to commentate on, which I absolutely adore. Uh, but that replay, I think it was an own goal or it hit off a skate because then it went five hole and slipped through the goalie. So an unfortunate bounce there, but circumstances aside, Eki's up now two to one. And the goal was listed as unassisted, so I think you might have been right there, Nick. Great eye. As you didn't see the animation, typically a player will slam his stick on the ice if it's an own goal. We didn't see that there for any of Kevin Ayer's players, but nevertheless, unassisted goal. Finds his way in off of something, and Eki not done. Backhand save there by the goaltender for Kevin Ayer. And all of a sudden, Eki starting to turn the ties in favor of the Finns. Trying to increase that lead to two, not able to do so. Kevin Nader doing a pretty good job here defensively, denying Eki of any grand opportunities. As he moves into the offensive zone. Passes up to the point to Gray. Slot shot from afar. Saved there by the goaltender, but Kevin Nader is still applying pressure. Pass in the slot. A little bit too strong. Finds his way to Lafferty for Eki. And he'll move it into the offensive zone. Finds space. Moves it across. Little shot to the left side post. No danger there for Thompson. Who is the goaltender here for Team Canada and Team Germany and Kevinator? Eki moving it off the zone. Shot from Bordelow in the slot. Gets blocked. Still battles it and gets it back. Holds it at the high left faceoff circle. Trying to find some space. Moving his way inside. Goes to the left corner board. Trying to find an option. Hit from behind. Nice job from Kevinator. And I think you have to give Kevinator a lot of credit. He is not giving Eki a lot of those grand opportunities because he likes to play that patient game to wait for the open play. But that open play just hasn't seen itself so far. 
Yeah, and he's got to buy that open, and maybe he's got to force it open a little bit and have somebody do something different, but wow! Way to find that far side there by Eki. Eki says enough for the defense, enough of the talk. He finds the goal on that play. It's John Hayden that puts it in, and look at that little play, just a back cut. Opens the space up to get the pass across. And Eki, when he has that chance, he puts it in 9 out of 10 times. I mean, almost feels wrong not saying 10 out of 10 times. But the man is human at the end of the day. But nevertheless, a 3-1 lead for Finland. And a 3-1 lead for Eki at the halfway point of game number one. Can he extend it? Moving it up the left boards. Now goes down low at the left corner. Holding it. Trying to find some space. Looking for something. Tries to spin around. Poke checked away. Battle forward. And Eki with two players compared to one. Comes up when it tried to backhand across. But could not get the shot off. And Kevinator needing a response. Rushes into the offensive zone. Doesn't have anything. And Hartman will pick it up here for Eki. That's been a name we've said a lot. It's been Ryan Hartman. He did wonders for Cat and Regs earlier. It's been one of the star AI players in this game. This backhand pass over to Boldy will not connect. Still has it, however, to Zeki. It'll be turned over nearly immediately. And it seems like we see certain players in certain series really step up. I remember last year in that Latvia-Sweden series, it was Bordalo. So far today, it's been Ryan Hartman all over the place. Yeah, it has. And that's been fun to watch, too, is just kind of see who on the Team USA controlled players are, are stepping up and finding their way in. And so far, you're right. It's been Hartman. It's been Seth Jones. Yeah, Seth Jones, we saw Regs go on a tear of, I mean, what was it, about three straight goals where Seth Jones yeah. had something to do with it, whether it was the primary assist or the goal itself. So just kind of goes to show you that the overalls and the players do mean something. They do have their impact. As you have to remember, the one superstar player on this U.S. team is Seth Jones. So you will probably see him used rather concurrently. And you'll see the lines, the custom selected as well, maybe prioritizing line one and two if your team USA. We saw both Regs and Cat do that a little bit earlier and a little bit of Got pushing chippy. and shoving between the two players. So <laughs> seeing chippiness even between the AI, hey, they care as well. They do care. Never count them out. Goalies are people too, and the AI tends to agree as well. An AI with personality is a fun and sometimes scary thought to see is Eki moving it into the offensive zone. Backhand pass across C by Thompson and hit the left blade of escape, keeping it out for Kevinator. Eki still pushing, turned it over, and now it's numbers as it's going to be time expiring before he could. Woo. But how about that save? Bookmark that one if Kevinator finds his way back into this one. That was something there. I don't know how that goalie came across to make that save, but wow. Look at the shot total. 10 to three right now for Eki. And not only that, but the time of attack. I mean, nearly 10 minutes compared to four and a half. So Eki, after conceding the hot start, conceding the opening goal, has really dominated from that point forward. And it didn't look that way. It doesn't even necessarily feel that way from what we've seen from Kevin Nader, but just the opportunities and the possession game, not there so far. No, definitely not. Things have to turn around here for Kevin Nader. I think you got to get one back at least here in this third period of game number one, because you got a whole another game to play against Eki right after this. So we'll see if he can maybe claw his way back as the aggregate scoreline is what determines the series winner as Eki trying to increase said aggregate scoreline, but not able to get that pass convert on the cross crease. Does get it back after the turnover from Kevin Nader and Scout Chang got to move it up. Holds it at the middle. Finds his way through, creates some space, trying to hold it, couldn't get that pass to cross over on the one-timer. But Gauchin still holds it for Eki. Passes up to Boldy, top right of face-off circle holding, pass over from Hartman, won't go, and it'll be held in arguably the quickest timeout and pause I think you will see after a goalie holds it. Yeah, I think so too, and maybe you got to slow things down, reset, or whatever it might be, but uh, things not things got to change here for a Kevinator right now. This is where you got to turn the tide. Yeah, and there's the uh, shot tallies that we had mentioned before. 10 to 3 in favor of Eki. As he has an offensive zone faceoff. Wins it. Has Hartman. Gives it up to Jones. Over to Galchenyuk at the right side. A little backhand on. Saved. Still battled for at the side of the net. And Severson comes out with it here for Kevin Nader. 
Speeds it down the left side, trying to find something. No space there. And I think that's been the big story, just the zone entry so far for Kevinator not working oh. as Aki gets one cleanly himself. Backhand saved there by Thompson. He still holds possession. Pass across to Galchenyuk. Saved again oh. by Thompson. Pass in front, and he scores! A critical mistake by Kevinator leads to the easy tap in for Aki. You cannot afford that in a series like this and against a team like Finland. Took the words right out of my mouth. That's not something that you can let Eki do. Uh, maybe other players, maybe uh, down the line or beforehand, but not at this stage. You got to be very intentional about where you play that puck out. Eki absolutely capitalized on that opportunity. He gift wrapped and won the Eki on that play, and that is a critical goal because, like we said, it is the aggregate score. So if Finland wins by one, that's the difference. Every single play matters in a format like this. That one could be a critical one. It goes in favor of Finland, but a critical mistake by Kevinator, one he'd love to have back. And Eki looking to push the issue further. Moves it up, moves it up the right boards. Pass across. Will not connect. Looked like it was a actually pad safe there from Thompson. It's Kevinator looking to respond and make up for that last miscue. Holds it over the corner. Moves it back up to the point. Pass over to Graves at the right side, left side of our screen. Goes down low. Battle four behind the net. Eki comes out with it momentarily and does pass it over to Bellows. Oh. Gives it over to Ledieri. Here's some space. Here's Aki. Has a man with him. Holds and it's turned over. Nice defensive play there from Kevinator to avoid any dangerous opportunity. Ten and a half to play here in period number three of game one. Kevinator moving it up the zone. Finds it to the boards. Left side, right side of the screen. Trying to just get anything he could. As it looks like there was a line change as the puck was loose in front. Aki will hold that with the goaltender and get the whistle. See the smart difference there with two players on. Eki says, no, no, holds on to it, takes the draw, and puts his confidence in his face-off ability. Not only that, but up to up four to one, no need for him to really take that risk. So a high awareness, high IQ play there by Eki, and he ends up getting it out of the zone really without any harm. And chain up, moving up the right boards for Eki. Nine and a half to play here in the third period. The first of two games these two will play will have back-to-back -back between Eki and Kevinator, and then we'll see Yessi L and Captain Dirty Dangler for the final two games of the evening, but still some business to take care of here first. Kevinator cycling it in the offensive zone, has his man behind the net looking, cycles it back up to the point, gives it to Severson, back over to Shabbat, back down to Barzil and the corner boards, and goes down low behind the net, holding it off to the pass. Looking for an option. Nothing there. Four defenders in front for Eki. As Kevin here not able to find anything. Trying to space things out. Looking for an option. No shot on yet, net yet. As he's trying to get one now. Shot on blocked in front. Defended well. Four minutes to play here in the third period. Kevin here looking to lighten oh. the blow here and decrease it as that pass goes all the way back to his own zone. And critical time going to be wasted right there. Yeah, you can't let a pass up like that. Uh a missed opportunity, I think, when he got set up in the Ozone. Not one true shot on net there from Kevinator, and he's not able to make anything. It's here comes Eki, three on two. Has his man to the right side. Shot on, Beery bound in, he scores! That's Borlo. He said he was one of the stars last year for Team USA. He gets a goal, and Eki is breaking things open early on for Finland. Five to one lead. Strong and commanding lead here as he's just picking up the garbage in front of the net off those rebound opportunities, crashing the net from the point and executing on that play style extremely well right now. So the rebound play from Hayden finds Bordalo to perfection. And boy, Eki putting himself in a great position here for game two. And if you're Essie, if you're Yessi, you're smiling wide looking at what your teammate is doing. Very similar to what we saw between Cat and Regs earlier for Team Canada. is almost another chance there by Eki. Kevinator looking to get some momentum going here in a positive direction. It's in the offensive zone. A little spinning backhand hits the side of the net. It's less than a minute to play here in game number one. Kevinator holds it, looking around, trying to find a passing option, finds some space, passes and toss it, he scores! Beautiful play over the wall. Kevinator cuts the lead to three. That's exactly what he needed right there. Yeah, we speak the same language here. It's exactly what he needed at the right exact time to break open, the, to break apart that momentum, if you will, and kind of get himself back into this game. You've got two games to play. You got to keep it competitive. You got to give yourself a chance. He did so right there. And you know, you don't want to harp on it too much, but 
Remember the goal where he passed it out with the goaltender, gave Vecchi a free look. That's a big goal right now. It would be a two-goal disadvantage rather than three. Zaki looking to push the issue here with 36 seconds to play. Has it behind the net. Holding it over at the right face off dot. Trying to find some space for a pass. He's bumped from behind but still maintains possession. Gets it back down low to Tynan. Holding it around. Has board to low now. 25 seconds to play. Eki looking to get that goal back. Goes back down low to Hayden. Back gets around and he scores. It was not necessarily a wraparound but it may as well have been one. Went from behind the net all the way to the opposite side. Post and Eki just like that, back up to four. Yeah, that's Eki just going back into it. Going back into it, getting into the paint, trying to get something going late in the game to try to stifle and suffocate out that little bit of momentum Kevin Ader had just a few moments ago. And all of a sudden, just like that, it is gone in the brisk of the win. 15 seconds to play. Kevin Ader trying to get it back again. We'll see if he can. As in the offensive zone, it's turned over, and here comes Zeki. One more rush. Seven seconds to go. Moves to the left side. Holds it forehand. Tried to get that pass across, but couldn't do so cleanly. As Kevin here will just slap that one across. And that will do it for game number one. Eki doing Eki things. A dominant performance. A 6-2 win. And a wide, wide margin in the aggregate to start out here for Team Finland. That's exactly what you wanted from Eki, and I think what people expected from Eki in this first matchup as somebody that wanted that trifecta, wanted the dynasty, he went after it, and he made a performance stand out right there. Yeah, and I mean, you just look at Eki, give him a lot of credit just with the way that things started. Kevin Ader getting that early goal. He was buzzing in the first five minutes. Yeah. Was playing better than Eki, to be completely honest, but just Eki staying in it, staying composed, knowing the situation that, hey, early goal, it happens. It is what it is. And that is the difference between some players that don't have experience and a player like Eki and a player like Kevinator as well. That does. Nothing really phases guys like that. And when it's two players that have that experience that are very composed, never get phased by any situation like we have facing off in Eki and Kevinator, these are the type of examples and results that you're going to get. Yeah, you're absolutely right. As we bring you back into the studio, Nick DeMeo, F5 Penguin, alongside Brandon Biggs, BB Major. And yeah, you're right. This is big time opportunities for someone like Eki. Big time opportunities for both squads, obviously. But, um, you know, Kevin Ader a lot to play for. And the challenge of playing against somebody on the Xbox side two times back to back in somebody that's won championships on the Xbox side, which is not his strongest console and he's still able to do it. That kind of says a lot for what Eki is. But, uh, you know, for Eki, that he has a lot of pride and he has a motivation here. And that motivation is after, you know, Berlunda not getting where they wanted to be. Uh, he's got something to play for here, and he's doing so today, right now. We want to thank our uh, partners over with Bloody LP and Sports Gamer GG for the German and Finnish broadcasts, respectively, uh, as we welcome you in for this English broadcast. Game two about to get underway here between Eki and Kevinator as they're getting lined up already to take that place. Yeah, they don't want to waste any time. And if you're Eki, why would you? You're feeling good. You're having that momentum rolling. And if you're Kevinator, you just played against Eki. It's a clean slate now. You know what you can do differently to put yourself in a different situation. And I know it's a four-goal advantage early for Finland, but we saw a four-goal comeback last year, Nick. I mean, you remember Sweden versus Latvia. You remember a couple of the other series that we saw. This is not insurmountable. It's a little bit of an early hole for Germany, but still a lot of hockey to play. Nine periods, three games. You still have Cap the Dirty Dangler on the other side, still coming into play. But if you're Kevinator, you don't want to put him in a hole. You want to put him in a good situation. You have to find a way to decrease that gap a little bit, just small in the margin from Finland, and get yourself in that position where your teammate can step up against Yessi and maybe take this thing home. As after this game, Kevin Dater, he can't do anything else unless it goes to that synchronous overtime. All he can do is watch. So this is your final chance to have your impact on the series. Make sure it's a positive one. And if you're Eki, just continue doing what you did, man. You played well there in those last two periods. It's going to be fun to see that dynamic here in game number two. And we've yet to see that synchronous overtime, and I know everybody wants to see it, but we haven't seen it yet. So we'll have to watch and wonder what's going to take place moving forward. But meanwhile, uh, they're going to get connected. We are going to take a quick break. When we come back, game number two, the last game between Eki and Kevinator, then Yessi L and Dirty Dangler 
coming up on the backside of this. I'm telling you, you're not going to want to miss out what's going to happen. Anything can happen right here. So stay tuned. Watch. Wait. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. And welcome back to the 2023 IHFE World Championship presented to you by Skoda and Strauss. Game number two about to get underway here between these two clubs as they've reconnected and are ready to go. We got you in game here. Brandon, this is going to be interesting to see if Kevin Ader can come back from what just transpired in game number one. Yeah, a tough loss there for Kevin Nader, but like we said, the aggregate score line is what matters. So it might be six to two, it might be a four goal deficit to climb back from, but Kevin Nader has three more periods of hockey to try to step up and make a positive impact here for his team and for his country. Will he do it? We'll find out. Ecky's view is what we will be looking at. He yep. is in the all white USA jerseys. Moving north on your screen, while once again, Kevin Nader in the home Canada kits. In the red, moving south. As Eki has possession, moves into the neutral zone and past the blue line. Trying to get something going as a quick opportunity there for Eki. Will be saved and held by Kevin Nader. Not making that same mistake there that he made in game one. No, you can't make that mistake right now. You're down by four. You want to set up uh, Dirty Dangler for the best possible outcome. You got to get this thing within one as a final result. Face off tie up one by Eki. Holds it. Looking, that's Jones at the right side boards. Gives it to Hartman to slot. Trying to operate his way in through a chance. Can't find any space. Nice job from Kevin Ayer defensively to lock the slot down. We'll try to take it in. Turned over. Finds its way to Eki, who's trying to do the same thing. Just both players weaving their way, trying to find that little glimmer of space that they can take advantage of. So here comes Kevin Nader down the boards. Holds it pass across and a nice defensive place. Guys, all the way to the point. And Kevin Nader maintains a slap shot blocked in the front. Goes wide all the way to the right point. Puck will be thrown down low and picked up by Eki. We'll reset things and break it out here for Finland. Got chain up. Moves it past the blue line for Eki. Shot wide as he tried to hit that short side blocker there, Nick. He had the space just a little bit too far to the left. As here comes Kevin Nader trying to get a response. Holding in, it's turned over instantly, but how about that Eki almost drawing the first goal of game two? Yeah, trying to get that first blood and just missed it outside, as the MLB people would say. But, man, that was a good effort by Eki. 
Just a little bit outside. That would be a 1-0 count if this were baseball, but <laughs> he's trying to get a 1-0 count on the score line as Kevinator almost with a chance. Still holds possession. Looking around, has it in the corner board, throws it down low and finds it over to the point to Severson. Gives it back, looks to Gateson, doesn't have anything, and it'll be Eki to take over possession. Jets his way down the right boards. Lone man there. Torles tried to cut in with that little LT move, but he was rocked as he did, and Kevinator trying to take it in transition. Nice job from Eki being back defensively, but he still gets it back as Kevinator, and he'll move it into the offensive zone now. Pass across, Puck loose in front. That's Wall with it, holding a pass over to Mars. He had the space, but he was bumped off the puck. Still has a down low. He has a pass across the bars, but a save by Eki. Kevin Nader still applying pressure. His best chance we've seen in a while. Holding with Shabbat. Pass across is picked off. Eki gets it. And big chances there from Kevin Nader. Come out empty handed. Eki gets in the office zone. Wasp passed over to Hayden, and he scores just like that. Strikes and pounces. Eki makes it a 7 2 aggregate scoreline. Gets the opening goal of game number two. That's a huge goal there for Eki as that goal could sway the way things kind of turn out here. If you look at what's transpired, Kevin Ender can get back into things. You got to get that first goal. It's so pivotal in game number two because it can turn the tide. It can push things in another direction. And Eki just continuing to pour it on. That's another chance here for Eki. Backhand puck loose in front. Picked up by Eki and he'll... Move things forward. Toe drag, trying to cut his way in. Gets the puck back, looking for a shot. Gets it on net. Saved and thrown up by Thompson. It goes right back to Aki backhand. Oh, he had it. Couldn't get all the way. As Kevin Ader, he is throwing it out every single time. He knows what month it is. But boy, throwing <laughs> caution in the wind at the same time. Oh. As in the offensive zone, that's Kevin Ader. is almost, almost a near chance there, as you would exclaim there, Nick. As Eki now trying to respond, cuts in, moves it to Watson, trying to get the pass across, held by Thompson, and thrown back out immediately, trying to keep that pace going. Kevinator moves it in past the blue line, was poke checked almost immediately as Eki gets it back in. Goes past the blue line, offensive zone in the left corner, moves his way into the faceoff circle, now to the slot, now to the right side, trying to find a pass, gets it to the point to Schmidt. Slap shot from way across, doesn't hit the net, hits a... Defender in front for Kevinator is two minutes to play here in the first period. Kevinator moves into the offensive zone, holds it, pass across, won't connect. Nice pick off from Eki. 90 seconds of play in period number one of game number two. Eki moves it past the blue line. Hold shot on, and it goes wide. It's a power four behind the net. Less than a minute to play. Fast minute here in the first period. It's here comes Kevinator trying to find the time. Marking game one, but a big save there. Passed it out to Eki, turned over. Kevinator, one more chance. Three seconds left. Oh. Anderson passed across oh. another big save that time on the glove side. And that will do it for period number one. Kevinator, multiple chances, but nothing to show for him. It's a one nothing lead for Eki at the opening period. What was high flying there for both sides. Yeah, right there. The last minute, too, there. It really picked up. And uh, if you're Kevinator, you're chomping at the bit to get one back. That could have been your best opportunity I would say just do that again in the opening mat, uh, minutes of the second period. Get back into it. Keep going. Try to break open that armor. You're getting close. You got to stay persistent. And that's been the characteristic of Team Germany this entire time is resilience and persistence. Just keep doing that and you should be okay. As you see, greetings from both Germany and Finland. Some Hello. of the supporters of those respective countries coming in. Absolutely love seeing people come into the chat, saying hello, supporting their countries and the players representing their countries. One of the many special things about this tournament. So greetings from us on the America side, broadcasting it to you guys in Finland, Germany, and everywhere around the world, wherever you may be watching. A second period action is underway. This is Eki. Controlling Team USA moving north on your screen. Kevinator controlling Team Canada moving south. This is Kevinator moving it past the blue line, trying to lessen the hole here that Germany has gotten in against Finland. Two more games after this. LB between Jesse L for Finland and Captain Dirty Dangler for Germany. Zaki moves in the offensive zone. Couldn't find anything. Kevinator will move it past now. That's Severson at the point. Throws it down low. Has Barzold with it. Backhand held. Pass across. Now to Batherson. Batherson looking for a pass. Kevinator just controlling it. Looking for that open play. Gets it to the point instead. Goes back over to Shabbat. Back over to Barzel over at the left side. Barzel trying to skate in. Can't find oh. any room. And is held 
by Gillies and held on to for a whistle. He's just eking it out, and it's coming close, but he just can't get it past Eki's defense right now. Can't get it past his defense, and that has been the story of the defense for Eki creating offense. And, you know, I didn't get to mention it earlier, but how about big saves creating offense yeah. as well? The two saves from Gillies going in, creating that first goal there for Eki. We often talk about that in sixes, but just an example of how it can impact in a 1v1 tournament as well. Goaltending, very important. That's really the last line of defense, but especially in this 1v1 setting where more times than not, you don't have any control of what's going to happen there with that goaltending positioning as Eki moving it in the offensive zone, trying to maybe take advantage of a little bit of goaltending on Thompson. As he cycles it around. Big hit there to corner boards as Kevinator will get possession and will move it in. Ken Johnson has it, holds it, finds Dubois, pass across, pass saved by Gillies, another pass, and he scores the second chance, goes Pierre-Luc Dubois, ties up the game, and cuts the aggregate to four here for Germany. I thought after that first chance that, man, that was another missed opportunity, and Kevinator just couldn't catch a break, but he got one there, and he's arguably right back in this, a four-goal deficit indeed, but if you pick up two here, you're in good shape. And that really is the thing. Can they cut it here? As Kevin Hader has another chance in the offensive zone. Holds this shot in. Another big save oh. by Gillies. Another opportunity. Puck loose in front. Kevin Hader's getting opportunities. He just hasn't been able to really break them open. As Zach will get a respond. Holds backhand. Tried to pass it across. Shot on. Pass save. Puck loose. Poke check in the right corner. And Kevin Hader will come up with it and moves it up here for Team Germany. It's about that precision. Precision, a great move, a great word to use. And, you know, speaking of precision, how about on that goal? Threaded the needle there through a pair of defenders to get that pass across. So not an easy play for Kevinator, but he made it work. Zaki trying to make a play work, not able to do so, and Kevinator will take possession. Eight and a half minutes to play in period number two of game number two. Kevinator holding it. Gets into the offensive zone. Poke checked away by Eki, who will move it up the ice. Gets into the neutral zone over a center ice. Past the blue line. Offensive play finds Boldy for the score. Eki right back where he started. A five-goal advantage and leading game two by a goal. Eki just has the ability to just deflate the momentum in a room. And it's something that's remarkable to see. I don't see it from a lot of players, but his ability to stay with it and just push and continue on and then hit the little pin, deflate the balloon, and force them to start again. And it's just uncanny how he's able to do that when he really gets his game going. Some people thread the needle, but, I mean, Eki, he is the needle. He yeah. pops that balloon. He deflates that momentum. I mean, he is a nail in the tire of everyone that he faces more times than not. And, I mean, right when Kevin Hader had that momentum going, it feels like, just as you mentioned, he deflated, trying to do something again as the backhand from Bordalo goes just a little bit wide, hit the side of the net. As here comes Kevin Eater trying to get some of that momentum back, they lost. Holding with Johnson, poke checked at the point. Here comes Zeki. It's a two on four in favor of Kevin Eater. Lots of defenders back. Eki trying to work his way to some space. Turns around to the right post. Couldn't find anything. And it'll be Kevin Eater now to move it up the ice. Three and a half minutes to go here in game two. Puck thrown behind the net, picked up by Eki. Pushes it up. Past the neutral zone, past the blue line, creating some space for himself over at the right boards. Past the cross, threading the needle there, trying to get that to connect. Couldn't get that backhand off cleanly, but Eki still pushing the issue. Has it, twirls, looking for a passing play, hits the side of the net on that backhand attempt, and now it'll be Kevinator moving up the ice. Circling back, gets to the opposite side, but nobody home and is picked up by Kevinator. It'll be an offsides call with exactly one minute to play. One minute, and this is where I think Kevin Eater's got to just full throttle. You got to get back to level at the end of two. Can he do so? He has possession now. It's a fast minute, so really 30 seconds here for Kevin Eater to do something. Here comes Eki. 15 seconds on the rush. Backhand held. Puck loose in front. Left side. Last chance. Eki holding. Pass at the point. Shot on. Another chance. Another save as Eki. Tried to make it 9-3 on aggregate, but could not get that to go. End of two periods. Eki up by one in the game, but Team Finland in firm control of the aggregate score. 8-3 to three as of now. Five periods in. One more period to go here at game number two. You know, you're at the last period of your half. Making an impact here is the most pivotal thing. And if you're Eki, 
you did that part. If you're Kevin Ader, some say you probably didn't do that part, and I think this is where ultimately the test of a true champion comes through. Can you claw back and help out your teammate who's got another lift ahead of him? Can you set the tone correctly? Can you give him enough to feel good that he has a chance? And at five goals, I don't know if the answer is yes, uh, because that's a little bit difficult, especially when you're up against Finland. Yeah, and I mean, that is kind of the challenge that is imposed right now on Germany, not just for Kevin Nader, but for for Dirty Dangler now as well. Remember, as you mentioned, this is the final period of your first half, so to speak. So in other words, this is Kevin Nader's last chance to make an impact on yep. this game. You want it to be positive. You want to put Captain Dirty Dangler in a positive situation as Kevin Nader pushing the issue, puck loose in front, couldn't find anything. And I think you could debate Kevin Nader playing better in game number two, but just the chances not finding themselves in the back of the net so far. I think you're absolutely right. I think this has been a better game for him. And he just, they've had four or five scoring opportunities that just didn't go in. If you look at the scoring chances, I think Kevin Nader has more overall. We just yeah. haven't seen them connect. And that's been the challenge right now. As here is Eki trying to connect on one. Holding it over at the right face-off circle. Moves it past. Lost the puck on the net. Not often you'll see that. Just kind of lost control of it. And here comes Kevin Nader now trying to counter on it. Holds it. Backhand, forehand. Couldn't get the shot off cleanly. He was bumped from behind as he tried to. He still maintains possession. Has it in the two play in front. Scores. Pierre-Luc Dubois with number two. You see that in sixes. You don't often see it in ones. But Kevin Nader getting that critical goal of the so, so badly needed. Yeah, you had to get back to level here, and now you have something to build on again. Can you overcome that deflated uh, momentum on the other side of the ice? That's the challenge. So far, he has not been able to answer that question with a yes. He has to do it here. Yes, yes, yes. That's what Kevin Nader wants to see, <laughs> but we'll see if he can get it. Every time he's gotten something, it feels like Eki has responded. Will he do so again? He has the puck right now. Holding it to his forehand, loses possession. Nice job by Kevin Nader to get the defense on as he does a little puck play to himself off the boards and moves it in the offensive zone. Pass across, backhand saved by Gillies. How big has the goaltending for Eki been so far in this game? Has possession of it now, moves it back to Pete. Goes over to Hartman and finds Boyd to the left side. In the offensive zone, quick passing. Galchenyuk can't hold on to possession. Kevin Nader moves up two to two year score here in game number two. Overtime would be played out if we were to reach it to that point. Nice little stick lift from behind from Aki. Nearly got him possession and a quick chance, but Kevin Nader got it right back. Moves it past the blue line with White Cloud. Passes it to Barzol over to Sandheim. Sandheim up the boards, holding back to White Cloud at the point. Down low to Barzol. Twirling, looking for an option, scanning the ice. Nothing there. Moves his way to the slot. Could get the shot on net. Here comes Eki with Boldy. Matt Boldy has it, trying to move it in, but could not do so. And now Kevinator looking to respond on a counterattack. As Bars will pass across, it's put loose in front. Eki picks it up, he'll hold on to the whistle, and he is a guy to where he will ear on the side of caution. Not going to pass that one out and take a chance for an easy chance. Yeah, and why not, right? Don't make that mistake that Kevinator did. Don't let him back into the game. I think when you get into a three-goal deficit, you're in the running. That, that fourth goal kind of does put a staple on things. You have to keep it that way if you are Team Finland right now. Yeah, that fourth goal really does kind of feel like the magic number you get a sense of as Kevinator trying to reach in below that magic number. 8-4, to four, the aggregate scoreline. Oh. He gets the forehand to go! Dawson Mercer just kind of stuffing it in past Gillies, and we said he wanted that magic number to go in his favor. That goal may have just done it, and... He takes the lead here in this game in the third period. Dinked it off the post and in. Just drove the net with a ton of speed. And, I mean, that's what you look for when you want to come back. This is what we talked about. The first lead of the game. Uh, now for Kevinator. Hasn't had the lead since the opening goal of game one. And how about this? We got a quick glimpse of it. 14 shots for Kevinator. 10 for Eki. Not often you'll see Eki get outshot, but it just goes to show how well Kevinator is doing at generating opportunities. Can he keep it going? So here comes Eki. Holding it. Trying to find something. Yeah, you said keep it going. You mentioned earlier the regs, just that consistency. That's not an easy thing to keep. Oh, it's Kevin Ayer developing that right now. Beautiful spin. Pass across. Shot on. Saved by Gillies. As another chance. The same mistake that Kevin Ayer made earlier goes to his advantage. Eki threw it out. It went right to Kevin Ayer. 
and he put it in the net, and all of a sudden, we've got a series, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we just talked about this, too. The last play that was a face-off draw by Eki, you said he errs on the side of caution. He did that three times in a row, threw it out the fourth time, and fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, strike three, as Michael Scott would say, and Kevinator absolutely took advantage finally of an opportunity that fell to his doorstep and he banged it home and we've got a series as you said. Eki trying to make up for it, spins, trying to twirl his way into the slot. Can he find something? He's down by two in the game, but up by two in the aggregate. Boldy shot goes wide from the slot, but, but Eki gets it back with Galchenia. What did he get? Circling around, trying to find something near the slot, couldn't find anything. Nice job from Kevinator. He is locking down that slot area. It's really causing Eki some troubles offensively. Here comes Kevinator trying to make it into something. Hudlin's in front, shot on, saved by Gillies. Another dangerous chance by Kevinator and Eki wisely holding on to it this time. That one caromed off of the back of a player and fell to the stick on the far side. That was dangerous, and you have to. I think you could feel over the last five in-game minutes the momentum just full-on turning the other direction right now. It is way in favor of Kevinator, and Eki has to slow things down and not give up another goal right now, or Germany's right back in this competition. And Nick, please do correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been four unanswered goals for Kevinator. He started out this game yeah. down 2 to nothing and down 8-2 to two in the aggregate score. Things looked very, very bleak, and Eki and Finland had a chance to completely oh. shut the door, but Kevinator continuing to pound it on. He almost put in another, as if you're Captain Dirty Dangler, you are feeling rejuvenated right now and seeing what your team is doing. You're at least taking a deep sigh of relief and going, okay, it's not as bad, and I will take not as bad right now if I'm Dirty Dangler. And Yessi and Dirty Dangler, very comparable as players, one could say. Eki looking to get things back into a better situation for Finland. Holds at the face-off circle, less than a minute to play. Still has it, however. Gets it to Lettieri, back to the point. Schmidt loses it. Oh. That's going to be offsides as the puck just get past that blue line. 47.8 to play. Uh, I felt that goal coming. The best thing that could have happened yeah. right there is that puck coming outside the blue line for uh, Kevinator right now. Yeah, Eki was working that puck. You could just feel like he was about to pounce. As the faceoff won by Kevinator, moves in the offensive zone. Does he have another? Holds it back. Can't go back to the point, but it's turned over. Here comes Eki. Can't make that mistake if you're Kevinator. As it is poked away. Big defensive play to make up for it. 33 seconds to play in period number three. As Kevinator is Dubois, holds, looks, oh. spins, turns, couldn't find anything. Nice poke check. And if you're Kevinator, you are focused on the defense. Cannot allow another goal here. Aki spins all between the legs. Couldn't get it to connect. Almost a dirty play there from Eki. 13 seconds of play. Kevinator has possession. Tried to pass it up. Now gets it over as Eki gets the turnover. Moves his way in. Pass across. Big save. Still has it. Pass across again. Blocked in front. Three seconds to go. Kevinator just going to dump this on out. And that will do it. Kevinator making a statement. A rough game one. But last time we took an L. But tonight we bounce back. <laughs> a big win for Kevinator. Gets the win in game number two and inches Germany back in the contention. An 8-6 to six aggregate score halfway through this series. Getting back two goals against Eki was a heck of a performance by Kevin Andrew getting down so early. At one point, he was up against uh, five unanswered goals on his side. To get back with four on his own was impressive to say the least. And... You did it against one of the best players in the entire world in 1v1. I think you have to be really proud of that. And you you did your part as a teammate. You did not set it up for disaster on the other side uh, for for uh, Dirty Dangler. You did exactly what you had to do. And I, I think that's really where you get impressive is you fixed the mistake. And I've talked about this before. You have to win aggregate games. Um, you did so right there. I, 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 I can't. You know, you don't want to lose four goals in the first game. But if you did, what did you do to fix that in game two? Well, we saw that here. You got two back. You won the game. You put your teammate in the best possible position you could, given the circumstances, to try to at least level out the score in game number three.
Yeah, and you know, I know we saw what Canada did earlier. We saw what Latvia did last week. We saw what Germany did last week to even get into the quarterfinals. But I have to be honest, I think that what Kevin Nader just did, considering the circumstances, considering what he had to come back from, that might be the most impressive performance that we have seen all tournament long to go up against Eki. You're down to nothing early. You just lost that game and were outplayed throughout most of it in game number one to come back, respond the way he did. And remember, like we said, he was down to nothing in game number two as well. Was down six in the aggregate score. Scores four unanswered. Gets his team back into it. And this is getting really interesting now, Nick, because now we turn our attention to the next two games between Captain Dirty Dangler and yes, he L, when you look at Captain Dirty Dangler, what he has done, how many accomplishments, all the experience, can he complete the comeback against a player in yes, he L on the other side, his first playoff series, his first time in the situation, and now, Nick, he has to be the closer. Yeah, he's got to be the closer, but you still got the two the two goals in hand, and that's pretty good if you are yes, he L, especially uh, when you were able to defeat Artuzio in the qualifier. You've got a lot to play for. You're in good shape here. But if you're Dirty Dangler, that's the guy that's been able to do the OT heroics. That's the guy that's able to come back from a three-goal deficit. You're only down by two in the aggregate. Can you do it as we bring you to the end game so you can see exactly what we're seeing right now? Uh, it, it, questions are afoot. And, and I cannot wait to see what the answer is. Yeah, I mean, what is the response? And I think what this is so, what makes this so interesting, Nick, is for years, we have always talked about Eki being the closer, Eki yeah. being the guy that steps up in the clutch situation, Eki being the face of not just Finnish esports, not just European esports, but arguably all of esports. But now, Eki... All he can do is watch. The newcomer in Yessi steps in. His first tournament defeated Artuzio to get here. Was impressive last week. And now it's his opportunity to make his mark. Etch his name into Finnish esports lore. Etch his place into the upper echelon to be the closer. To finish the job. To complete the story. To push his team. To push his country into the semifinals in his first ever playoff series can he do it or will germany make another comeback happen will they write another chapter in the story that's gone for a year on now amazing moment after amazing moment i know bloody lp is going nuts on his broadcast i'm sure sports gamer is as well we have game three action on tap right here right now twitch.tv slash iihf hockey and where else would you rather be yes he l First of Captain Dirty Dangler, game number three starts right now. Literally at the chills. Of Yessi. Oh my goodness, I got chills. <laughs> Captain Dirty Dangler moving south on your screen. He has possession. Forehand could not get that to go. As Yessi moves north, he is using Team USA. Holding it between the legs of Deke. Looking, trying to get something here. Has a left corner board, trying to find anything he possibly can. Holds it. Not really playing a lot of pressure right now as Captain Dirty Dangler just letting Yessi move it around in that non-dangerous area of the ice. Gives it up to the point to Seth Jones, holding backhand, moves back to the boards, gives it down back low to that left corner to Galchenko. Looking around, trying to find anything. No shot so far for Yessi, but a lot of possession. Here's Captain Dirty Dangler with him. Sticking with him over those scoreboards. And right now, Yessi looking for that play over in the middle. But Captain Dirty Dangler shutting it all down so far. Pass at the point. Right boards now moves it down low. Finds Hartman in the slot. Looking for that first shot opportunity. Gives it to Boldy. Bump from behind, though. And a great play from Captain Dirty Dangler. And here he comes, jetting down the ice. Holding, looking. Wrap oh. around chance. Saved, but he gets it back. Looking with it there behind the net. Looking around, trying to find an option. Scanning the ice. Trying to pass it upward. Could not get that first one to connect. Battle for it in the corner board. And yes, he comes up with it. Seven minutes to play. And so far, defense the name of the game. Defense the name of the game. And if you're Jesse L, you got to be kind of happy with that. But you still can't lose a game by one. Because if you do, you're only up by one in aggregate. So you do have to score here. It's not like the previous series where 
Uh, you know, Cad's up by six and can chill. You can't chill with a two-goal uh, lead. Yeah, that's the thing. Yes, he has to at least win one game. If he doesn't, then either Finland is bounced or it goes to that simultaneous overtime. So, yes, see, the pressure is on him to win one game. Almost put in the first goal of the game right there. But it was just brushed off of the glove. Is another chance on a quick shot. Glove saved again by Thompson. Yes, he's starting to get some dangerous opportunities going. Holding it in that right quarter board. Trying to twirl his way through space. And he gets it across and scores. Yes, he, he was going and going. And he finally put it through. 9-6 aggregate score in the opening draw in game number three in favor of Finland. Yes, he, the only L he wants to take is the one in his name. As you felt that coming. Uh, Dirty Dangler playing a little bit maybe too defensively. Giving him too much space. And yes, he capitalizing at the opportune time he needed to. And getting that first goal, which we've talked about, is a huge goal in this competition. Here we go. is a chance for Captain Dirty Dangler Ooh. to respond. And it's held by Yessi. And, you know, if you're Captain Dirty Dangler, you can't get too concerned because, you know, you might have let that first goal go, but still a lot of hockey to be played here. And Kevinator doing what he did, just that three-goal aggregate disadvantage. Yeah, you got plenty of time here. It was all Yessi to start, but we'll see if... Dirty Dangler can get a hold of the puck, build up some ozone time, and do something of his own. Yes, he with that chance to make a name for himself, a chance to seal the deal and move Finland into the semifinals, taking advantage of it here early on, but Captain Dirty Dangler trying to deny him of that chance. He has it in the offensive zone after winning that puck battle. They're still battling for it, and yes, he comes out with it the second time around. He'll move it up to the neutral zone, getting a bit of a line change there as a couple of U.S. players swapped. And yes, he will have it now in the neutral zone, just trying to find a little bit of space. Moves up the side and up the oh. left boards, holds it back, and now will be offside. It's nice pressure there from Captain Dirty Dangler at the blue line to kind of force that move. Yeah, pressure on the blue line coming into the D zone for Dirty Dangler, but I think you got to forecheck a little bit higher up the ice right now, especially knowing now you're down by three. You have a lot to make up. You don't want to put all the pressure into game four. Yeah, because, you know, we talked about it's still a lot of hockey to play, but you don't want to be too conservative either because at the end of the day, the more time that goes off of this clock, the less time you have to make a comeback happen. And three goals, not insurmountable, but at the same time, you want as much time as you can because, you know, anything can happen. I talk about it like this, you know, if we equate it to American football, it's the third quarter and you're down by 21. So that's like you're looking at the scoreline going, OK, it's three goals, but it's three scores, three scores you have to score while also not letting them score any. And. While the game is one nothing, the deficit in aggregate is three. That is how you have to look at this. You can't look at it game by game. You have to look at it all together, and you have to adjust how you play in accordance with where you are in relation to the end point of the game. Yeah, and I think the thing, too, is that even aggregate aside, the task for Dirty Dangler is the same task that he had to do twice last week to get his team Win. in. Win both games outright. He yep. did it versus Slovakia. He did it versus Poland. It's the same exact thing. Yep. He wins at the very least. They move on to a simultaneous overtime. And if he wins one of those games by more than one, then they move on in general and knock Finland out. So the task is simple. It's just a matter of execution. Can Captain Dirty Dangler do it again here for his country? He has the puck right now behind him at a minute 10 to play here in the first period. Looking for some space. Nice pressure from Yessi Allen. You're kind of seeing the difference between the defense. Yeah. Captain Dirty Dangler, plenty content with allowing some of that space in non-dangerous scoring areas. While Yessi, oh. very attacked. He holds it a beautiful keep. Wow. As he got to the point. Five seconds to play. Can he get a chance off of it? Holding, twirls, pass across. Nice pick off from Lowry. And that will do it. But how about that keep from Yessi? You do not see that often. I mean, he kept it through all of the contact he could possibly handle. Yeah, he outmaneuvered the defense there. And there was only one place you could put that puck. He did it. And it almost resulted in a scoring chance. That's really what you play for. And quite impressive to think about that coming from the newcomer, as you mentioned. You get a quick look at the connection there for Yessi, around that 81 to 82 ping. But, you know, something interesting, we were talking to Reg Zero, he said he feels like the connection is better than the normal servers he would play on. <laughs> so the connection, it depends on who you ask, but it is skill versus skill, player versus player, the best man or woman win. And we have seen that here so far throughout this tournament. Period number two underway, Captain Dirty Dang, we're working the puck near the... Left side face-off circle, the right side of our viewpoint. 
as we are looking at Yessi's perspective. He's in the slot, couldn't get a shot off cleanly. Scap and Dirty Dangler moves it inside and goes down low. Yessi will beat him to the puck. This is poke check nearly immediately, and it looks like Captain Dirty Dangler going to come out with it from the battle. Holds it, looks, shot on, blocker saved by Gillies. And it will be Kevinator to get it back. Holds it behind the net again, pressured by Yessi, looking for space, trying to twirl his way to the front of the net, could not do so cleanly. A nice defensive work by Yessi, and he's going to try to counter on transition. Holds it backhand, shot goes wide, did not come close to the net. As Kevinator is going to go ahead and try to move this now on the counterattack. Checked by Yessi as he crossed the blue line, but he kept it. Kavanagh spins, holds, gives it a Patterson pass across, picked off by Yessi. Defensive play from Yessi. Nothing short of phenomenal here so far in this game. He was up the right side. Passes it over to the slot to Hartman. Holding, looking for an option. This Desi plenty content with just holding it right now, knowing he has that aggregate lead. And, you know, we've talked about Captain Ray Dangworth's perspective, but if you're Yessi, how conservatively do you play this? You don't want to be too light. You're not in cruise control, but you don't want to be overly aggressive either as he tried to move it into the slot area. A battle for it in the neutral zone. Captain Dirty Dangler will come out with it. Moving it there past center rice. Gets it back past the blue line. Spin pass won't connect it. Here comes Yessi. Breakaway. Yessi with a chance. Yessi, can he get it? Whoa, poke check save. Kevinator with a big play. Captain Dirty Dangler, rather, with a big play. We've seen both Germans make big plays. It's easy to mix them up every now and again. And the flying poke check came through and worked that time. And you got to take that risk, but you got the reward. And why not take that risk? You are in the quarterfinals, and you got to get your way into the semis. And how about this? A little bit of insight from Regs in the chat. If connection was too bad, these games would be much more simplified. Seeing lots of more skillful plays with the L2, and we're seeing skillful plays from Yessi leading the goals. 2 nothing lead in game number three, and a 10-6 aggregate score for Finland now. It's exactly what you had to do right there. Put the game in control of Team Finland. If you're Finland, you got the four-goal deficit again. Now we're here. How about Yessi stepping up in the big moment? Has his country up by four. 10-6 to six, the aggregate score, and now Captain Dirty Dangler needs to operate and get things going. There's still time, but you don't want to waste too much of it. Here he goes. Moves in the offensive zone. Holds it at the left point. Looking for space. Trying to pass across to Severson, who was defended for a little bit, but he got it back. Goes down low, behind the net, holding it back, can't look for space, trying to get that shot on a odd angle, just went wide, but a great idea, a creative play there from Dirty Dangler. Here comes Yessi, after the turnover, up the right boards, holding, spins, looking for space, couldn't find it, well defended there by Dirty Dangler. We'll move it into the offensive zone, three on three, Mercer has it, spins his way around, bumped off, moves it to Shabbat at the point. And that pass will go all the way back to the neutral zone and it'll force him to reset. Line change for Yessi. Oh. Numbers now for yeah. Oh, that was close. Dirty Dangler had the numbers on the line change from Yessi. Couldn't capitalize on it. Yessi moves in the offensive zone. Rolling it to the right boards. Could not find anything as it will be Dirty Dangler now to move it around. Two and a half minutes to play in period number two. Germany in a four goal hole on aggregate. Dirty Dangler in a two-goal hole in the game. As he looking to extend both with a goal. Jets his way up the right boards. Pass the slot to Watson. Shot on. Little blocker saved there by Thompson. Yes, he holding on here for a second chance. Behind the net. Where is it? Pass over to Myers. And the quick shot bursts his way past Thompson. 3-0 lead for Yesi. 11-6 the aggregate score line. And he is stepping up when the lights are brightest. Now Finland's feeling pretty good. A Regs-esque shot there. And speaking of Regs, he's in chat still. And I, I got to wonder, how much game tape do you watch of other people? You know, Regs, they're looking at Germany and Finland going, okay, who do I face next? Do you change your play style to adjust to what you're seeing from your opponents? You might have to. But yeah, a huge move there from Yesiel. Scoring that third goal, and that's got to feel really good right now for Finland. They've got to be in uh, a pretty good spirit in that Discord chat that I know Eki and Yessi are in right now. Yeah, communication. That was something the team Finland used a lot last year when it was yeah. Eki and Vatu. And something to keep in mind, if Finland wins the two semifinals, Finland versus USA, 
Canada versus Czechia. If Germany wins, it's Canada versus Germany, Czechia versus USA. So Rex doing a little bit of scouting potentially there. Not sure who he will play yet, but could potentially be playing the man that he is watching right now or has been watching earlier with Team Germany. It's an offensive face-off here for Dirty Dangler and Team Germany. He'll win it on the tie-up to Barzil. Holding it. Goes down low. Loses possession after the bump from behind. Five seconds ago, Dirty Dangler shot on and in. He scores a beautiful cut in front. And just whenever you think Germany is down and out, they find a way to punch their way back into contention. Yeah, you just count, can't count them out when it comes to what they're able to do on the ice. Dirty Dangler needed that at the most opportune time. And what do I always say, Brandon? You do not want to give up a goal in the first or last minute of a period. They did so right here, did Team Finland and the SEL. And now we've got a little bit of a different game going into the third period of game number three of this aggregate four game contest. And if you are Yessi, does that goal against you serve as a bit of a wake-up call to not go on cruise control, not to get too comfortable? I mean, you see the stats. Opportunities have been few and far between, but in six and a half minutes of time on attack, only two shots on net for Captain Dirty Dangler. Yeah, only two shots. And that, that's a little bit worrisome. Uh, but you got one there, and that's where you have to start. And then we have to see how you can build from that momentum. You've got 20 minutes to get this thing level and start again. And level is kind of where you're aiming for right now. I don't think you have to overextend too much. Yes, he knows that. He's going to adjust accordingly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, for Captain Dirty Dangler. Oh, boy. We've got a good one on our hands. The aggregate score creeps closer. And the game itself from 3 nothing to 3-2 in just a minute of in-game time. That's two goals from Johnson in the last minute and first minute of the period, back to back. And Dirty Dangler just got hot. Watch out here to see what happens next. The next goal could be really pivotal for this entire series. The aggregate lead cut to three for Finland. Captain Dirty Dangler rejuvenated. You can tell in his play, he's buzzing right now. Can he get a third? Let's see. He has it in the neutral zone. It's turned over immediately as we see that aggregate score line 11 to 8 in favor of Finland as of now. But Captain Dirty Dangler clawing back for Germany, looking to do what his teammate did in Kelvinator in that last game that we saw versus Eki. Here's Yessi moving it in, goes behind the net. Holds, looking for an option for defenders in the slot. Now just three, now potentially just two as two go behind the net. Yes, yes, he looking to spread out that defensive captain, Dirty Dangler, but a nice job from Dirty Dangler to get the turnover. Use it up with Johnson, had those two goals, spins, pass, of course, pass, saved by Dillies. Near third goal for Captain Dirty Dangler, denied by the goaltender. Here comes Yessi, looking to respond, shot on, rebound chance, another save by Thompson. Passed out, dangerous play, but it leads to an opportunity. Here comes Batherson, Dirty Dangler moving it in, gets it, turned it over almost immediately, and now Yessi to respond. Has a two on three, holds it, has it right side, pressured, moves it down low to Bellows behind the net. Now in the left corner boards, looking around, gets it back over to Lederi. Terry looking, holding. Yes, he taking his time. Knows he has the aggregate and the time on his side. As a shot of toss scores. That's the second time we've seen him do that. And all of a sudden, after the surge of momentum, yes, he finds a way to respond accordingly. Patience, the name of the game there, knowing where he's got to go. Gets it there and just waits for it. He has time on his side. He has the lead, so he can wait. All day long until something beneficial happens. He did so right there. It worked out to his favor yet again. Lattieri with the goal for Yessi. And now Finland have to feel there's a slight sigh of relief on that goal. The way Dirty Dangler just came out firing in the last minute and the opening minute. And we'll see if Yessi can hold on. But Dirty Dangler gets the turnover. Sauces it to Sandheim. Has some space. Can he capitalize? Spins to the slot. Shot and he scores! Oh boy, Dirty Dangler living up to his name. Gets it right back after the goal from Yessi on the other end. And we're not done yet. A heroic performance here. As you keep trying to count him out, he says no. Holding it, he still has a chance. It's turned over, but the competition thrives on between these two players. 
Yessi and Captain Dirty Dangler back and forth. The pendulum keeps on swinging from one side to the other. And Dirty Dangler looking for the tying mark in this game. Six and a half to play in the third period. Mercer to come to walk in the slot. Moves it in. Goes behind the net. Holding it backhand. Looking for a pass. Finds Waugh to the faceoff circle over at the left side. Oh. Shot on. Oh. He tried to go through the whole team. He almost put it in. But the one man standing between him and a 4-4 game was Mr. Gillies in net. And he stepped up and made the big save. That was remarkable. He almost was able to put a stamp on that one with a goal. But the defense stood tall when it had to right there to stave away that momentum for now. In the slot, loses it, and Yesiel gets it. And now Yesiel has to be feeling the pressure just a little bit right now. Four minutes to play. Can he hold on to the lead? His country up by three in the aggregate. Can he do it? Holds it in the right corner. Passes over to the left corner to Galchenia. Back down low to Boldy. Holds it, has the time on side, same play potentially that he could be looking for as Dirty Dangler just defensively. Got a pressure here. Holding it in that right corner, you do have to pressure as that time dwindling away as he's going to get the puck. Here comes Gregor as he tripped oh! up to miss the play. And it's going to be a power play opportunity for Dirty Dangor. You could not ask for anything better if you're Team Germany. The biggest moment of the series is right here with a minute 48 to go in the third. Face off to the right side. Won by Gessiel. Moves it around the gal chain. Yup. Gives it to Myers. Will he dump it? He will. 120 to go. 80 seconds left in regulation. Dirty Dangler moves it up to the neutral zone, gives it to Sandheim, goes past the left boards, poke checked away from Yessi, battled, but Kevin, or excuse me, Dirty Dangler gets it back, holding his white cloud at the point, moves in, backhand behind the net, trying to find the pass in front, Dirty Dangler operating pass across, won't connect, but he gets it back, 45 seconds left. Can he find the tying mark or will Yessi hold on? Dubois, Cousins in the slot, holding. He's buffed off the puck. Yessi dumps it away, and that's going to drain some valuable time. But but it's going to be Dirty Dangler getting it back. Real-time 60 Captain seconds here. Dirty Dangler. And now a real-time 30 seconds. Dumps it in, getting a line change. Both teams will. As it's dumped over to oh. Hartman, here comes Yessi L. He's going to just hold for the possession game. Very, very smart. He'll dump it down low. Oh, Getting no. And chase through it. And yes, he comes up with it. Bumped off. He gets it again. 12 seconds to go. Yes, he holds on to the right corner. Captain Dirty Dangler has to get it off his stick. Yes, he holding on. Wow. Still keeping possession. Four seconds. One more rush. Here comes Dirty Dangler. Final chance. Poked away at the blue line. That will do it. Yes, he. It got a little scary, but he holds on a 4-3 to three <laughs> win. And it increases the aggregate lead by 112 to 9. In favor of Finland, one more game to go. What a nail biter to the end there and play of the game, potentially play of the series, doesn't come from a goal, but comes from the 400 IQ from the newcomer, Yessi L, as he holds the puck on the penalty kill deep in the end of Team Germany's end defensively and that was the ultimate point of the game just to keep the momentum out of the hands of Dirty Dangler who was absolutely primed to do heroic things late in that game tie it up and potentially force overtime in game three yes he else said no awareness of the newcomer to have that sense that game sense and it had to be maybe Eki telling him hey slow it down slow it down slow it down it worked there and just absolutely remarkable moves from the young rookie in this tournament to do that there and secure the win a crucial one point victory and to force the aggregate to 12 to 9 Brandon I've said enough here but wow what a play by Yessi L to end that game and you look at the stats Nine shots to five. I mean, what a game. I mean, opportunities were not a plenty, but the ones that we got, unreal. Four to three, your final. Yessi stepping up. And I mean, Nick, just that awareness of Yessi, knowing the situation. And 
was so impressed with the fact that he was able to keep control of that puck. Kevinator had two defenders relentlessly trying to push and shove and bump him away from that possession. But yes, the L was having none of it. Unreal play. The smartest play I think we've probably seen so far in this tournament. And it sets him up very, very well here for the final game of the series, the final game of our coverage here today, game four between Finland and Germany. This series has been off the wall so far. Who knows what we're looking at here in just about three minutes time as we get ready for puck drop. Yeah, we talk about turning points in series all the time, turning points in a, a best of seven if we play them all out. We talk about the momentum shifters. That Those turning points usually equate to goals that have happened, or a big save from a from a human goalie in sixes or an AI goalie in ones. But here, not the case. Here, what we saw was just holding the puck. And you wouldn't really consider that to be a turning point of a series. But for those 20 seconds, it absolutely was. And Yesiel was the reason that happened. It takes a special kind of player to understand that and to just... though It's just 20 seconds. 20 seconds in six periods of aggregate, 20 seconds in a full four-game aggregate, 20 seconds in an entire playoff. But those 20 seconds were probably, at, if it holds here, the most important 20 seconds we have ever seen in this quarterfinals uh, bracket of this tournament. I'd, I'd have to agree with you. And we get ready here for that game for coming up in just a few minutes. But now we turn our attention to that game. Finland up 11 to 8. One more game to hold on. If you're Captain Dirty Dangler, you didn't have a lot of opportunities. But the ones that you did have, you capitalized on more times than not. Where does the strategy change for him? Because you know what you have to do. You have to at least win by three to push it to a simultaneous overtime. If you win by more than that, you move on. But yes, the L has been phenomenal defensively as you do take a look at how we got here on your screen. Eki getting a 6-2 win versus Kevinator to start out. But the thing that snowballed this thing, the dominant 4-2 win for Kevinator in that last game between those two on the Xbox side. And then finally, the game you just saw a 4 3 win for Yessi L versus Dirty Dangler. And Nick, going back to that question, what is the strategy if you're Dirty Dangler? You got opportunities, but not many of them. The ones you did get, you capitalized on. So what do you do considering that this is your last chance to try to get your team through to the semifinals or to at least push it to that overtime, as we said? More of what you did in period two, at the end of period two and into period three. Unlike Kevinator, who had chances early, Dirty Dangler got hot later in the game and... You just have to go with that. Go with that gumption that this is it for you. You know you were able to force it a little bit. Just do that again. But Yessi is patient. And if you rush too much, Yessi will capitalize. We saw that with two goals from behind the net. He just waited. He waited the whole time with the time on his side. He didn't rush. And it worked. So you have to, it's a delicate balance. But this is the, the penultimate chance here for... Yessi and Dirty Dangler, the, and I, I've said it a hundred times, the next goal could be pivotal. Yeah, the next goal could very well be pivotal. And I think you could debate that the first goal scored in game number four could very well swing the way that we view the rest of the series. As you see, both players queuing up, getting ready to go on the screen behind us. And I mean, Nick, if you are Dirty Dangler, I'm sure him and Kevin Nader are talking Remember something, we've seen this from them before. They've had these comebacks. They've stepped up when the lights have been brightest. They have always had that ability to make something happen and give themselves a chance. Does Captain Dirty Dangler have a little bit more of that German magic in them? Does he have a little bit more of that comeback ability? Can he make it happen? Or will Yessi L be able to shut the door and etch his place into that upper echelon of players in this tournament and players in the world. We're about to get this up in a few minutes. I mean, Nick, what do you think we got to look out here for, my man? Because this game, the most important game that we have seen arguably throughout this tournament so far. Well, they are who we thought they were. And I think we're going to see Dirty Dangler just pull out all the stops. I think they have to. You're down by three to start the aggregate. You can't let up. You can't give it a second chance. You have to go. How do you go is the question. Will Yessi prevent that? We will find out in 60 in-game minutes. Brandon, 
you're on the call. This is game four. Nick's the in-game minutes separate these two teams from a semifinals berth. Finland looking to move on. They've been back-to-back -back champs in this tournament. Germany looking to pull off a stunning upset here that many would not have penciled in coming into this series. But here comes Yassi on the pass across, trying to increase that lead. Could not connect on the shot. And Captain Ernie Dangler will take possession. Remember, if Finland wins, they will move on to play against the USA, a finals rematch next week. If Germany wins, they will move on to play Canada next week. So we're going to have a very interesting semifinal either way this goes. But nevertheless, both of these teams want to represent their country, want to move on, and want to win that goal. Here is Yessi in the office zone. Holds it behind the net. Pressured a little bit more by Dirty Dangler this time. Tries to hold it backhand. Not able to do so. He gives it to Bellows at the upper right corner. Looking for an option. There's that patience from Yessi that we talked about. A little bit of that patience that we saw helped him win that game in game number three. As he circles around behind the net. Looking. Couldn't get anything. And it's turned over in favor of Captain Dirty Dangler. Only at the upper point of the neutral zone as he's going to shoot that at the opposite end. An interesting strategy. We'll see if it pays off for him. Looks like Comes a line change the there. The end. Nearly got it. Yeah, as it looks like there is going to be a line change there as well. Didn't see any of his players move towards the boards originally, but I guess he wanted to get some fresh bodies out there and get a little bit more energy on the ice. Here's Yessi, moving up the offensive zone, gets it past the blue line, holds, looks, stops, turns to the right, and moves it back down low behind the net. Finds Gal chain up, holds back end of the left post, trying to find an option on the pass, and once again, Yessi picking his spots, being patient, just waiting for that opportunity to reveal itself. Can he do so here? Holding it around that left post, circling back and forth, back and forth. Dirty Dangler pressures, pass across it, he scores! I mean, what more can you do? Just wait for the opportunity and capitalize as when it is there. It has been a offensive masterclass for the newcomer in Yessi so far today. That newcomer, you would have thought the nerves would be high and, and, and the anxiety be through the roof, but no, we are seeing the ulti ultimate level of patience and fortitude with Yessi L probably the star of the show right now as that patience is hard to teach and it usually comes with time we saw it executed well in game number three we see it again in game number four as he has a chance and the pad save from gillies and if you're dirty dangler the task becomes very very daunting you're down by four you really can't allow yes you score anymore and the opportunities have not been there for Dirty Dangler offensively, and yes, he's controlling the possession as he does so now. Holds it behind the net, poke check away by a pair of defenders for Dirty Dangler. Spins his way past a pair of defenders, and that leads to an odd man rush. Buffed at the blue line, nice turnover drawn there from Yessi. As he's going to lose it almost immediately, and Dirty Dangler, I mean, if you're him, Nick, you've got to try to apply some pressure and get something on that. Here he goes, shot on, blocker saved there by Gillies. And yes, he will take over possession, holding it away from Dirty Dangler offensively. Looking for something, moves it out the right boards, holds it back, pressure it over at the boards and moves it all the way over to the left side. And they'll be picked up by Dirty Dangler who is sitting there waiting on it. Four and a half minutes to play in period number one. The winner of the series moves to the semifinals. Finland with that four goal aggregate lead, looking to carry it through. Here's Yessi for filling pass across. Nice job there. As it looked like he got the backhand shot on Lano saved. Captain, Captain Dirty Dangler going to go ahead and pass this thing on out. But it's turned over in the neutral zone. Here's Seth Jones holding it for Team Finland. Using Team USA and can't use him again after this matchup due to the rules. And he scores! Yessi operating his way through. Dancing his way past the defender and gets the backhand to go. Deja vu from the first game, potentially, but yes, he is breaking this thing open for Finland. Maybe deja vu, but a much taller task now that it's game number four. Yes, he doing exactly what he had to do. Eki's got to be in his ear right now because this looks very Eki-esque when it comes down to what's happening on this ice right now. Very Eki-esque. I'm sure Eki is grinning from cheek to cheek watching his teammate put on the performance that he is so far. Yes, he moves it around the point. 
Goes down to the right corner boards. It's picked up by Holden for Dirty Dangler. 30 seconds to play in period number one. This is a fast minute here. It's Dirty Dangler looking to get a goal to end this period off with. Trying to find some momentum. Holds by the net. Pass across. Save from Gillies. And Yessie will hold on as the puck was right at that red line. Just inches away from crossing. But with 3.3 left to go, Yessie comes out unscathed. Face off to the left side of your screen. Tie up from Yessi. Holds to it. Dumps it away. And that will do it for the opening frame of game number four. Yessi of a 2 nothing advantage. And the same story as last time. Yessi controlling the game. More shots. More time on attack. And last time, at least 30 Dangler has him in that possession time. He's not even getting into the offensive zone now. I'm pretty much going to say the same thing I said at the end of period number one last game. Finland's got to be feeling pretty good now with a five-goal lead going into the second period. You've got to be okay with that, and I mean that probably even more now with how things have turned out for game number four so far. Things turning out well in the advantage of Finland, and the more this time drains, the better that Yessi and Eki have to be feeling about their chances to move on as Yessi tried to get another. It was gloved by Thompson for Dirty Dangler, and he'll hold on for the whistle. You know, two to play here in the second period. Final game we'll be covering tonight. As we look forward to the semifinals here in a week's time. Saturday the semifinals, Sunday the finals. Sturdy Dangler has it. Moves it down low. Holding it right now is Yessi after the turnover. And he'll move it into the offensive zone. Past the blue line. Pass over to the left side. Blocked away from Captain Dirty Dangler. And he'll take over possession. Shabbat will break it out. Gives it to Batherson. The to Ottawa Senators on Team Canada. A little bit of connection there. As Captain Dirty Dangler working with Batherson. Pass back in front. Looking for some space. Get a shot off. Couldn't get that one to go. He had the space there as Gillies was caught a little bit off the short side. But it was deflected in front. The shot didn't go off cleanly. Passed on the counter from Yessi. Puck still loose in front. Dirty Dangler gets it. A near dangerous opportunity. He has one more goal from Yessi. Could very well clinch this thing. Moving in his way, Dangler spins around, holds, backhand behind the net, back oh. and front shot, saved off the left toe of Gillies. A big play there, a biggest save of the day so far for Yessi. Still moving into the neutral zone. The goaltending today, it might be AI, but it has stepped up in immense ways here all night long as a shot on scores from the right, left, face off circle. Yessi puts home another. 15 to 9 in the aggregate, 3 to nothing in game number 4, and the Finns feeling good right now with the way this is trending. Putting a spike in this series as it was tense and ready to be primed for an opportunity. Yes, the L's 200 IQ continues to move forward. And yeah, you're right, the Finns looking to finalize, if you will, their ticket into the semifinals right there to try to go back for that three-time-in-a-row World IIHF Championship. Finland with the six-goal advantage. Captain Dirty Dangler has his work cut out for him. I mean, he's got to put in nine goals, essentially, in the next 30 minutes of in-game time to come back in this game. Unreal. As yes, he holds, gets that pass across, puck loose in front. As my math was a little bit off there. If he puts in six, then that would potentially be enough. But you have to remember there's that six goal difference there that you have to come back from. So a lot to work. It's Captain Dirty Dangler trying to make something happen. He has to puck here in the neutral zone. Quick shout out to our friends over at Sports Gamer. Guido in the chat. I'm sure they're having a good time covering this series as Finland currently looking good early on. Yes, EL looking to close this thing out. As he rushes into the offensive zone. Has some space, holds it back, can't wrap around chance. Can't connect. He has the space momentarily, but it's a little bit slower on that wrap around than maybe he would have liked. Has it behind the net. Looking for a passing play. Doesn't have it so far. As he works it around the left corner board and goes back down low over to Myers. Holding, looking, shot on at a wide angle, and it'll be saved and thrown back out immediately by Dirty Dangler. Four and a half minutes to play in the second period. 
As this poke checked away, oh yes, he would have had a breakaway, but Graves picked that up for Dirty Dangler. That would have been critical there if he could have gotten that. Here we go, Dirty Dangler in the offensive zone, cycling around, back down low, three minutes to play in period number two, holding backhand, doesn't take the shot, trying to cut his way inside, wasn't there, defensive shut down once again by Yessi as he moves into the offensive zone. Holding, looking, trying to find anything, and if you're Yessi, Nick, has to be content probably with holding this thing and letting things roll out the way they are. Yeah, you have to be comfortable, so right now... Yeah, you can put the, you can put things in a little bit of a cruise control, knowing what the time on is left here. You got 20 minutes of in-game minutes left. Uh, not really something I'd worry about right now if I'm Yesiel. As a big play there from Yesi, that patience once again showing itself for a big save. Captain Dirty Dangler looking for a goal with seven seconds left, looking to do what he did last game, holding it behind the net, trying to get something one second to go. Couldn't get that pass over to the left side post, and that will do it. For period number two, Yessi extending that lead, not just for him in this game, but for Finland in the series. Six goals is what it will take for Captain Dirty Dangler. Seven if he wants to win it outright. And right now, based off what we see, Nick, not looking promising. Just two shots on that around four minutes of time on attack for Dirty Dangler. And Yessi controlling the play from top to bottom. Yeah, this has been all Yessi so far. And it's about what I'd expect knowing what I know about Team Finland. This is what they do. And they do it quite well. We're seeing uh, a, a clinic being put on by the Finns to try to get their third championship in a row. That's Dirty Dangler trying to pull off something remarkable here. As you see, the last game, the last period of the evening, barring that simultaneous overtime, if we are to get it. But Captain Dirty Dangler going to have to do plenty in this period to ensure that. Holding it over at the left corner boards. He has it. Spins his way past. <laughs> wow, saved <laughs> by Gillies. What a play. Yes, he came across that ice with a manual goalie to make that save, or else it was going in a competitor's competitor. And yes, he held in this 2023 championship. Oh, what a play by the goaltending for Yessi. And if you're Captain Dirty Dangler, that has to be so deflating to see that. And here comes Yessi on the counterattack after that big save. Letary holding, gives it to Lafferty. Left side, try to get it back over to Letary. Could not do so cleanly. Here comes Dirty Dangler on the counterattack. Has Cousins, holds, and it's poke checked almost immediately as he crossed the blue line. The defense of Yessi has been the story in the series. He has allowed little to nothing for Dirty Dangler so far. Trying to change that here is Dirty Dangler. Has it in the offensive zone. Over at the bottom right corner, bottom left of your screen. It's turned over immediately. Lafferty will take it up here for Yessi. 14 minutes to play in period number three. But Terry has it behind the net. Operating down there. And if you're Captain Dirty Dangler, you have got to pressure any chance you get. Time on your side. If you want any chance to make the comeback happen, have to be as aggressive as possible. Yeah, you do. And right now, it's just all Yessi right now. So it's hard to even get momentum going. When you try to get through, you get it poked away, and it just feels defeating. Uh, when you're on the other side of that stick. Yes, he shot on maybe the upper part of the stick there for Thompson as here comes Captain Dirty Dangler trying to get his first goal of the contest. Not able to do so on that attempt as it was turned over. And here comes Yessi down the left boards. Speeds his way past. Holds his shot across. Saves another shot. Goes wide past the back of Thompson. A little spin around as he wasn't looking at the net. It was at an odd angle. Yes, he still maintains possession here in the neutral zone. Eight and a half to play. Holding it. Looking, trying to find something. Goes down in the right corner boards. Battle for it. Yes, he's holding it. Plenty comfortable where he is probably is having that six goal aggregate lead. The more this time dwindles down, the safer and more secure Finland spot in the semifinals becomes. Yes, with possession. Hartman at the left boards. Circles it down low. Couldn't pick that up. Could cap the Dirty Dangler, but he will end up getting it over at the opposite side and gives it to Mercer, who will move this thing up to Graves. Six and a half to play in the third period. Yessi holding on strong so far, doing everything that he needed to do and then some to see his country advance. Spin move past the defender. Spin move again. Cuts back. 
Holds, looks, maybe thought he was going to get a chance there, but staying patient. Once again, not making that mistake as Jesse knows the situation, and he holds the possession valuable. Still holding on to it as Jesse. Four and a half left in this third period now. Captain of the Dango, nothing he can do. Shakes off the defender, holds in the slot, dumps it down in the left corner, pass across. It's just sticked away there by Thompson. Three and out to play. And I mean, yes, he's just holding on to this thing for as long as he can. And then he draws the penalty right after. This is a possession masterclass that yes, he's putting on right now. Captain Dirty Dangler cannot get off his stick. He's had it for about four straight minutes in the offensive zone of just circling it around the boards, waiting, draining that time, and taking advantage of the possession. And now he's got a power play where he can just close out the game. In a, in a perfect way here. And this is all but a formality right now for the Finns as they gear up for the semifinals. Two minutes until their spot is solidified. As Yessi moves it past the blue line. But Terry holds it past the cross. Tried to hit Seth Jones, but he wasn't there just yet. As Yessi's still operating, and it looks like we're going to get a five on three potentially as they're going to hit Dirty Dangler there with the interference. Probably a frustration penalty right there as he's been shut out here in the game number four to close out this series. Yeah, and you know, you kind of look at Germany, give them all the credit in the world, made things interesting. They were down for a good bit of the series, especially early on. Kevinator getting that big win over Eki, but I think Yessi stealing the storylines here today as Captain Dirty Dangler with a chance there, five on three and all. Glove saved there made by Gillies as we have less than a minute to play. Here in game number four, Yessi was watching that time tick down and Eki watching it with him as a breakaway. Yessi slap shot, puts it in in style. Four nothing scoreline in this game. 16 to nine on the aggregate as why not put a little bit more icing on top of the Sunday as Finland seconds away from the semifinals. Taylor Swift will be proud. They never go out of style, and we see that right there. The five on three, the breakaway, the manual goalie, the slap shot goal. It's exactly what the Finns wanted to do in this competition. Germany down by a touchdown, and there is no seven goal play available to them. 30 seconds left. Yes, he holding it behind the net, and you know, we were saying you got to give all the credit to the world for Germany. The way they battled, the way they played, disappointing result for them nick but nevertheless a lot to be proud of the way they really kept with toe to toe the defending champions not just last year but for the last two years of this tournament it's 10 seconds to go yesi holding it around we talked about it earlier the newcomer in yesi the chance to close it out for finland he does it here the Finns do it again Finland to the semifinals, and it's the newcomer making his mark, pushing his country through into the next round. Yessi victorious over Captain Dirty Dangler. What a game, what a series, and what a performance by the new name in the esports world, Yessi L2002, finishing the job for the Finns. Incredible performance there in the possession game, the master classes you alluded to, and he helps bolster Team Finland going from a two-goal aggregate lead to a seven-goal aggregate lead. Yessi L, the star of the show here in the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship. Yessi, with the story of the tournament, the newcomer finishes it off, and give credit to Eki, did his job as well. But look at the stat line. Yeah. Just four shots on net for Captain Dirty Dangler. That matched the goal tally that Yessi had in that game. An absolute dominant performance from the first time IIHF participant. And ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard of Yessi L before today, allow him to introduce himself with that performance. Finland moves on to the semifinals, a 16-9 aggregate scoreline and now they have a date with the USA next week a finals rematch from last year while for Canada they get a chance at redemption against Czechia when they lost in the quarterfinals to last year a chance to move on to the finals and Nick all of the storylines just 
gravitating themselves to this tournament. It writes itself when you have a great tournament like this. As you see it right there, it is official. The scoreline is in. Finland moves on to the semifinal 16-9 over Germany in that aggregate. And I mean, Nick, take us through the story because it was a roller coaster from start to finish. It was. We saw the story before us, 16-9, to your final. And we saw the two goals uh, to lead the aggregate at the halftime. And then Jesse L just doing remarkable things, four goals in each game, and then making sure he deflated Captain Dirty Dangler's comeback efforts. And we saw amazing things from him, uh, you know, all the way through this stage and even last year. But now, Yessi L answers that question. The newcomer makes his mark and establishes himself as a contender in the semifinals now. The four best teams remaining in this tournament are going to be before you. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But first, we got to turn our attention to what lies ahead. And what lies ahead is on the screen behind us. We are talking to the man himself, two-time now Finnish E-World Championship winner, accolades of plenty, trophies across the board, one of my favorite people to talk to. We are here with Eki. And Eki, thank you so much, man, for making some time for us today. We definitely appreciate it, of course. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're one of my favorite persons to talk to, too. So <laughs> oh, that, that warms my heart to the to the nth degree. But let's get into it, man. I know uh, yesterday we saw you kind of supporting some teams in person. I, I saw the flags uh, in the stands. I, I you know you must have had a good time over there. And then how do you go from uh, you know sitting in the stands watching an in person land event to then getting yourself ready for a pretty difficult competition against Germany here today? Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, we had the three-day LAN event. We had the six v six European final, and then then the world final. So, I basically just had this Sunday to 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 to, to, uh, to re prepare myself. Oh yes. my god! And uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Okay, yeah, and, uh, yeah. I've, I've uh, been playing like crazy the whole day. The biggest kind of hard thing for me uh, during this tournament is that I'm playing on Xbox and uh, my hot team is on PlayStation. Uh, I play Sixers on PlayStation, so it always takes a while to get used to the controller. And uh, so, yeah, that's like, that's the tough part for me. Yeah, I can kind of considering all of those circumstances because your situation a little bit unique because of some of those things that you mentioned, switching from PlayStation to Xbox, having some other events going on outside of this tournament, and then obviously this being such a unique tournament because going up against a lot of players that you typically wouldn't see in your normal setup, how has that adjustment period been for you in terms of preparing and making sure that you're ready for these games? Uh, yeah, this this tournament is. I've said it every year. This tournament is totally different to the, any other tournament. Playoffs are aggregate four goals, uh, four games for per uh, per country. Two games for you. We play on the big ice with the IIHF World Championship team, so the gameplay is totally different to what you usually play. So it's a it's a whole different practice you basically have to do before this before these games, and you have to think about the games a bit different too. You know, we were talking a little bit about team selection. Obviously, Canada uh, giving themselves some retribution by getting in this year and not taking uh, a, a different team. They picked the right team for the moment. Same for you guys here, choosing Team USA, leaving Canada open. We were talking before the, the matchup here between you and Germany that do you go with Canada in round two or do you save it for round three? And if so, who is, in your opinion, the third best team you would select in this tournament? Um. Our rankings is that USA is the third best team, Czech okay. is the second, and uh, mm. Finland is the best. I know lots of, of players like Sweden. We don't really, when we looked at the roster, not really, but yeah, so I, I'm thinking we'll be um, checking the semifinals because if you don't have Canada in the finals and your opponent has, um, yeah, that's that's. That's a pretty lost cause, so I think you have to leave Canada till the finals. At least, like, I personally think so. Yeah, we saw that strategy from you last season, but kind of looking at what we just saw here with this series versus Germany, obviously you taking care of business on the aggregate side of things, having that 8-6 to six lead, but how about Jesse? I know you've had a different teammate the last two years. Jesse, a newer guy to the scene, maybe a player that 
some people in the mainstream side of things aren't as familiar with. I mean, was there anything that you told him going into the series with this being his first series and having to step up in such a big moment? Not really. I, I can say I trust, yes, 100%. Uh, we practiced practiced a bit this week, and uh, I, I know his gameplay level, so I had I had 100% trust that he, uh, he gets it done. Uh, just a horrendous, horrendous game two for me today. Uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, I felt pretty pretty garbage after <laughs> after our series and that yeah we had the 8-6 aggregate lead but I, I still put Yessa in, in a tougher situation than uh, maybe it could have been but uh, yeah I'm, I'm glad he got it done and uh, like I said I think he's playing absolutely fantastic at the moment and, uh, and, and I think our team will be tough to beat in the semifinals and finals hopefully. So let's look at the semifinals and finals uh, I know Regs was in chat watching you know if Finland wins we play Czechia which means the return of the finals battle last year now comes to the semifinals. Finland versus U.S. What are your thoughts after the very tough battle you guys had last year against the U.S. now coming to just the semifinals this year? Yeah, nice to get some revenge. Uh, <laughs> or like, uh, how do you say it? Yeah, a, a second roll of things. Um, yeah. yeah, they have a... They have a Two players that weren't weren't there last year. We all know Cookie won the National World Championships in uh, 2019. Obviously, I know what he can do. Um, he hasn't played uh, played a lot recently, though. So we'll be interested to see his gameplay level. I think I'm playing him, but when he beat Rex in the group stage, I'm sure <laughs> sure he's he's playing pretty good. Um, yeah, PlayStation matchup. Uh, I, I'm not actually too sure about. Uh, I think Dots it is Dots. Dots. Yep. Dots yeah. Yeah. Dots. Yeah. Yeah, so him against Ch Yesse will be will be a very interesting interesting matchup as well. But I I have a lot of trust trust in my teammate. I have a lot lot of trust in myself. And uh, yeah, the high ping high ping will be will be of course different. I think we got a kind of a <laughs> glance of what the gameplay would maybe be like today. Uh, mm. The connections weren't weren't the best for both of us. I I think we both had I think we both had packet loss today. So 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 that will be. Uh, yeah, we got some nice warm up to the semifinals with that, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, man. And then just one final question from my end: with you having so much experience with this tournament, it feels like things this year have been just as highly competitive as ever. Considering some of the players that you've seen go through this tournament the last two years, what have you kind of noticed from this season's pool that maybe has been a little bit different or a little bit more challenging? I've noticed that the quality of players is much more wider, even in uh, maybe countries you wouldn't expect. Like our mm -hmm. group stage, every single player I, I played felt like they were they played good, they defended great. Like, uh, yeah, I haven't had a single. I have. I haven't felt like I've had a single, let's say, an easy game during this tournament. Like you have to be pre prepared for absolutely every game. Uh, you saw that. You saw that today. Uh, so, so yeah. And not not a question here, but the last moment for you. We've been doing it with everybody. We did it last year as well. We, we know you love the microphone. You've done a lot of interviews. But I want to give you the international stage here to speak to not only uh, the people watching the whole tournament, but the supporters from Finland at home for you. Anything you'd like to say to the people right now? Uh, as always, thank you, thank you for the support. We hope to bring it. Bring it, uh, bring the trophy to Finland for the third time would would be wonderful. Uh, come support us in the semifinals, and uh, yeah, as always, we will we will do our best. But thank you everybody for support, and hope you enjoy this tournament. And IIHF, thank you for running this. As always, it's one of my favorite tournaments to play every year. The format is so unique; it's it's a fun tournament. I'm sure to follow as well. Eki, I, I promise you the next time you're in Florida, I got to meet up with you. Or maybe that I'm overseas next time. You and I got to have a drink, share some time. It's always fun to talk to you. Listen, man, best of luck to you in the semifinals. I wish you nothing but the absolute best. Thank you. Much appreciated. Eki, everybody, as we close out the tournament here today, always fun to talk to, to Eki as we see the quarterfi quarterfinals now, the semifinals on your screen in front of you, Brandon. Yeah, Eki's always just such a great interview, really from top to bottom. Just the little tidbits that you can get from him and just his personality as well. That confidence is there, but still as humble as ever. Always such a good interview to be able to sit down and talk with. But, you know, kind of talked about it. 
Eki and Cookie, that's going to be a fun match of a yes. lot of GWC roots there yes. between those two players. That is a matchup that could be a GWC final at any possible year that you could imagine. And then on the other side, the two newcomers facing off against one another in Yessi and Dodds, two players that had to show up in the clutch in the last two games of their series this week, doing it against one another next week. And what's really interesting is that if things come down to that penultimate game four, it will be Cookie versus Eki as game number four, if we do have it lined up the way it is on your screen. So we are having two of the best in the world match up against one another next week. I cannot wait for that matchup. I can't wait for that matchup. And then I cannot wait for what we're going to see after or before that in Czechia versus Canada. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you can see the matchup right there as the other semifinals uh, matchup Cad Cooks versus Kirchi, Regs versus Pepka. I, I, while I'm really excited for uh, Brandon, the Finnish Xbox side of Cookie and, and Regs, just because the championship part of all that just makes me like, I'm actually getting excited chills about that. Like, <laughs> like that's probably my, like, I can't, you can't see me right now, man, but I am like cloud nine excited about what we're going to see. Uh, that Regs Pepka matchup is also one that is, Probably going to be a highlight marquee matchup between those two on the Xbox side. Yeah, and if you want to add an extra wrinkle to it, remember, it's Pep Costa who closed out the last game versus Regs to put Czechia through yes. over Canada yes. last year. So you get a rematch <laughs> within a rematch. You can only get this right here at the IIHF E-World Championship. The allure, the countries, the fan bases, the format, the storylines, no one else does it better at this level and at this stage. There's so much to keep in track of. And then, like you said, Cad versus Kerchi, two players that are new to this tournament. Kerchi, a little bit newer to the highly competitive side of things, going up against Cad, who has really established himself as one of the high-end competitive players, not just in, the U in, in Canada or the U.S., not just in the 1v1 side, but throughout the world, ones or sixes. So that's going to be an interesting matchup with a lot of unknowns and intrigues, but with Pep Costa and Regs, we saw that matchup last year. It was a lot of fun. Pep Costa shocked a lot of people, I think, with how well he competed with Regs, and it pushed his team through to that upset to the semifinals. This time, he has a chance to do it again, but to one level higher, a trip to the finals on Sunday on the line. It's going to be a lot of fun to see if he can do it again or if Regs can get a little bit of that retribution that he was talking about with us earlier today. We talked about, you know, Cat. We covered Cat a long time ago when he was with us, yeah. uh, not the... Uh, you know, we we covered him on on t uh, in an early tournament, so excited to see what he can do as well. But right now, uh, we're going to turn our attention one last time to bring in another interview for us. And uh, you know, didn't go the way it is uh, that we wanted it to for Team Germany, but we are here with Captain Dirty Dangler. Thanks so much for making some time for us to chat with us today, my friend. Oh, we got you muted, I think, on your side. Up oh, there we are. Now we got you. Yes, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, obviously not the result you wanted, but uh, any comments just off off the initial thoughts about your performance today? We we saw an amazing game there on our first game between Yesiel and, and you there, kind of taking it to uh, a four three result that that really pushed a, a good effort. Uh, did you feel really good coming out of that game, or, or were you wanting a little bit more? What were your thoughts coming out of that first game? Uh, to be honest, I felt pretty confident after the first game. Um, it was tough playing him. He had the advantage with the lead, so he had all the time in the world. Uh, it was tough, but I had the confidence in the second game, but it aged didn't well. Yeah, you had a really good effort, and something that we really have noticed, not just within this game and within the series where you guys really did make a good effort on the comeback, but there was just something about this Germany team with you and Kevinator as a duo. You always seem to be able to elevate when the lights are brightest and you need to step up. What has kind of gone behind that with you guys, not just within this tournament, but last year as well as you've been together now for two years? I don't know. We just practice a lot together. Um... We are good friends of each other, so I think that's hel that helps. Uh, I can trust him, he trusts me. 
And I think uh, that's why it worked so well in the last years. I think it does. And, uh, you know, we've watched some amazing heroics. We've talked about it last year. We talked about it this year. What is it that works so well for you when you're behind one or two goals? You just seem to be able to put it together and do some amazing things. Is there a secret to what makes that so special for you to be able to do? Um, I feel like that's something that we both got, Kevin and myself. Uh, we are both some players that don't give up even if we are in, in behind. Um, I, feel, I feel like the mentality is like what makes us pretty strong or gives us the edge to, to keep up with those players like AK and Jesse. And yeah, I think that's a mentality. Yeah, you mentioned that you started out in a little bit of a hole, but just the two goals kind of separating you guys and Finland when game three went underway. What was the strategy like going into these two games, knowing that the hole wasn't extremely wide, but you still had a little bit of catch up to play? Yeah, I first tried to, to play my normal game. Don't get distracted by the by the result of the first two games. and um, But... After I conceded like the first two goals, I, I felt like I have to play more aggressive, play more four check, and like at all play more offensively. Absolutely, and uh, I know it wasn't the result you guys wanted, but I, I I want to allow everybody to have this opportunity. A bunch of people from Germany showed out to support you. You got an amazing community here in this international format of tournaments. Anything you want to say on this stage at this time to the people that supported you and to the people watching at home? Yeah, thanks a lot for the for the support we got. I feel like we have a great great community around us uh, that supports us all the time, and that makes you really happy. We feel the love, and that's that pushes us as well. Well, Captain Dirty Dangler, we hope to see you back next year and uh, move one step closer to that championship. I know you guys are just gonna a few goals away from making that happen. We wish you the absolute best of luck in the future. Thank you, guys. Captain Dirty Dangler, everybody. Yet again, another great interview we get to have with all sorts of people uh, here at this tournament as we take one last look over to the uh, scoreline from this quarterfinals. Finland and Germany, 16-9. to Finland moves on to try to make the trifecta happen. Yeah, and now they go through one really tough opponent in Germany, and they're going to have to go through yet another in the USA next week. And, you know, you kind of heard Eki say it. It doesn't matter what country we play against. It feels like the competition level is so much wider in terms of how widespread the talent has been. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter what console. It doesn't matter the country. You are facing a tough opponent every single time you pick up that controller in this tournament. And for Finland, that championship defense doesn't get any easier. And they're going to have to go through the team that they had to beat last year in overtime to get there again. Yeah, absolutely right there. Well, you know. That's what we have to look forward to. We are a week away from the semifinals and championship Sunday. We will be joined on Sunday by Cam and Grizz. They'll be alongside with us for the ride as we see who the finalists will be. But for right now, we know one thing is for certain. It's Czechia, USA, Canada, and Finland on the way to the semifinals as the road to the 2023 IIHF E-World Championship Finals and the tournament winner is just a week ahead. We want to thank everybody so far for watching at home, all of our sponsors in Skoda and Strauss for making this possible. And I've said it last week, I said it yesterday, all the people behind the scenes that make this a reality. We absolutely can't do it without you. And it takes a, a mountain of people to make this happen. I said it kind of in jest, uh, Brandon, earlier in the broadcast, producing, casting, directing, all the things we do. That pales in comparison to all the stuff that happens behind the scenes that also occurs in order to make this even remotely a thing as we connect people all across the globe together for this tournament. Any last words before we put a cap on this quarterfinals weekend? Just a thank you to everyone that does what they do behind the scenes, as well as a thank you to all the players that are participating, the people that are watching, and congratulations to everyone that made it to this point and the four teams that will be making it next week into our semifinals. Can't wait to cover that with you, my friend. You said it earlier, class will be the way we put a bow on this entire conversation of why this tournament is so great. So I want to thank everybody one more time. Thank you for watching at home. We will be back next week for the semifinals. So on behalf of the entire staff, here at the IHF E-World Championship, including myself and for Brandon Bigsby. My name is Nick DeMeo. Take care, be safe, 
we will see you all next week in the semifinals. Czechia, US, Canada, and Finland, who will move on to the finals. We are one week away from finding out who that is. You're not going to want to miss out. Stay, there. Stay tuned for then. Bye-bye for now.